What's going on, Black Family? So, we got another live I was able to catch. Adonis Live, if you don't know this brother, he be giving the tethers that work in the UK. And it's nothing disrespectful. It's all great conversation. He just asks questions. And they... They try to answer it. But they don't really know what they're saying. Like, they, they he makes them rethink and double think and triple think. And he just be giving their work. But this space was a great space. A lot of B1 family in there giving them these tethers that work respectfully. Nobody was out of sorts. Nobody was out of pocket. A great conversation. Only caught four and a half of the seven hours he did. But I think it's going to be a great uh, listen for you guys. Check it out. B1. It's on you. Okay, you muted me. Um, You wanted to know what Axum Kingdom was, when the time was. Let me see. Axum Kingdom. Don't forget the first question, Adonis. Word. What is what is history? What what is Africa known for? The word is reputation. I think you mean to. Yeah. Say. There we go. What is? Yeah. There we go. Bravo. What is Africa reputation? No disrespect, and like I said, I'm not saying this to hurt anybody's feelings, but you have to look. You got to look at your past. You have to. History tends to repeat itself when people try to erase what really happened. But I, I don't know, like, what do you want me to say? So I'm not I want you to I want you to say that I actually did my research on my particular people and my particular culture. And I'm not I'm not defending them blindly, making statements that are artificially created to push my own narrative. I'm not I want you to say that I am African and I'm fucking proud of being African. And I know my history and my heritage. And what I'm saying is basing on facts and truth, not about how I feel. If the shit that I say, excuse my language, rubs you the wrong way, I am not sorry because the shit that I'm saying is your particular history and it should rub you the wrong way and you should feel a little bit embarrassed about you not actually knowing this about your history you can't put your hand up and defend somebody who's in the fucking wrong and you can't look at somebody and say what? he's telling me factual historical elements of my particular people and he's bad because he's doing it no there's a reason okay. why we do not like the Nazis and we do not respect the Nazis is because okay. we know the history okay. and that's what it is uh, Adonis, you know uh, Africa is a continent. You know that. Yes. There's different type of people. There's people that are very, they look like Europeans in North Africa. There's different type of people. My people was never in the shadow of slavery. We never sold slaves. Your people are not recognized as the faces of Africa. What when you, you men when you mention your people, when people mention Africa, we where are you from? Listen, people say, the first thing people say is, we have the most beautiful women. What are you That's saying? That's great. You go to Romania, they say the same shit. They say the same shit everywhere. You go to Miami, they say you got no. the most beautiful women. Oh, it's no. a fact. It's a fact. They, they say this everywhere. Like, no. ooh, you got the most, do you think that's a compliment? That, I'm going to be honest with you. If you're a woman and somebody's telling you you got the most beautiful women, that's not a compliment. What about we have the most intellectual women? We have the most intellectual people. We have the most uh, advanced technology. That's not a compliment. You got a nice ass. What? Yeah. Yeah, we, they they say that too. They say we're very smart. They say we're very kind. Where hard, are you from? Hard working. No, what, what, do you, what do you represent? What do you represent? Hard working Eritrea. Eritrea. All right. You Eritrea. are not the face of Africa. When people think of Africa, right. they think of. Let me talk. Let me talk. We have Tiffany Haddish, who's half Black American, half Eritrea. No, 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 no! Don't you do that? Don't you do that? <laughs> Don't you do that? Don't you do that? Uh, uh she's from my hood, homie. Hold on the right one. Real quick, I just want to um and I think this is kind of where again you where people actually start to crash out because then that they have to really now go deep dive. Um baby girl, I'm I, I can see that you are beautiful. Uh Eritreans are beautiful people. But Eritreans have, Eritreans have a history in slavery in the slave trade between Ethiopia, Ethiopia and Eritrea. And I'm going to read this to you, okay? Um, this is from uh, Oxford uh, Encyclopedia Online African History. Slavery and the slave trade in Ethiopia and Eritrea. Er Eritrea, hopefully I'm saying it right. I apologize. Slavery and the slave trade were persistent features of the cultural, social, and economic fabric of the Ethiopian Eritrean 
region, which in is historically con um, um, constituted by various um, polites and societies across the Christian, uh, Semitic, uh, speaking highlands and the Rift Valley with, with its surrounding lowlands regions um, bordered by the Nile Valley and the West and the Red Sea coast to the East. Now, this I'm gonna put this link down in the uh, uh, down below, and maybe that you can deep dive in it and take it further. This is not saying you yourself, right, um, did something. This is saying that your uh, uh, particular group of people have a history. Why did people leave or start to leave Eritrea, uh, Eritrea, Eritrea and migrate out of Africa to? Um, America. What make makes people um, have? Um, uh, uh, I think um, wars, ethnic wars. Why did Rwanda happen? Why is there the things that are happening in the Congo right now, where um, people are calling for um, uh, the Western world to out, uh, get involved yet again? What happened with Mandela? There's like all these different things. Why did apartheid happen? Africa, the continent, has a history in each country, yes. But the continent itself has a story, and people don't like to talk about it. They try to talk about it in its framework as in today's time and personal, your personal daily life. The first thing you said is, we're known for being pretty people. Um, L.A. folks, New York folks, people from the South. Like Adonis said, um, melanated people are beautiful everywhere. Does not mean that we don't have a history. Does not mean that we don't have a story in our lineage and what, con one, what contributes to why you are where you are. I don't know how they are teaching history, again, where you're from, or if it's not taught in its entirety because, again, people start to lose their mind when they start to really pay attention to what's happening and what has happened in reality. Like cannibalism is happening in Africa right now. People are, you know, uh, dealing with corruption. Folks are being uh, uh, um, uh, uh, genocided 24 seven. Other countries are coming in and recolonizing um, uh, different countries in Africa. This literally ha is happening over and over and over again. And I think it is due to the fact that each generation of different countries in Africa has not evolved well enough to protect itself um, like Niger did um, until they start to advance, I think, in technology and start to realize how people are comprehending what's happening with them. Uh, government is being cor uh, corruption plays a big part in that. That's part of your history. That's part of the discussion. And I think you are trying to defend, again, yourself and your people because you don't want to be seen as anything other than a beautiful people. That is dangerous. That's very, very dangerous. Yes. And so uh, I just want to say, if you guys are going to say Africa like a country, then you can... Uh, we're talking about a continent. We're not talking about a country. Talk. You know the continent. Talk. Let me talk. Then you can defend uh, South America too. Then we can say, yes, okay, of course, Venezuela or Mexico or like the gang violence in Mexico. Like, come yeah, on. But we're talking about we're talking about Africa and the countries within it. So again, we can do all those things and trying to fall like you. You understand what I'm saying? Trying to say, well, because this happened over here in this country, well, you can't just say it's happening over here. It's happening over here. Okay. Well, once we get to that topic of the room and and have maybe people from the that that area that wants to come up and talk about that, then fine. But we're talking about the people in this room that classify themselves as melanated people who classify themselves as, like you said, you're a retrain. I am from Inglewood, California, from the streets of Inglewood. I live in Virginia. I know my track history of my life and my family's life. I have to relearn and uh, uh, unlearn certain things, but I also have to uh, um, find a lot of historical records for my family. So 
I've started that work as a Black American, as a Negro woman, a descendant of freedmen people. Freedmen literally was the uh, uh, next classification after my fam my my people were actually enslaved and classified as slaves here in America. That's a historical uh, 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 timeline that we can talk about if we wanted to go detail in a long time frame. But I'm trying to give you a timeline history. I would love for you to do that for you, for yourself. What is your historical timeline about Africa, the continent, your country? your history and what you know about it and as it pertains and what makes you you do you understand that yeah i know a lot of things and i know like we was colonized by italy and we fought back and now we're not colonized and then ethiopia tried to um annex us we people think that we was like a part of ethiopia and that we split. No, they annexed us. And they were backed by the West, USA, Russia, everyone. And we fought, like, with 30 million people. They were, like, um, we was against the world, basically, and we won. That's why a lot of air trains are very proud. Um, I can say this, like, <clears throat> I understand where you come from. But I'm saying, like, um, for instance, like, my country, um our president, he doesn't want any aid. He doesn't want any aid. And because of that, we have sanctions in our country. So even when African co countries are trying to be independent from the West, they're trying to sabotage. So they sanctioned us. We only work with China. And the good thing with our president, he, he's not like the corrupt leaders in Africa. He, uh, we take like the, the majority of like, um, I think it's like we have gold and we'll, we have salt and stuff like that that we can export. And um, we're taking the majority. He's not like the other presidents where uh, a few people live in rich and it's like people that's hungry and stuff like that. That's like in Ethiopia, like there's so many like nice buildings and it's like beautiful, but then it's like so many people poor. No one is hungry in Eritrea. And that's a fact. People will uh, write and say they have propaganda about him. They will call him a dictator. They will put, paint a bad picture because he doesn't want to work with the West. But that's what they do with African leaders. So people only, like, I don't know, like. I think, to be I, honest with you, I've been sitting here listening. Because I, Americans, and they say you come from a dictator country. But it's because you guys read the Western media. Of course. No, I'm going to tell you something. Wait, I think that you are, I understand what you're saying. You just repeated talk, yourself wait, three times. Talk. Let me talk. Of course, they're going to say he's a dictator because he doesn't work with the West. And Americans, uh, both of us, Africans also, like, they listen to Western media and they uh, get a perception of, like... Um, That's not what Americans do. Stop they, yes, me. yes, yes. I've talked to Americans and they said... That. Bro, she's... The fuck is she talking about, bro? I'm, 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 bro, literally. Tell me what I, like, what I heard. Bro, listen, first of all, I'm going to be very straightforward with this. You can't marginalize a whole group of people based off of a couple of things you heard from ignorant ass people and from your friends. It makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense. Second of all, when you sit down and say that, you have to understand based off what you're saying is propaganda. When you started using the West. Or Americans. And that's just propaganda that you hear from from your particular channels. That's not realistic. I, as an American, am I have ears in multiple different countries. I'm looking at multiple different platforms from multiple different countries to get get out get authentic information from these particular areas. I'm in London right now during the London UK riots right now. I'm not watching CNN and BBC. I'm, I'm in Romania when they're fucking, when Andrew Tate's doing his shit. So when you sit down and make these statements and say, oh, because he doesn't want to work with the West and all this, bro, how the fuck you want, let's be, let's talk facts, all right? How you want to work with the West? You don't want to work with the West, but you want our resources. You want our internet. You want access to everything that we created. You want access to all the all the things that we can help to boost your economy at this particular time. You want access to our... You, you don't agree. Hold on. She's living in Europe. I, I know, but I, you know, I'm in Europe too. So like, it, that's, that's... No, 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 no. I don't misunderstand me. What I'm saying is 
her conversation points have been kind of off the entire time because she's doing this, but she lives in Europe. So when you say the West, most people consider the Europe the West. That's the reason why I say this. So I'll, I'll oh, do wow. a that I thought exercise real quick because I think everybody's trying to get the answer to the very first question is what is the represent rep, what is the reputation of Africa? So you know what I'll do this. Okay, so North America is a continent. We all agree on this, correct? Okay. Yes. So North America is made up of three countries, but also North America is made of the Caribbean. I'm gonna put the Caribbean countries to the side for a second, and I'm not gonna put in Latin America. So I know we have that divide between Latin America and South America. So let's put them to the side. North America is made up of Canada, United States, and Mexico. So how about this? Let's start with the top. Canada, what's its reputation? It's known as a weak, nice country. It's really not weak when they're super liberal, but that the reality is that's what they're that's a that's a reputation in that country. It's weak, it's super extremely liberal. That is called a representation, right? It's the reputation of that country. And they also, today, since we want to do the last 20 years, especially after the war in Ukraine, they have let in so many immigrants that the rep the reputation of Canada is that their actual native population of people who were actually born in, in Canada and have been living there at least two to three generations have actually have a negative birth rate. And the only reason why Canada is growing as a country is because they're letting in so many immigrants. Okay, that's called a reputation. Let me go to the next country. Here is United States. United States, on their own land from from foreign people are known as arrogant they're known as bullies they're known as stupid right so every time when Adonis goes and interviews people in other countries mainly a lot of times he's in the uk those people will say oh americans are stupid and they're like oh why because of geography so we're known as stupid and then when you're out and about and you're actually a tourist in that country people say americans are loud now that's extremely true because in our country you're used to we're used to vocalizing a lot out loud and people do this thing where they're using their thought processes out, out loud and they're used to always being able to talk because America has a lot of noise population. There you go. That's called a reputation, right? Okay. Then Mexico. Mexico is known as a destabilized country that has been known for its drug cartels that also has been the playground of the rich for a long time, and not American-only rich, meaning uh, United States of America rich, but rich when they're all across the country. They go to party in Cabo and all the other places until when it came COVID time, a lot of normal, average citizens decided to move to a lot of cities, namely a few, and actually destabilize the economies of those cities and because the people can no longer afford rent because they were trying to escape COVID. That is called a reputation, honey. I think what you're missing is you uh, exactly what Adana said and exactly what One Love said. You're trying to give this the good content of what you know and what you're creating is propaganda. You're literally doing what the Germans did. You created a propaganda a propaganda based history based off of what you would like to be perceived as, oh, we're pretty. And, oh, yeah, we got colonized, but we fought back. Um, Honey, everybody who's not colonized today, they get either given their history because the people stop fighting. You know that Europe is the least, the least, co the least populated continent in the world. So it's not a brag when the the small population of people you you win against them. So when he's asking you about the reputation of 1.2 billion people in the world, right? And that's their population as of today. He's asking me, what is the reputation of Africa? I'll answer the question for you, and then you can answer, and I'll shut up. Yeah. Yeah, I just... Nobody's allowed to touch you. You're touching us. No, I'm not. What? Your little tiny leg touched <laughs> As you can see, my daughter is super excited about her black unicorn shop pajamas and blanket if you want yours make sure you hit the link in the comments to grab yours today peace and black empowerment family right now for the last 30 years in the united states they used to play what they would call infomercials and infomercials would have several different white people on it no matter their no matter their size it'll be some white person to tell you for 35 cents a day you can send money to africa and you can feed somebody who always has a distended belly and flies in their eyes 
right? Don't try to tell me that British people think better of you when you're when the queen who just died in that country was actually colonizing and raping and pillaging parts of Africa for a hundred years. That bitch was a damn witch because she was around a long time. So when we're looking at this, the I can tell you one of the reputations is that Africa is a is a continent. It's poor. It needs help. It's destabilized. We have a movie called Tears of the Sun, and also that's about Rwanda. Um, there's several movies that different countries have made, but America has made a ton about all the destabilization that has happened in Africa. So I'm giving you what's talking about a reputation. So don't tell us because we're not dumb. I know you guys think black Americans are dumb, but we want to extend a conversation to you because most of the time, I'll just be real with you, it's annoying to have the conversation because you keep deflecting. Now, when we do this, you're like, oh, y'all are dumb. Y'all want to run around. But when somebody mentions Myron Gaines from Fresh and Fit and how he said he wanted to George Zimmerman, a black person, you have nothing to say right? You guys don't mind, but you can tell us about Tariq Nasheed all day long and what he's done, but when you guys sit here and want to mimic poor white Americans talking about killing us and beating us and wanting to put crosses in the yard, y'all don't have nothing to say about that. You don't have nothing to say when your women are being hurt and, and these white men come and sex trafficking and now all these Chinese men are sex trafficking throughout the continent of Africa. You ain't got nothing to say about that, but it's oh, black Americans, y'all never picked up a book before because y'all don't have to read so right now i gave you examples of reputations i even gave you what would be called a negative represent reputation of africa because for the most part the world has a negative reputation thought process about africa now you get to give your your examples and please do not no, go to like, a long drown out thing about telling us what we don't and do know let me no, just let say coyote go that. go ahead okay. coyote I'm going to show you real patient. And everybody keeps jumping in, I swear. Everybody's saying good stuff, though. Don't get me wrong. Okay, America um, is known oh, for... Hold on, hold on. Coyote had a hand. Hold on, hold on. Coyote had a hand up for Mad Long. Go ahead, Coyote. All right. all right, so check it. So all the people who are not Black American understand the word signifying. Black American signifying is very... It's a skill that we learn to do. And it's a way to deflect from the things to keep us from being down or sad or whatever you want to call it. It's a way that we deal with the pressures and the stresses of... I can't hear him. Do you guys hear him? So, understand. Understand that the stresses of... Uh, Coyote, can you you come to the mic, closer to the mic? Because we can barely hear you, baby. Okay. Okay. Let me hold on one second. So, can you hear me now? Yes, that's much better. Okay, so look, signifying, like I said, it's a skill that we learn to do to deal with the stresses of being Black American. The fact that we're very good at it may sound like we're being very rude when we're talking to you or, or, or making a joke or whatever the case is, but in signifying, when you when you're going back and forth with somebody if you make them break or get emotional you pretty much won the back and forth between you and that person Tyreek Nasheed is a good example of that he has perfected it and most of the time like one love said when he talks to people he's trying to get information but then as soon as they get flipped or say something real disingenuous then it changes into something else so you can't be offended, especially just like Adana said, if they're telling the truth about where you're from, you can't sit there and be uh, 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 like very, like you're disrespected, especially if you started it. Not saying everybody that's outside her. of Black America starts things, but understand that we want to exchange information just like you do. But because of all these other things that's going on, like, the way that you all around the world see Black Americans, the way that you were taught to treat us, when you come to us with that type of smoke, we're not going to sit there and just let you talk crazy. We don't play Guys, that. I can't hear her. Okay, it's you're going to have to drop we, down and come back. We no, can hear her. Coy- Coyote, she can't hear you, baby. Hold on. I heard uh, her perfectly. I think we all heard her perfectly. Yeah, right. No, she let might me, be in the matrix, though. Just, let me just finish what no, I'm saying. I hear her. It don't matter yeah, I hear talking to her. Not. I don't really care to talk to her. You can tell her that. All but right. what I'm saying is, just to make this quick and simple, you know, we're all going through the same thing. We're standing in the same mud. And it's like people get offended 
off of things instead of learning about things. Just like one love was sitting there trying to give her all the information about Eritrea. You know what I'm saying? Learn more about the truth about, learn the bad and the good. You can't just sit there and just be like, I just want to learn the good parts of my country or my culture or whatever like that. You have to learn the whole thing. Just like Black American culture. Like, we have a lot of great things and we all have a lot of bad things. And if you notice in the media, a lot of the bad things that's going on with Black American is pushed in your face and made to be fun and cool and stuff like that. That And y'all eating that shit. Y'all eating it up. We know that that's foolishness. Y'all don't understand that. And I think that's the thing that I'm saying. You all need to stop being so sensitive to the talking points when we're talking to you about things. You cannot point your finger and say that we are like gangsters and you got, you know, baby daddy issues and stuff like that. It's going on all over the world. You can't do that. You can't say that. Now, if you have something that that's that's helpful to make us all go upward, then that's those are the things that most Black Americans want to talk about. We don't want to talk about all that BS y'all talking about. You know what I'm saying? So just be respectful. That's all it is. And if somebody tells you something that you don't know about your culture, check it first before you just be like, oh, no, nah, that's not true. You know what I'm saying? Like, just let's just be respectful. That's all I ask. Just be respectful. And open to information. And that's it. Okay, so I do check, like, people. Because I told you guys, I have Black American cousins. Like, half Eritrean, and half Black American cousins. So I do check, of course, I do check people. Like, obviously, I learned a lot from them. And I do check people if they say stupid things about Black Americans. Like, the first things that I said when I came here was that I don't like when people are arrogant and say things like, um, you don't, you guys don't know where you come from or like they don't know too much about black American history to even be speaking. I think it's like they should come from like a more of a um, like a genuine like interest, like want to know, like I don't think you should be arrogant and ignorant, but I'm saying like America doesn't have the best reputation, to be honest, like, OK, entertainment. Yes. Yeah, LOL. But I'm Wait, saying, do Black Americans not have the best? We don't control our media. You know that, right? Yeah, we don't control our media. Hold on, let us, speak, let, us speak, let, let us speak. 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 Let's see what she has to say. Hey. See, I let everyone talk, and people don't let me talk. I don't know why. I don't. I'm know. so sorry if I disrespect it. I will. No, let no, you no. Talk. Forget it. Let, let, let it go. Let it go. Watch, okay. People attack me and say things that I never said. Please like, don't victimize yourself. I shut them down. Now is your time to continue. Too much. Move on. Jealousy, but okay. Um, so I think that America is seen like I grew up in, I was born and raised in Sweden. So living standards here are much better than America for sure. Even if you're poor, you will have like government assistance, like you will get money, and um, like you don't have to pay much like money to go to the doctors, like if you. You know, like the hospital bill in America is crazy. Like it's just the living standard is better. People say America is a third world country in a Gucci belt. That's what I always heard. Like, <laughs> um, but um, also the racism in America is more systematic. Like it's real. Like how can I explain it? Like, like, like you guys said, like the history of it. The it, it's just. It's just more intense, I would say, than the Western countries in Europe. I'm talking like UK, Sweden, like Netherlands and stuff like that. It's not that much in your face, like in America. Because it's like, America is crazy. Like the police killings and everything. Like, so honestly, people, when they say, when they think of America, they think like, and I'm talking like in general, they think like, if you're rich, you're rich. But if you're poor, you're very poor. And, like, I've seen, like, some of the, like, <laughs> like, projects in America. It's, like, it doesn't, like, compare to the neighborhoods, like, in Europe, you know? And the killings, it's, like, the murder oh in America is, like, All right, cool. 
You no. just explain. I, I understand what you're saying. You know what I mean? Like I'm not talking. Yeah. I'm not talking black. Stop and making fun of her. You said let her talk. Let her cook. Oh, let her cook. No, let no, she see. spoke. She spoke. I just want to address this. Um. All right. So, to be honest with you, I think that your perspective on America is ignorant and based off of um television and propaganda i think that you do not have a clear understanding of what you're talking about and you said something earlier you said i have black american cousins how do you know your cousins are black american did you do their genealogy or did they do their genealogy that's a different topic that's that goes into a whole other situation but um you say that sweden is has a better living a standard i would agree on that uh, i think nobody can deny that the standard the living standard is completely different but also the culture is completely different i have me traveling across the world i'll sit down and say something very clear america is the most realist version of reality than you that you'll get in the world so yeah sweden might be beautiful and you might have apartments and all this different type of shit but the right to be feeling that survivalist that you're actually living no, you guys are not really living in Sweden. You guys are there. You're having a great time, but you're not really living. You know, in America, you're really living. You put yourself on your back. You grind. You get you everything that you do as an American to start from zero to make something happen. You feel proud that you did that shit. You guys got everything handed to you guys on a boat, and that shit, don't, you don't feel nothing. I know friends who live in Denmark, speaking about Sweden, I know friends who live in Denmark who have the same type of similar conditions in household, and they always come back to live in New York. Because although that shit might sound good, it sounds good. But the culture, the, what makes a place is not the location. It's the people in the location. So when you sit down and you compare Sweden to America, no, 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 no. There's a reason why we are the most entertaining people in the world. There's a reason why we have the most, the third most innovative country in the world. There's a reason why. Now, you might be in Sweden and shit might look all handy dandy notebook, but yeah, it's the struggle and the grind that makes something more pretty than a fucking, I'd rather have, I'd rather build a house with my own fucking hands and appreciate it more than somebody just give me a house. It's a difference that come with that. And you don't understand the difference. So when you sit down and push this propaganda that's been fed into you, shorty, I'm going to tell you something. I don't know how old you are. I don't know what your financial situation is. I don't know what your freedom is between you and yourself. But I think that you should really leave your fucking country, leave your fucking comfort zone and live, like really live, live your life, go to different countries by yourself, live by yourself, go to America, live, travel through America, because you can't marginalize a whole continent of the United States. I'm not going to even, I'm not going to put Mexico in, in Canada and even the Caribbeans. You can't marginalize the whole America and say America is this. What are you talking about? Texas is completely different than New York. California is completely different than Miami. Like, it's different. Every location is completely different. And it's millions of people. And everyone's story is different. That's the value in life. You having a fucking nice standard of living and you having everything you fucking want don't mean that your life is more valuable or more fulfilling than anybody who go, who has to struggle to get what they want. Respect. Yeah, but That's just my perspective. Like you guys wanted to you wanted to know the reputation of america i'm saying like you no, oh yeah, oh, yeah. Let me no that. Let me we that. we wanted to africa yeah thank you that's what i was gonna say. thank you let's get back to the point and i see marcus in one level but i really want to get back to the point you sit down and you say that the representation of america is bad bullshit it everybody bullshit not, i'm in europe i've been in europe for 10 years traveling around the world i'm telling you that's bullshit everybody wants to come to america even people that talk shit about america they all sit down and say i can't wait i would love to go to america stop fucking capping that's bullshit we have the best fucking representation you anybody knows that you you, you go to america to make your dreams fucking come true so stop the bullshit we're the best we people want to be like us and if you're saying no, then you fucking lost the fucking game. And I don't even know why we're talking. Because that's fucking idiotic. Listen, Adonis, I'm talking about culture is different from living, like day-to-day -day living. Of course. Day-to-day -day living. Look, wait, wait, wait. I even say Americans are friendlier than Swedish people. Swedish people. Why are we talking about Americans again? Yeah, I'm yeah, exactly. Yeah. What is the culture of Africa? Let's get back to the point. Yep. Yeah, what's point. the culture of Africa? Because I don't want to keep talking about Africa because people are going to think I got a offense for Africa. What do you yeah, America. You want to keep talking about America. You mean Africa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whoa. Facts. Facts. Let's Let me, go. Let me just, yeah. Answer I, the question. I, 
<laughs> what is the reputation of Africa? No, we all ask you. Okay, you guys have said what you guys think. But I'm saying it's not think. It's historically backed up by facts. facts. There's me, no think. Let me talk. Like you guys are interrupting me. You you guys talk. You're and, deviating. <gasps> You're wasting our time with filler. Come oh on, my, stop the bullshit. Oh my god. Oh my god. But I'm saying this. Everybody's giving you thumbs up, thumbs Her, down. They're the giving you thumbs down. Hold on, hold on. Let it go. Let it go. Okay, the reputation of America. America. Africa. No, Africa. Africa. No, no, no. America. Americans. No. Are... No, no. He asked Damn. you what is the Damn. reputation of Africa. Don't do this. Don't be disagreeing. Don't... The reputation of Africa is Afrobeat, like jollof rice. What? No, yes. what are you talking about? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. Look, you know what? Get off the stage. All right. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm done. Damn, dude, what that was what is going on here. She said Afro beat. That's crazy. All right, I, I feel bad real quick, so I'm gonna let Marcus come up. Then one, lo oh, well, one love is a little long winded. I'm gonna let Joe come up. Then one love. How about I keep it real? Marcus, what's up? <laughs> It's okay. I own it. Hey, I don't own be it. laughing at him. I'm working on it, guys. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Hey, bro, nah, sometimes they need to learn. I had a question. I had a question for the Eritrean girl. Uh, well, it's actually two things. Well, one's a question, and one's more like an observation. Your name that you use on Twitter, Baby Girl, is a very American way of speaking, particularly within Black culture, because Black men. Typically, we call our women baby girls. Baby girls. Like, hey, what's up, baby girl? Yep. Yeah, that's that's typically <laughs> comes from our culture. And I know every and single she, baby girl heard that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let him go. Let him go. And, the, and, the, and the next thing I wanted to ask, because she was saying that Eritrea is so great and there's nobody starving, why did your parents leave Ethiopia, go to Sweden, and have a baby? You, Thanks. so that they could stay there. If your country. I bring her back. You know, I'll, like, I'll, no, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll give people my credentials. I was actually yep. stationed in East Africa for like almost two years in 2011 and 2012. You know what I'm saying? So I know what the fuck was you doing? What's happening out there? Hold on, the great one. I, Sorry, I, know bro. What, I know damn well what was happening out in East Africa like during that time. And let me tell you, Eritrea did not have a good reputation like at all. I would bring her back, but you know what's going to happen. She's going to give us a whole bunch of filler, and I don't know. She seems young, so I don't know. I, uh, Joe, what's up? I'm sorry. I'm, um, I'm kind of cook and go back and forth. It's all right. <laughs> I hope everyone's having a good night. I'm sorry I cut in um, Kai, Coyote or Coyote. I apologize because I didn't mean to speak before you. It was just that. I'm like, I just want to, I like when we stay on topic. I'm sorry, that's just how I am. <laughs> but um, as far as the reputation, we know what the word reputation means and how it is for every group of people. I would say that one of the things that really needs to be understood um, in regards to Black American culture is really that American culture is Black American culture. Um, these are things that are synonymous. <laughs> so when we have these conversations, when people say, they talk about Black Americans, and they always have this negative persona, and they always give this positive, these positive stereotypes to Caucasian Americans. Well, it's like most of Caucasian Americans' ideas and the things that they do come from taking from poor Black Americans. Let's just be real. So when people are like, oh, well, it's ignorance on both sides. We don't know your history as much. Hey, baby, are you breaking up? You breaking up, baby girl? Can you hear me? You said they're breaking up. Okay. It might be you, the great one. I hear her very clear. Can you hear? Okay. Okay. She's breaking up on my call. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm sorry I'm breaking up for you because I didn't I don't have a connection issue. I just checked. We'll start over again because I love what you were saying. Okay. What I was um the gist of what I was just saying is that in regards to America. America history is synonymous with Black American history. So for the people who don't know about Black Americans, i.e., I can use one of Adonis's clips from his videos, for example, a lot of people 
you wear ball caps. So that ball cap came from the United States um, in regards to what you're wearing. And a lot of people don't understand that. So when you're walking around with those LA Dodger caps and when you're walking around with New York um, Yankees caps, that came from that comes from Black Americans making it very trendy to wear these ball caps outside of just being a baseball fan only and matching it with their clothing. And a lot of people don't understand that. So when they ask themselves about slang, when people are saying words like cap, and they're saying 100, so I'm saying facts. A lot of people don't know that facts came from the guy, the black guys in prison who are screaming out, these are facts, these are facts. You're getting that from black Americans. So uh, uh, it's not that the words didn't exist, it's how the word usage is. You know how insane it is for, for that white people created urban dictionary. They go, they misinterpret words that we're using that they should have only been using in the proper context based off the Webster's Dictionary or whichever dictionary or lexicon you want to use. They were supposed to use those words a certain way. Americans, Black Americans have always had words, Negro spirituals or things they've used to use as subterfuge or covert language so they can speak to each other since a lot of the language, the intermixing languages, we didn't have anymore to speak to each other. So what people don't know that jive, slang, Negro spirituals, a lot of songs were our intercommunications that have been spread out and given to other groups of people. So when someone's telling you that, oh, they know Americans based off of this, you're telling me you know 340 million people spread out between 50 countries as well as territories. And then, especially for Black Americans, we're not concentrated in New York. So New Yorkers can't speak for Black America. They can only speak for the black Americans that they haven't under, misunderstood that live in the city of New York City and who are spread out across New York State, which is extremely racist, by the way, but we won't go there. When we look at the concentration of black Americans, they live in the south, southeast area of the United States. So a lot of people don't understand that you can't talk about the millions of us who live down here and what we're doing. If you live in South Carolina, your life is not the same as if you live in Louisiana. So you can't you can't have this reputation mindset for a whole country and then also for its people because you go out of the way to make sure you speak to the worst group of people. And I can't even say that the worst because I don't get to evaluate that. But you're making sure you're having obtuse conversations to promote having bad uh, a bad understanding to say, well, black Americans are like this. And, and that's just one of the things I want to make sure that people understand is that America, to Adonis's credit, is one of those places that lets you think it's the land of milk and honey in the way that you can have your white picket fence, your 2.5 kids, and you can have your family. Or you could have come from that. And what's the great part about it is you could have any color on your skin and that could be what you look like. America is not only a place to grind, but America is a place to live nice. So you can be a black American who came from a good lineage or a good background whose family isn't poor. That doesn't get promoted as much. Or you can be the, the black American who grinds or you can be the immigrant who comes here, which most of them came through as far as white ones came through Ellis Island after a certain time period. So most of them haven't even been living on this continent that long when we really want to have a conversation about it. So. When you, when you speak about Black American culture, you should understand that you're actually speaking about Americans m realizing that their best skill is marketing and that their skill at being cunning is saying, we'll take this group of people that somehow manages to pull themselves up by the bootstraps. They love that phrase. And they're able to take, no matter the, diver the, the negativity and the adversity that they face, and they're somehow able to produce America's greatest skill is promoting the production of the group of people that they utilize racism to promote classism. So while all these other countries, and I'll land here, while all these other countries are practicing this extreme form of classism that's been heir apparent throughout history for millennia, America was a smarter, more cunning country. And they said, well, why don't we promote, why don't we keep the racism going that came through the later medieval times um, through through traffic slavery, through, through work, instead of sex trafficking that happened on Eastern Africa. And why don't we keep these people always working? And as well as we keep our poor whites working, because nobody wants to talk about that. So that's what they did.
American culture is promoting racism through keeping the country, the, the continent, excuse me, the country working constantly through promotion, promoting their marketing skills of taking from a group of people who actually makes everything better and the whole world produces off of us. So that's it. I'm going to say this before I let one love go on. Dude, that was dope. I'm going to say this before I let one love go on. Um, this is why these videos I create are very important. If you like, this is a perfect example of how people really think and what they really believe out here. You see how adamant the smile, the smirk, you can hear it in the voice of when she's sitting down talking about the poverty and the poor and the, the so confidence, the hundred percent confidence of how they envision us. This is why these videos that I create are very important because if I didn't show you, it would be very difficult for you to believe it, that people really, there are people out there that are so institutionalized, so colonized, that are in full-blown ignorance of not only their own history, but the history of the people that they're cosplaying and imitating. How can you have America without Black Americans in it? The vision that you see of America, how can you have that? It's, they don't even realize that the idea or the concept of or the vision, the, the picture, the, the imagery in their head of what they identify as the success of America is poured in bloods of black Americans. They don't even see that. They don't even realize that. They think that, oh, it's just American swag. These videos are the reason. These videos are the reasons why. How do I say this? Let me rearrange that. This is the reason why when I have these conversations and I do these in these videos, it's for two very important reasons. One, I think it's very important that melanated or black people in America or Americans in general realize that there are agents or implants of people out there who have been so institutionalized, so colonized that they do not even know the reality of a particular situation and they're just full-blown implants ready to attack us at any moment in time. These videos are to inform and educate not only Americans, but also inform and educate every other ethnicity and nationality on what the actual facts was. Wanted to appreciate every single person that was talked up and spoke about this room who came to and came back to the point. You cannot fight and delete historical evidence to prove your own narrative. That's the point. History is history. It's already been documented. Respect the generations that come before you. And, and it's not just about America. Respect the African generation. Respect the Jamaican generation. Just because you might be have a very, ooh, just because you come from a very influential country right now, which is the United Kingdoms, does not mean you get to rewrite the lineage and the historical relevancy of the people that you associate yourself with. Bar. Now, one love. <laughs> you gonna stop. You. <laughs> it's okay. It's warranted. Um, it's hard to really. You. I don't get a chance to really talk to you often. So when we have space, I got a lot to say. <laughs> Okay, so Joe, man, oh my gosh, I, I, I'm you, I'm definitely if I'm not already following you, I'm following you, beautiful queen, cause that right there, yes. Speaking about um, that, hold on, one love, hold on. Yeah. Anybody, if anybody in this particular chat that's listening to the chat, you heard somebody say something informative that you resonate with, that you threw an emoji for, that you enjoyed the conversation, they gave you some historical information or anything that made you think, hit these guys with a follow. If you see them on here and they actually give giving you some knowledge, it took them time to learn that information. It took them time to do that research to back up their talk. Don't hesitate to follow people that actually can give you some informative insight because if you like these type of conversations and they're talking, most likely they like to have these conversations as well and you might bump to somebody that might change your life appreciate it one love perfect that that was uh, spot on and then to marcus i want to say shout out to our um soldiers especially our black soldiers um who serve um across the world for um our country they don't always get highlighted and identified um regardless of how people feel about our military um if it was not for 
um, the descendant community that served in the military, America would not have its freedoms as it has today. The Revolutionary War was not won solely based on um, the population wanting to um, detract from Britain and all these other countries. It was because they actually enlisted um, slaves during that time um, winning America's freedom. So I want to say shout out to all our brothers and sisters, melanated um, Black Americans who serve for the United States. Um, I see you. I recognize you. I recognize the history in um, in all that you all do. And even if it's for um, the building up of yourselves individually and your families, I appreciate you. Um, <laughs> so with all I said, um, I noticed that, again, baby girl wanted to compare herself to America and compare, again, her cultural and her ethnic experience to America, but she would not compare herself to her native country that which she said she comes from. That's the first thing. That was very telling to me because that lets me know that she believes that being in a impoverished country in Eritrea, <laughs> somehow everybody's eating but they poor but everybody's eating and that um she also said well we want to only trade with um asia or china but everybody's poor still um that lets me know again the disenfranchisement that a lot of the countries will go through in africa that's part of its historical record right now um wanting to be saved by the Western world, but also being taken advantage and colonized. I mentioned this earlier by other countries who are keeping the people there um, is a reflection of, like you said, the population on that landmass contributing to its own demise. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to actually have that conversation and they get upset when Black Americans say, well, we are fighting for our um, repair and our genocide in our country, you all need to do the same. Folks get upset because that's now forcing you to go and do something that you uh, mentally are not prepared or haven't wrapped your head around because you leave your countries for the same thing that you keep wanting to deny others. That's literally her whole stance was they're pretty, um, yeah, they're poor, but, you know, we, um, uh, we live in good. No, she's living good. She's living good. Cause sh we haven't talked to anybody that's actually living in Eritrea right now on this stage. So I don't even know if she could really even speak for her own land right now because she's not there. And then putting it on, us as if well y'all just don't know your history you know there's a you know there's this ignorance you know and i said this before the both side conversation really has to be broken down because what does that mean compartmentalize that's what i got from joe and i say this all the time you cannot have an honest conversation if you're not going to just pull google up you can just sit on damn Google when you're on their spaces. You can enter any old thing. They got AI now that allows you to actually pull information in real time. Now you're going to have to, you know, for those who know how to research, going to have to fact check some of that stuff. But for the most part, um, you can go to Just Store. You can even pull information from the universities. From my understanding, people who come from uh, international universities are supposed to be the well educated well where are you i'm waiting to hear from you i have not ran into you yet um but i have run into the disdain for information being exposed and i think we really really need to unpack that you cannot sit here and not want to have a conversation and say that these things are better in this place in this area and you do not give us the name you don't give us the reference. You don't, you don't show and prove how people who obtain these uh, educational backgrounds in the, uh, uh, internationally, and they, uh, they're applying it in countries that are, are destabilized. I'm lost right now. 
because don't become a doctor in America and then turn around and say, well, you know, uh, we have better doctors in foreign countries. Where? Which country? Where, what university did they attend? I'd like to know. I'm just saying. And I'm going I'm to land there because it was a lot said there. And I'm, I'm working on trying not to be too, too long winded. <laughs> Um, Marcus, what's up, bro? Yeah, hold on real quick. I'm walking back inside. But um, I remember growing up, like, being uh, black wasn't, like, a cool thing. Especially when it came to, like, these foreigners, right? My bad, it closed my garage. But being, being black wasn't, like, a thing that was good. And we know this because they were not allowed to hang around us. Uh, growing up, anytime that you would see an African, they'd be like, I'm not black, I'm not black, I'm not black. So what they would say, and they would always go back to their country. They'd be like, I'm not black, I'm Nigerian, I'm not black, I'm Eritrean, I'm Ethiopian. So we got to understand that we don't have any allies. All we have is, is uh, each other, and we got to realize that. Uh, Ade B, what's up, bro? Yeah, I've been listening to some of the stuff that um, you lot have been saying. Um, I'm based in London. I've seen some of your content, Adonis. Um, I think it's um, hold on. He said he's based in London. He said he's based in London. I can hear you, bro. Yeah, I've seen some of your content in it. You you've done some stuff in is that, is that correct? I want to be clear and concise. So you, bro, are you on headphones right now? Give me a second. Yeah, yeah. Audio is a bit muffly. I can't hear him at all. I'm gonna drop down. All right. I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, much better. Sure. So I've seen some of your content in London and stuff. Were you interviewing people in London? Is that correct? Is that? Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, I think it's um. You know, I'm a person. I'm a pan Africanist. I think it's important to create links and find in 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 systems of white supremacy that runs the West, that runs the USA. That one's Europe, that one's the world. I think it's important for us to create links, not necessarily uh, make things difficult. You know, even on this app, people like Elon Musk, which is a clear white supremacist. You know, I think some of you lot from this side don't really focus on that aspect of white supremacy at all. You know, so I think it's important to make bonds. What do you think about that? I think that, um, all right, so when it comes down to making bonds, I think that first you can't make a bond when uh when you fucked up so I, I feel like right now like when it comes down to like all right, from my personal perspective or my own personal biases based on my interactions i feel like there's a problem in the uk in particularly because it's a generational problem basically the older generation the people who are actually mindful and aware and educated they're not on social media but the young generation who's predominantly like ignorant, uh, they don't really care for their past generations. They don't really have the respect for the next, the generation before them. They're on social media. So when I shoot these videos, I'm like, I think that black Americans wouldn't even have a problem with having unity or any, we've never did all the, all the, all the separation and divisiveness is all coming from the other side. Even when I came to London, it's like, you know, London is, it's a second a second copy of American culture, but when you go, I, I, I would disagree. Definitely disagree because um, you would say that, but there's other things that are going on that's not necessarily to do with the USA. Like what? With me, like what? Um, in relation to ourselves, um, the music yeah. and stuff. Some of the music that we've created has got nothing to do with what's happened to the USA. Like what? Like what? Music? Like drum and bass, jungle and stuff like that. It's got nothing. Oh to yeah, do with yeah. That. All right, you got that. You got drum and UK, bass. UK, UK, UK garage and stuff like that. You know. It's 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 our thing. So um, yeah, but UK, but we're talking about all right. We're talking about these times in these days. UK garage, 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 and drum and bass. Those music styles have completely died down in the UK at this moment. Not necessarily. We can both no, agree no, on no. that. Now nah, we can both agree on that. Right now, let's be honest, bro. Let's be honest. Drill, it, drill is really taking off. And after good, drill, but and the, after the number one, the number one um, song was it last week? This week is a drum and bass tune with um, a black UK artist on it so i like to be concise with what i say you know i 
And essentially, um, like I said before, I think white supremacy is the one that's really a big, a bigger problem than you know all of no, that. I agree I with you. I, 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 I travel too. I'm a person that travels across. I travel. I travel to the United States, and I see. Oh, where have you been? Com- I come to the um, East Coast, more Maryland and um, New York, that sort of thing. Um, and I find mm. that we do have mm-hmm. um, commonalities wherever we go in the world. We have things that are in common as well, not just. You know, no, you we don't, don't have nothing. Sometimes some of the things that we don't have in common, I think we have some things in common too. I don't feel like, Negative. to be honest with you, Negative. yeah, I, that's what I was gonna say. I, to be honest with you, I don't, and that's the that's the one thing I do. Like, I generally don't feel, I don't feel like we have things in common, and it's not because like I don't want to. It's just like when we go to the Caribbean and you speak to the Jamaicans there. Even the Jamaicans in the UK compared to the real Jamaicans in Jamaica are completely different. The mentality is completely different. I've been to Jamaica too. I've been to Jamaica yeah, too. Yeah, so you, do, you can agree. We, no, we do have things in common. I, I totally disagree with what you're saying, to be fair. I think we do. I think we need to make those bonds. And I think it's, for me, it's important to do that. Some people want to um, make things difficult. I think, in the system, like I say, white supremacy is the biggest issue. So these issues that we have, I don't think as big as white supremacy. You may think they are. I don't think they're as big as I white think supremacy. that you guys are being used as tools to promote white supremacy. It, that's just ridiculous. There's no, um, you know, I think that's not the case, to be fair. I think we okay, should be careful so about what I'm, we say when we say things like that. Because, no, I'm very, I'm because, very careful. No, 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 because, because white immigrants, I don't think you would the, focus. So you don't focus on necessarily white immigrants. And I think if you want to tell the whole picture of how people are living in the West, it's good to focus on you know white people, the majority in all these countries that we live in, ain't they? So we should look at that too. I think no, that's no, we, and that would be more fair, at, wouldn't it? No, 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 no. I'm only looking at you guys. I'm only looking at you. I think exactly. Like 100%. That's, that's the issue. That's that would be the issue, isn't it? Because you know, um, UK is mostly a white country. Yeah, but that, yes. that's, not, so, that's not the problem. It's good to look at the most people, the people that live there the most. I think that would be slightly better as well. That'd no, on, but on, that, that would defeat the purpose. That would defeat the purpose of my statement saying that you guys are being used. So, to so that's divisive. Pressure. That's the problem, isn't it? That will be divisive then. If, if it has to be divisive, then it's okay, but it doesn't defeat Yeah, but you're not finding statement. solutions. Okay, so you're divisive. The solution, hold on, hold on. The question that you should have asked is how and why. Because you didn't ask how and why, that means you immediately. No, because I don't believe I don't I don't agree with your estimation of situations. Because you need to you need to find if there's a problem with something. This is the way I think. If you have a problem with something, you try to find a solution. Not say, oh, it's just bad. You can't find a solution if you don't know how and why. No, you're looking for a problem, isn't it? You're looking for a problem. No, right? I know all the problem. You're but... about, all you're talking about is a problem. Other black people are issued their problem. White immigrants, okay, for some reason. They're fine. You don't have any issues with white immigrants, and that's the problem. White, I think that white immigrants. You're not looking. You're not looking at the situation fairly because you're not looking at the white aspect. The white aspect. I'm telling you, the white aspect is bigger than the black. No, no, aspect. no, 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 no. Listen, it listen. Is. That's not. How, listen. Let me tell you something. That's not how American culture works. American how does it work, culture. Then? All right. American culture is predominantly ran. Well, predominantly influenced by Black American culture. Now we've all been woke for about I don't know forty. Probably, Who controls probably the government than... in the United States? Who controls the government around the world in, in, in these white countries? Rich um, people. Yeah, rich people. White but people. that's not what we're talking about. No, they don't country, control the government in Asian countries, so that's why we can't always agree on what. Yeah, they do. On, they do. I don't, don't want to do, do, do defeat. Hold on, hold on, bro, bro, bro. You gotta, you gotta understand how this works. And, then, and you gotta stop jumping. To, you gotta stop jumping, jumping to different. Um, uh, targeted, yeah. uh, 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 um, what is it called? Uh, nuances because you're you're wanting a, a question for one thing and then you jump to something else and be like, well, we got to look at this too. Well, white supremacy actually um, is the contributor to the fact that you think a certain way, and the moment that you hear a different perspective, you throw it out as it's invalid because you don't yeah. agree. That's not no, how no, no, Conver- that's not the case. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Everybody, everybody calm down, everybody calm down. Hold on, yes, down. please, don't get upset. I want, oh, just give me a second, I, I, give me a second. Everybody, everybody oh, give me a second. Oh, okay, got gotcha. Listen, there's a particular issue that needs to happen. I'm not, I'm not in here for a debate. I'm here for, I'm always in for informative conversation to understand clarity between both perspectives. The only issue that I think that you, that I wouldn't even say issue, the only red flag that flopped in my head, particularly pertaining to um, AD, 
uh, that you did is that you didn't ask why and you didn't ask how. Now, that's a red flag in my head because it seems that you're not trying to be informed on what's actually happening and you're stuck in your own propaganda or your own perspective. It's not propaganda. I'm just saying that white supremacy is the number one issue, isn't it? So yeah, but if you, don't know, how you're, if you don't know how you're being that, used... You, just, you as, just deflect. Is white supremacy the number one issue or is it not? Is white supremacy the number one issue in what? Yes, because they control all areas of activity, isn't it, in the United States? Yeah, but that's, that sounds great. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You, no, no, you, no, 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 that sounds great. But you also have to be great. aware. Like it's, a, it's either I'm telling the truth or I'm lying, isn't it? No, I'm you're lying. not. You're, 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 you're basically talking about a general statement and you're not. It's not a general statement. You see, that's the issue there, isn't it? Would you like me to respond or you just want to... Would you like me to respond? Or you, you know what? I agree. Yeah, I would like fine. you to respond, but all right, good. I'll let you. I, I, I agree with no, you. No, right? no, no, no. Stop. Self with this response is winning. Hold on. I agree with him. All right, cool. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's just let's just agree. Cool. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, yeah, bro, 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 He's not going to fight against white supremacy. Listen, listen, listen. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do this. All right, cool. You're right. He's right. He's 100% right. Now what? Good. Okay, could I, could I finish? So I think yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Once, that, once we've established that, I think it's important that if this issues... Mm -hmm. Yo, bro, great one. Chill, bro. I, like, like, stop. I know. I'm, I'm on chill on this one, but I know that he's weak. Yeah, I know, but... You see that? I, 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 I like the personal attacks. I like I like conversation where, you know, we can just get through issues. Nah, focus on me. Focus on me. Good, good. So essentially, but now that we've established that, I think it's important that if we have issues between each other, we should find ways of solutions, ways of walking forward. I think instead of saying these people are bad, and I think social media is 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 a thing where we need to, you know, it's quite there's there's a lot of toxic stuff out there. We need to really find ways of making it less toxic. So well, that's you've, why well, I, I well you've I, I already failed essentially. Well, you've already failed because I'm not listening anymore. I've already said you agreed, and uh, I don't even like I I don't even care for what, where you want to help or where you want to go with because you did not interact or engage in this particular conversation. You've already failed. Yeah, like I'm already my door is already closed mentally with your, this conversation. Yeah, okay. objective. Are we right. objective yeah, when you. When, well, yeah, that's we object. Uh, um, this is a great lesson for everybody else. Your objective when having a conversation is to have clarity and understand. If somebody actually says something to you that you do not agree with, you actually want to let them talk. I don't want to talk more than the other person. I actually want to listen more than the other person wants to talk. And when somebody responds to that statement that you particularly have, you have to consume their information and then use that information that they're saying to prove your point instead of deflect their particular statement and it go around and say, no, 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 no. Like I said, the red flag that came up to me is the fact that he didn't say how or why. Because he doesn't understand how I think or why I think they're being used as propaganda to promote white supremacy. They think, well, he particularly thinks that, no, 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 white supremacy is the problem. Cool. White supremacy is the problem. But what white supremacy? Who do you think white supremacy? All white supremacy. No, 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 no. Because there's layers to this. There's levels to this shit. We know this. Black Americans have been through this for fucking generations. There's levels to this white supremacy shit. So who white supremacy are you talking about? And let's clarify. Now, let me just clarify to everybody else that's in the room. The reason why I sit down and I say that I believe that they're being used as uh, pawns to be targeted against, uh, to promote white supremacy is because the one particular most popular, uh, I would say, uh, black uh, melanated people out of the black Americans we have the most influence throughout the world in multiple different fields of elements that we talk about. Cool. They are undermining the people that have the most powerful voice in social economy at this moment in time. They're constantly talking down or talking negative and, and projecting these ideologies, which are toxically influencing multiple people on an international level of a toxic narrative relating or correlating to black Americans. Your people are allowing this to happen. Now, I love the videos that I do, but instead of trying to debate me or G-check me, why don't you grab some of these ignorant people that I'm actually talking to, smack the fuck out of them, sit them down and educate them and talk to them with real, the real facts. That's what I would say. But based off him, I thought he was a really articulate person. I heard the way he spoke. I don't have a problem with any people that come into the chat and want to talk. It's cool. What I do have a problem with is bulldogish type behavior 
um, not trying to have an intellectual conversation, I have a problem with that. If you're not trying to understand what's going on, you're not trying to articulate your points, you're not trying to have a dialogue or a conversation, what the fuck are we doing here? You're right. Cool. I agree with you. Cool. Next. Who the fuck on? There was no point. There was nothing. I couldn't even get a conversation in. That's pure ignorance. That's literally ignorance. You just want to hear what you want to hear. You don't give a fuck about what's happening. No, no, no. White support. Okay, cool. I'm from a completely different culture that's been battling white supremacy for a very fucking long time. And you don't want to know why I think you are a pawn in their scheme. That's ignorance. Actually, willfully accepting ignorance. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> I'm just changing old girl there, are you? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's so crazy, bro. Like, and this is what I deal with. Like, when I make these videos, it's like, bro, like, you just seen two people do the exact same thing. Uh, all right, Marcus, one love, Joe. Oh, you got a couple people want to add in. All right, cool. No, I'll let the ladies go first. I, I just put my hand up. <laughs> Ooh, ladies, man. Go ahead, Red. Um. I'm, I'm gonna add a couple of new people wasn't, in real quick. Wasn't me or Joe first? <laughs> What's up, y'all? Was it yeah, was it my go? Was it my turn? Huh? Who up? Who, who was who? that? Uh, okay, so I'll just say again. I think that that was uh, whoever's next. I'll just wait. You you took Ooh. the words right out of my you took the words right out of my mouth because he recognized literally he had, he was not intending on wanting to have a con. Can you guys hear me? Perfect. I think there's some feedback. Yeah, a little bit. I'm not. Okay. Is that better? Okay. Uh, he never. Is somebody intended... talking right now. I can't hear anything. I'm going to bring you down, Greg, and I'm going to bring you back up because someone is talking. What's good, family? So I was asked in the post, what about using a ball belly underneath your beard, right? Or using it on your facial hair? I said, I didn't know about this. So I was like, well, the only way to find out is to try it. We look at Scruffy. Let's fix that. Bald buddy. Let's get to work. Now, I did two full passes. Hit it with some water, clean it out. You know, after I checked it. Then hit it again. And here the final results. Side by side. And boom. Don't forget the aftershave cream or the aftershave spray, depending on which one you want. The aftershave spray got the alcohol. Discount code and the link is below. Save yourself some money. Thank you. He never intended on having a conversation. And I was getting a little annoyed because I, I, I saw that right then and there. Um, and you took the words right out of my mouth because white supremacy has literally broken down how it has been implemented by so many different avenues, um, comprehension, uh, education, history, um, when it comes to depopulation, when it comes to genocide. There are so many different um uh, uh conversations we can have on what white supremacy impact has done and it doesn't mean that it's all white people um even just in the conversation he is a him and baby girl not their culture and ethnicity it's their mentality of thinking what i recognize is baby girl was like let me talk let me talk and his was this is how i think this is what i believe Right. And so when you look at that, I wanted to ask him, like, do you know who Joy DeGruy is? Do you know who any of uh, historic, uh, uh, any historic, historic, historian, historians, excuse me, um, who literally talk about um, um, uh, different avenues of uh, uh, ethnic uh, genocide in history um, and how um, the impact of the Europeans and other groups have impacted Africa. He was like, well, we need to not, you want to, he said, you want to focus on the problem. Well, I want to focus on the solution. Well, in order for you to actually talk about a solution, you have to know what the problem is. That goes back to your point of he didn't ask you to why, which I thought he was going to, but he himself didn't even want to acknowledge that there is a why and how. And there is not just only a why and how, there is also the in-between of who did it. 
identify those people, name them. What were what was their contribution and um, backgrounds in making these things possible? And that is the same thing goes back to baby girl. They don't want to. I don't know if they want to ignore again um, documented history uh, or their. You know, you know I, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Uh, it's very. Uh, uh, that's a very scary thing because it lets me know that in the grand scheme of wanting to have this diaspora conversation or, you know, unite the world, that there are people who don't want to unite the world. And this new term of moving forward, uh, I don't know who started that, but I need y'all to stop it because you can't move forward if you don't know what has happened. That's an oxymoron. Thank you. Where, what are you moving forward to and how are you going to move forward and not repeat the same thing? I just, okay. <laughs> Good shit. That was great. Like that was uh, exactly. Thank you. Whoa, Jesus. Yes. Christ. All right. Trade um, um, Trade, what's up? And then we're going to bring up Greg. Yo, peace and peace and bless to the room. I have one question for y'all. What do y'all think our numbers in America is for FBAs? Like they they give us a number of 44, 45 million and then changes. Way larger. Million. You think it's way larger? We're the majority. We're the majority. Is it a majority? Yes. Can we I have never, we have never don't, been don't forget Joe. We, we have sorry, never been accurately joke. counted on any census, so okay. and they admit that. So, so you think so so you think we're the majority of, of, of America? Like we 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 beat yes. we beat white people. Why do you yeah, think they have they're, we're undercounted? Why they do you think they have 20 million illegals? And we, we're believe. undercounted legally. Um, it's been proven that was part of the uh reparations in California. That was one of their their uh on the commissions. That was one of the things they pointed out is the census severely undercounts us and it's documented by the OMB. So, a question so, a question for y'all. So, I have I have some friends. Let's say, for example, I have friends who are uh, who are African, right? First generation African people. Well, so second generation, well, they born here, so first, I guess first generation, right? But they include them as well in in our numbers. So, how would you would you I mean, I know we're the majority of Black people in the country, but would y'all say that we are uh, we're still? Can you say all right? I'm. I read an article. I can't, I can't think of what article it was, but it said in the next thirty years from now, Black America it's gonna be more immigrant blacks than is Black Americans in this country. I don't know how true that is, but I read that in um in an article somewhere. I can't find. I can't think of it right now. I gotta find it, and look it up. But that's what they're saying. Well, I who mean, is they? Who is in, they? Wait, wait, wait. Who's uh, they? Who's black, saying that? Black. black uh, I can. I can bring. It, I can, I'm, I'm find an article right now. Give me one second. It says mm -hmm. black immigrants are going to outpopulate the uh, black American population. Well, I mean, Does that matter? Wait, wait, wait. Who's uh, they? Who's uh, it is called uh, uh, Pew Research Center. That's what it's called. Pew Research Center. They said Let's not debate Pew Research because they can. They literally can take a segment of the population and go to one state, and like let's say Montana, um, okay. um, Idaho. Idaho is ninety-seven percent Caucasian. They'll go. Um, they'll go and pull like ten thousand people, which is they send them a card in the mail and ask them to check off something, or somebody harasses them at like a Walmart or whatever, and they'll be like, "Oh well, ninety percent of the population thinks this." So I'm. I'm I, I say mm -hmm. like, if you want to give us a study about something else that's been done, please know the roots, please know the group, none of that. Then I say, let's answer that question on a different hand um, because they, they still count um, immigrants. They already know how many, especially brown immigrants that come through, um, especially came through legally. Um, mm. So I say, like, if you want to ask us to debut to dispute Pew Research, this kind of, I'm not saying you're being disingenuous. I'm saying the the whole idea of di disputing studies like that is I'm not studies but research things like that is BS. It's really mm. honest. it's honestly BS. And right now it's just it's just going to get us off topic to make us start disputing something. And instead of having a realistic conversation that could lead to something like that conversation, you see what I mean? Mm, I got you, girl. Got you. Um. Oh, we lost we lost somebody. Damn. All right, Marcus, what's up, man? Great. We lost. Right, right. Yeah. I was just gonna say earlier uh, when you're talking to that I day dude, he did the very thing that I was talking about in the beginning of how the the melanated immigrants don't listen. They don't want to listen. Like anytime you tell them something that's different from the status quo, from what they've been taught, either in Africa or in Europe or when they come to school here, 
when we tell them our stories, when we tell them our, our perspective, if it's not what they've been taught that we should say or how we should respond, they don't listen. They, they start talking over us. They talk down to us. They start trying to say that we're, you know, this and, you know, we're this and we're that. They, they're, they never want to have an honest, genuine conversation. They just don't. And I don't believe it. And I wanted to ask him, like, what would be the benefit of us allying with them? Because as far as I know, America has many more commodities than the rest of the world. So if, if it broke down to it, we don't really need to ally with anyone other than other black Americans. And that's really it. Oh, I can't see you could say shit like that. I can't say shit like that. I can't say shit like that. I got a platform, but I respect that. I understand where you're coming from, but I can't say shit like that. They'll fucking strip me this fucking kingdom come and pull out. He's a, he's, he's this, he's that. Greg, what's up, man? I came in when, uh, can y'all hear me okay? Yeah, we got you. Oh, okay, cool. I came in when old dude a day was talking and it was crazy because he started off with garish music and jungle music, not like us not having anything to do with it, which is exactly what he said, but we do. Like it's rooted in it's electronic music. Electronic music. Um, it's got electro pop, it's got um a little R and B influence, it's got a little like all of the genres that we've created. And I find it weird whenever they do that, what he literally just did, but they also do it with like drill. They'll put the UK in front of it and then just it becomes something new. Like it's very colonizy ish and it's it's very weird um and it's it's interesting and even just even hear hearing him speaking even hearing some of the people in your content speak um in regards to london and it it there it seems as if they're trying to build roots there um but they're heavily influenced by, by us which we're another first world country they're heavily influenced by us the culture that we built for ourselves but they 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 constantly try to deny our influence and try to deny our contribution. And even in just this idea of, I guess, um, what somebody in the space said about people coming here and outnumbering us after a certain amount of years, we'll still be who we are because we're rooted in this country. We're not trying to find roots in a country that we don't come from. Um, and so it's 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 a weird dichotomy, and it's even weird just thinking about again to your content. The guy with the locks who had the jersey um, of the African dude who's in the NBA now. Still our culture. You, like, you're still pulled. Like, it doesn't become something new just because you have it on or because you, which by all means, you know, pay respects to the guy who, you know, is from your country or whatever that's in the NBA. But at the same time, don't think that you invented the fucking wheel. Um, so it's just, it's, it's, it's weird having these type of conversations because I think at the end of the day, um, <laughs> the anti-blackness and the anti-black Americanness ends up coming out to some extent, even if it's not even as conscious as, you know, somebody who's blatantly anti-black or anti-black American. Like, I think it's that sort of, I don't know, diminishing, it's the d diminishing for me. Like, I don't, I don't like it. I, d I don't respond to it well, because at the end of the day, you tell us what you think of us um, whenever you say certain things. And I think he, and even just not even trying to have a conversation about the things that he was bringing up, I think it is and has been for a really long time that either you listen to what I'm saying or you shut up, you just shut up because you don't contribute anything. What you've done isn't significant, which we know how significant it is. The world knows um, and they know, but at the end of the day, when you don't have a level of respect from some for, for people, um, these are the things that you'll do. But I'll land there. No, I, also, you just maybe, not to say that it's everybody, because obviously everybody doesn't think that way. But at the same time, when you have examples like these where he can blatantly just say the things that he did without knowing better, then it's just, yeah, it's that. But yeah, I'll let me. You know, you just made me think of something and realize something. And I'm thinking, I'm wondering, because I'm taking the, the comparison between this guy that we just spoke to and then the girl, baby girl as well. And then all the other like podcasters that I see. Even the one with the guy you're talking about with the jersey is a pattern. And I was just, it maybe clicked in my head. Maybe this type of uh, domination of the vocal domination is a form of control where they feel like they've won. Like 
maybe like I'm starting to because even when we was in like when I interviewed the guy with the jersey, Pinky is his name, you know, he was like talking, trying to talk over me. And for me, I'm one of those type of people that just because I allow you to talk, don't think you won. You know, I'll let you talk. I'll let you cut me off and blah, 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 blah. And I'll be like, all right, cool. And let you and hear what you have to say unless you're not saying something. If you're saying something informative, I'll let you continue. But if you're not, I'll just cut you off and just move on. But I don't think that, from my perspective, I think that I don't want to put it, I don't want to marginalize everybody, but I'll say uh, I've gotten to the particular stance where it's more important what you're saying than how you're saying it. You know, I don't care how loud you get. You can be the loudest person in the world. If you can't say anything that intellectually piques my interest, what are you doing? And what are we talking about? So I, I, I he lost credit, and I never really like to kick people out of the chat. I never really like to be all fuck off type shit. But it's the belligerent, loud talking over people with not actually trying to have an informative dialogue or understand what's going on. And that was kind of like, it's like a dog that's trying to, you know, uh, claim his area. And it's like, bro, it's just a bit too much. But yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, I think that you articulated yourself very well with that, Greg. And it was great. Um, you came up and spoke about this particular situation. And I don't, and I agree with you 100%. I'm going to say this again. It's not all Africans. It's not all UK people who act like this. We, we cannot marginalize a particular whole group of people. But in response to what Joe said earlier, and a lot of you other guys said, is it becoming their reputation? That's a question. I'm not sure. Uh, Joe and One Love. And then after that, Greg. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I Wasn't that Greg who just spoke? I just wanted to say, because I, I, I just had something to say, if that was Greg. Yeah, 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 Greg. Yeah, yeah okay. that was. So, okay, thank you, Greg. Okay. No, I appreciate I appreciate Greg said that the anti-Blackness is Arab, I mean, excuse me, let me be more precise. The anti-Black Americanness is, is so air apparent with a lot of the things that people say. I see it so often and so much throughout your interviews, Adonis. You're, you're, you're giving a perfect um, platform to be able to show because you're being you're allowing them to give their answer and you're responding. But like, let's say we look at K. Jordy, and and I don't want to call somebody out, but there's there's an extreme amount of anti-blackness when he also allows his you know the people he's interviewing on the street, and that goes beyond just like um, the different types of quote unquote melanin groups he's speaking to also a lot of the, the different types of Caucasians, if you will, so-called Caucasians, um, if you will, when he's speaking to, and you're like, where is this coming from? Because it's so odd. You know, a lot of people in regards to when I use that word reputation, um, people don't understand the word reputation and stereotype in regards to them being positive and negative. Um, we're so condition and i would say when i say we i say we as the eight billion people in the world are so conditioned to accepting negative stereotypes about black americans all the while utilizing things that they've made popular and allowed you to feel like you're confident to even make money off of um that when i i, I don't want to say his name improperly but when the last guy came in he was from the uk um you notice that they immediately have to to have this it's this entitlement to say, okay, you're big up in yourself too much. Now shut up and let's just agree to something. That's what I took from that Adonis a little bit when he was speaking. And also like with baby girl. Oh, well, you got to understand we're pretty. We're not a part of these things. Like we're not poor like you guys. And I went to the Black American Projects. You know what she didn't say that she went to? Well, she didn't say that she went to the outskirts of any state, um, any state city, um, excuse me, any city, town, township in, in America and saw the the poor whites living in trailer parks, right? It's funny how black Americans, I will say, and I'll give this to, for black Americans, FBA, AUS, as well as the black Africanized immigrants and Caribbeans, you guys have a horrible sense of poor whites. You don't realize that most of Europe is poor and you don't realize most of American whites are poor. You don't realize that the reason why I disagreed, and I'll, I'll do exactly what you did, Adonis. The reason why I disagreed with white supremacy is because white supremacy is not what people think. Um, when you're at the top, you're going to protect your interests. So right now in the world and for the past couple of hundred years, I do want to make sure people are aware that only for a few hundred years have, quote unquote, the so-called Caucasian man been in power. Um, his protected interests, he's done so by empowering 
the people who are poor but look like him by utilizing their skin color in Western countries. That's exactly what happened. We all practice a certain form of supremacy no matter where we come from. So when your group is in power, you practice supremacy. I don't like the idea that whiteness is ruling the world. No, people with money and power are ruling the world. And however that form looks like in the entire world is what is going to be produced through it. And that's going to be the outcome. So in, re in actuality, richer Americans who are white, just let you know, when they took over the U.S. as far as the country and that land mass, what they did with the poor white indentured servants is they had to surround themselves, but they couldn't give them the game plan. One thing that a rich white person hates is a poor white person. I will repeat this so that way everybody understands under the sound of my voice. One thing that a rich white person hates is a poor white person. In America, rich white people would rather do business with a black person who is a, who's a debt than a poor white person. They can't stand them. And I will tell you, poor white people do not like white people who are rich either. So when you guys make these statements and you and then you're having conversations with immigrants and they want you to be like, oh, no, it's white supremacy. Which supremacy? You mean Caucasians? Have you ever heard of Grant Cardone? Do you know what Grant Cardone talks about poor whites all the time? He cannot stand poor white people. He doesn't even believe that white people should be poor because in the United States, because we don't use traditional classism. You know that I wish you guys would go and you would listen to Dave Ramsey. Perfect example. It's, I, I apologize for bringing Grant Cardone first. Please, everyone, go to YouTube or just listen to the shorts. Dave Ramsey speaks to 95% Caucasians. 95% of those Caucasians are descended from poor whites that descend from other parts of U Europe. And those people are allowed to, because of the red line and because of the things they are doing, they can go a million dollars in the debt. You being black could never be a million dollars in the debt because no one's ever going to give you a million dollar loan. Dave Ramsey spoke to a couple one time. One was a lawyer. The other one was a lobbyist, right? This couple was a million dollars in debt. And he asked them how much of their million dollar debt was student loans. They only said 20%, 200,000, 25%. So we're looking at it. These people had $700,000 of consumer debt. And they said the reason why they were in debt is because they were competing with the Joneses. What we don't realize is the benefit of some, there are some benefits to, um, to white supremacy, as they're calling it, in the United States. But them want to surround themselves with Caucasians, so they buffer the additions between themselves and poor people by empowering poor whites to make dumb decisions to make you compete against those poor whites. So while you're sitting here competing against poor whites, because that's who you work with, that's who you're around, that's who buses themselves in from the other poor parts of America, because when you do those flyover states, those flyover states are filled with poor whites. Please believe that. And when we're looking at this, you're sitting here competing with people that are allowed to go a million dollars into debt to make you feel bad about yourself so you can get out here and try to floss and do other things. So you think that you're doing bad when in actuality, there are more homeless whites and they have made being homeless a trend. They're on drugs now more than you. When's the last time you heard of a crackhead? But we all know about white meth, white meth heads now. This is the audacity of, of calling out white supremacy and not understanding that when you don't understand the nuances of what white people have done in this world to keep themselves in a buffer position because they know that once people get out of that mindset of thinking that they are all powerful and that they are originators of everything, they'll lose their position. So that's all they're doing. They're the, they have the least populous countries and they're making people of all colors think that they're empowered. Now, Asians don't play with them this way. I don't know why that guy agreed to that. I, listen, one thing a white man is afraid of is an Asian. He is afraid of those Asians, especially those rock throwing Asians. And yes, I'm being hilarious when I say that, but especially those rock throwing Asians from what we call the Middle East was really a part of Africa. So when we talk about this, those people are afraid of them, extremely afraid of them. And when we're looking at this to us and force us to agree about white supremacy, I refuse. I refuse and I deny you. I'm going to tell you, once people are in power, it doesn't matter what they look like, they're going to do the, some of the same thing. They're going to create classes and they're going to create a bridge between themselves and everyone else. And however they can do that, they're going to take the, they're going to take that opportunity. 
but trying to force us to have to bend to the wheel of white supremacy because you don't want to acknowledge how much you're influenced by black Americans because it's hurting you to have to acknowledge that the people that many of your cousins, sisters, and brothers and mothers and fathers and their generations sold into slavery because we all don't come from the same place. Unfortunately, I'm sorry that it has to be said that the people on this continent of North America that established themselves throughout the United States and also parts of Canada that are considered black American come from three sources. That would be the white, that would be the West Africa, part also the indigenous or aboriginal people that were already here and also europe i know this is going to hurt a lot of black americans when you hear that many of you came from different parts of the world and you didn't come directly from africa but that is the reality of what happened some of us including myself know exactly where our people came from and when we got here and i know that my parents and my my parents descendants came here as reading and writing they did not come here from off any boat that some magical white man knows how to establish himself over the, or the Atlantic Ocean and never lost any money and never lost any groups of people while also being able to feed his crew, he was able to take himself from South America to the Caribbean and also uh, uh, Latin America and Mexico and drop off all these groups of people and make all these amazing trips back and forth because white people are oh so magical and they're oh so amazing and smart and they know how to establish themselves and go across the country without, go across the, excuse me, continents as well as oceans without motors and engines. So when we want to have this conversation, it is completely steeped in the anti-Black American history because you want to acknowledge white people who are obviously poor, they're lazy, they want the handouts, and they get mad at the fact that every time they look up, their child has a picture of some Black man or wearing a jersey of a Black man just like Pinky did in a video, and he's worshiping a Black American because no matter how many grenades they throw on our Black country, I, I'm sorry, our black cities was like, dang, they keep building themselves up from the ashes. That's the last thing I wanted to say. I respect it, 100,000%. He dropped a whole bunch of bombs in that by the show of emojis. Do you guys agree? There was a whole bunch of bombs in that, and I could feel your passion throughout that particular thing. The one thing I did, um, I did want to jump out and say is um, the K. Jordy thing. The K the K Jordy thing, you know. Um, I I met him before he started becoming trendy, and uh, I I I know him personally. I think I still have his number. I can literally call him up. Uh, I'm gonna make it happen naturally, but there is gonna be a moment in time where I bump into him again, and I'm gonna have to check him on a way that I, a lot of people are telling me not to. They're saying, you know what, you know, your culture knows the difference between people who's really about the culture and people who's just you know, um, farming the topic for views. Being a coon. Yeah, I, I ain't saying, I, I, I guess I, I can't say that type of stuff, but y'all can say whatever y'all want. Um, so like, I'll say this, like, there's going to become a time where I bump into him and I'm able to have that particular conversation and check him on like his behavior and, and the way he, he reacts. I don't like the fact that he, uh, farms views and engagement and stuff like that. I don't. I don't. I think that he's just using this this topic for reach and engagement, and is not really trying to educate any particular person on on our particular culture, our particular heritage. It's just at this moment in time, it's uh, it's almost anti Black American. So um, I'm not sure if I should address him or should um, reach out to him or should do an interview with him. Um, that might get crazy amount of views, but I don't know if I should. I don't know what to do, to be honest with you, because uh, I'm mixing decisions. First, the, the black American me is like, what the fuck is he doing? You know, like, what the fuck? Like, bro, stop with this button. And, you know, there's even a moment in time where this girl, I seen the video where this girl was like counteracting him. Like, nah, like black Americans is this. And he was like, nah. And he was literally like, like, I think he took the video down off of TikTok because it got so much hate in like the first 20 minutes. Everybody's like, it's the first time somebody actually addressed positive stuff about black people in America and you automatically arguing with her down. But he kept it up on Instagram. And I thought that was really interesting to see itself. And I was like, all right, cool. But at the same time, it's like, you know, I'm stuck in a position where it's like, what do I do? You know, like, do I address or not address? And it's my culture knows what it is, you know? So I don't know. It's a sticky situation because I feel like I looked at his channel. I see his views that he gets. I see the engagement that he gets. And I'm like, it feels like, 
it feels like they trying to bump him up. Like they trying to make this shit rock. Like, I don't know. Like it like I'll be seeing like his post, and I'm like, bro, got like five thousand likes, and then just the video just posted up. How the hell he got over five hundred thousand views and the video just posted up? And then he just be getting destroyed in face value. Like, how can you sit there and allow people to destroy you in face value? And then you just like, nah, it's okay. Yeah. I'm like, what? Like, bro, the fuck? That shit be throwing me through a loop. So I don't know. I'm 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 in a position where I'm like, nah, I really need to sit down and have a conversation with him and chat him and be like, what the fuck are you like really check him up? Like, bro, what you what you doing? Like, what are you talking about? You can't be acting like this. You can't be I don't know, but I don't think he wants that from, from the get-go. So it's a sticky situation. I gotta figure out what it is. I gotta figure out what it is. But it's definitely for them views and it's not for the culture. So <laughs> Like I said, y'all can say these things, uh, crazy stuff about him and, and, and say these crazy stuff. I can't. I have to be a professional host. I can't let Drake have the spot that Kendrick's supposed to have. So <laughs> so I'm just going to stay and be professional because the moment I become ignorant and belligerent and crazy and wild, that's when they're going to say, this is why I like him. He's more, you know, he's the uppity, <laughs> you know, like. And I'm like, nah, let me just be mindful and aware. And you're like, okay, cool. I got to play it smart for the long run. But yeah. Um, Papa is from Memphis, though. You can't take that part away from him. <laughs> what? I was just saying real quick, Drake's father, really, I mean, Drake's father still is a black American, still from Memphis. So even oh, yeah. though he does what he is, I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to take away from somebody's history because that would be disrespectful. And yeah, I feel the same way about um Jordy. He's like from Maryland or something like that, you know? He's from a, he's a different breed. So, matter of fact, I, he told me where he's from, too. I should really ask the people if his cut. Ooh. All right. That's a good chess move. But, but that but, doesn't mean that he's black American. That's the thing that I would say. I think we assume a lot of people have the same thought process as you because of what they look like. And I've never heard him say, oh, my people are this, that, and third. And, and let's be real. There are a lot of immigrants who live in the DMV. So, I don't want to assume him, and I'm yeah, I'm being funny when I, I call him that word. But like the reality is, there is something to like sitting back and saying, "Oh, it's cool when people sit there and talk down about my group of people, even if it's not just on an American standpoint." But to try to make it seem like 340 million people all live the same, have the same life, have all the same thought process, and agree and allow the people who you're talking to to sit here and be like, "Yeah, everybody in your country is dumb. They all think like this," and, and the Black Americans don't. They all listen to hip hop and kill each other. And stuff like that. And you're like, what is no, this I don't. Business? I don't think he's educated. I don't think he's educated on what. He, to be honest with you, look, I started when I started making these videos, and I told him that I told him that on Instagram. I said I start making these videos on on before you. Like I, I, I really believe he saw my videos, and then he started doing the same thing and started making these particular videos. But I don't think that he's actually educated on any of this particular type of stuff. And now that people are starting to give him heat, he's starting to push back and trying to educate himself or, or have a little pushback to say. But at this moment in time, he's just trying to play both sides. He wants he wants to be friends. Like, I, I, like I'm going to keep it real, you know? I get a lot of fucking hell. Like, real shit. Like, I, people... You know, people be sitting there, like, even a guy, like, the, the guy who came up, the, the two people, even baby girl, the people that came up, they want to debate me. Like, people really be wanting to shut me the fuck down. Like, it's, it's not a joke. They don't do that with him. He knows that. He know people don't be coming for him. He know that people don't be, nah, I, because I be sitting there, like, standing on business majority of the time, people always want to try to try me for no reason. I'm not trying to debate with people. But like, what the fuck? Like, I can't ignore fucking history. Like, I can't ignore bullshit. Like, you can't sit there and for the sake of fucking getting views and engagement, sit down and allow people to talk bullshit. You know, like, it's just insane to me. I can't sit here and allow somebody to say something that's fucking idiotic and dumb in my face and then uh, run with it. Then we both two stupid fucking idiots. It makes no sense. Excuse my language. It just makes no fucking sense to me, and I just can't do it. Like, as much as I try, I be sitting there trying to make peace and be calm, but some people just be saying the most dumbest shit. Like, that whole statement of, you don't know where you come from. What? Like, that's crazy to me. Like, how can you, how can you, how can you, as an African descent, African person from a descent of African, talk to me about knowing where I'm from when I have documentation and you don't? That's crazy to me. That's like the most bombastic statement I've ever heard. That's actually disrespectful. 
That's a, like full blown delusional statement. Like I don't care. Oh, we've been in. You can't tell me anything about your lineage. You can't tell me anything. That's just the most craziest shit. And that's when it comes down to being embarrassed. It's like, bro, stop this with this dumb shit. Because I'll put y'all on front street. Don't talk to me about my history. Don't talk to me. And then you got these Caribbeans talking crazy about us. And that's even more crazy to me. I'll be sitting there looking at them, bro. Like I even I haven't even. What? And, and people be sitting down acting like I'm talking crazy. People be sitting down acting like I'm talking crazy. You know how many Caribbeans have you seen the videos of them talking crazy to me? Imagine if I would have let's talk about bug breaking. Like, imagine, like, like for real. Like, I could really violate if I really want to, based off the historical facts that I know about majority of these particular places, but I don't. Like, I just be trying to educate people in an educational way and keep it cold. But bro, like. I don't know, like, I, I, he do be making me feel some type of way because he got a platform of his, and his personality contradicts what I got going, what's actually happening, but at the same time, you know, like, shit, I'd rather the culture fuck with me than anybody else outside of the culture. I'd rather my people fuck with me than anybody else. I don't really care. You Would can you have the jersey. Would you with him like you did old dude with the jersey? Huh? Would you ever have him on a video like you did old dude with the jersey? Bro, this is what I'm saying. I really need to make a video about both of them. I had a video. I shot a video with King Jordy, and I shot a video with Malfoy. I posted them on my platform. They never posted me on any of their platforms. They didn't want to. They felt threatened. Both of them felt particularly threatened uh, about my presence. Even in the video with King Jordy, he literally says, I can't keep up with your energy. It's not it's not that it's your it's your knowledge. And again, that goes back to that goes back to what we were talking about. There is this belief system. And I think we we've done some some of us a disservice. It's not to say that we shouldn't have love for all of all melanated people. But I said it earlier that diaspora does not include the conversation of black Americans when you start speaking historical facts. If they don't know it they're going to assume you're being divisive because what did old boy say on stage you're being divisive that's divisive but he couldn't tell you the who and the what or the why he just wanted to throw out you're being divisive and so for people who hear his accent they hear where he's from the first thing he said when he got on stage is i'm a pan african i'm a pan african ass i'm pan african <laughs> right <laughs> and true uh, in true uh, uh, form, um, from my understanding, um, Pan-Africanism really was a form of practice uh, 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 um, that was actually, um, that came off the heels of apartheid when um, the group of people out in L.A. Uh, started using their voice. Those were black Americans who believed in Pan-Africanism, practice it, the culture, they adopt Kwanzaa, they uh, 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 they have a particular, uh, 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 all the traditions, they still try to embody black American, but they more so pick up wanting to identify with, let me put it, I'm going to say it, Mother Africa, right? So when you literally hear him, that's not how they talk. When you hear other groups say, I'm a Pan-African, they don't emulate what I've seen to be um, the ideological practices and culture of Pan-Africanism as it's been produced here in the United States. So utilizing that, those people who have those platforms, they don't want to be challenged on ignorance. They don't want to be challenged on how they are the ones that are actually uh, propelling propelling divisiveness because they want people to feel good you want people to feel good and not knowing who they are where they come from and then you want us to just what did he say let's move forward let's let's move forward to solutions you see all these points these points he kept trying to jump skip hop and a jump and we like hold on <laughs> Uh, uh, where exactly. are you going? Do you understand? Yeah, what I'm saying? yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> he was right. not. He, he kept trying to jump around the whole conversation. Let's, let's and talk cut about... you and cut you off at the same yeah. time and cut off your voice and not. It's just not your voice, Adonis. Your tone. It is the mere fact that you can slice through the BS 
and you can shut down um, misinformation at its core, they don't want that. They want people st to stay in this imaginary, we are all living in some sort of unity, uh, uh, we should all just want to get along type situation, and that's not what's happening. Now, Joe, I'm going to push back on you on Grant Cardone at a later time, and we could chop it up, but from the no problem. No, no. From the standpoint of, I think what he does um, in regards to, I think, giving out information from his perspective, um, I can dig it. Uh, but I've, I was in a space with him and um, he had an immigrant. There's an immigrant guy that he hangs around, immigrant black guy. And I want to say he might be Caribbean, maybe. I'm, I'm probably wrong, but he um, hosts a space with him and... They were talking about reparations and he was like, yeah, I, they need to just go ahead and let that go. Cause you know, I'm going to teach them how to get money. I, um, to the example that you gave that people who have access to knowing how to obtain riches, um, or wealth, they are totally different from dynasty families like the Rockefellers, people who have um, long, money, long money, right? Um, those people we would never probably hear on a spaces unless they want to talk about how to control this country and the world. Um, we probably will never ever hear from them specifically. But um, when I hear people like himself, who his self, who he talks about, you know, I came from, uh, you know, humble beginnings. Nah. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay, you got. You got it. Okay, so you 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 be lying. So you know where I'm coming from. So um, when I hear that, and I hear that being pushed to actually be a blockade, um, in this conversation with these two people, we just had a conversation with. You see these uh, characters prop themselves up to be almost like gatekeepers in certain aspects of their conversation because they don't want to dive into the differences of people. They don't want to dive in the um, uh, uh, the conditional markers, uh, uh, um, the historical markers like we talked about earlier, and they don't want you to have a voice in that area because, again, they see it as you being divisive if you start to talk about factual information that they do not have knowledge of. That is a huge danger and they have to be called out and they need to be shut down if not educated. Um, but I love, again, Adonis, how you still, you're able to maintain, but I want you to know this. If you decided to pop out and show a nigga and my girl in the room, trouble in the room, she know I don't like to use the term, but when I got to use the term, it's rightfully so. If you got to pop out, and showing it. <laughs> I just let me say you, something real quick. No, no, I I, I want to say this clearly. Ahead, I need. I know that you're gonna do it. You're gonna represent well, but I also want you to know that it's not gonna take nothing from you. Um, but other than to plant a seed, so people understand that we're not taking uh with nickels no more. We're not taking this, yeah, me and you got the same skin and all this other stuff. I, I, Joe said it earlier. You are um, intellectually lazy and you are harming the rest of the world and let alone black Americans. That's anti-blackness if you do not want to have a honest platform to have deep dive conversation and bring people to the carpet. Otherwise, you need to be deplatformed. So when you ready to have that discussion and talk about them, I'm going to be watching. Okay. <laughs> it's the whisper for me. It's, it's a whisper for me. You know, I've been sitting here, I've been listening. Um, there's only one thing I wanna I wanna say. I just I just wanna give y'all a sneak peek of oh oh wait, can I even can I even do it here? Can I uh, I don't even know if I could show my face here. Damn, can I do that here? No, right? Probably not. Damn. Um so I just let y'all hear it, all right? Because I don't know if I go put it to webcam. All right, cool. You can hear this. Listen to this. Last thing, last thing. Um, what is Black UK culture? Uh, 
black UK culture. I can't speak on the whole of UK. I can speak on London. Black UK. You, were, you was born and raised in the UK, right? Yeah. All right, so what is black UK culture? But why I say that is there because London is like it's, it's the capital, yeah, and it's very different to the rest. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like in London, we only talk about London. We can we can put Birmingham in there too. Shout out to Birmingham. Yeah, I'm Manchester. Manchester yeah, 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 yeah. But like black UK culture is. Oh, that's a tough question, you know. <laughs> this video. This video, like I said, this whole live audio room started from one question. In about two days, they're going to have Notting Hill Carnival coming up in London. And this is the biggest Caribbean carnival in London, most internationally known, very popular. It's going to be full of melanated people. And my, I'm going to let you know, the title of the YouTube video is going to be called... What is Black UK culture? And that's the what I'm going to be asking people. And of course, if you was in the audio room earlier, you know, you've asked a couple of questions. You wanted to know a couple of questions. I'm going to be asking some of the questions that you guys have asked in this particular audio room as well. Um, this is going to piss people off. Because I don't know how they're going to be able to respond to this. I don't know how anyone's going to be able to respond to answer that. Is there such thing as black UK culture? That's going to hurt people's feelings. That's a good topic. Yeah, that's going to be wild. So this video is going to piss a lot of people off. Um, I'm thinking of that video might come out on Tuesday. I'm not sure. This video I'm editing it right now as we've been talking. And this video is insane. I even asked the guy, like, does he know what not like us um, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Not like not like us means and stuff like that, and like it's just crazy. Like so, and this is it's a crazy video. You're going to see, like I'm telling you right now, like I'm saying this right now. You're going to see this video clip, and I'm gonna tell you what's gonna be the first clip you see from it. I asked him. I said, "What is black culture? A black American culture?" And just remember, you being in this audio room and me telling you this. I asked him. I said. What is black American culture? And he said, ratchet shit, like ratchetness. So you're going to remember that. Like, you're going to see the video. It's probably going to go viral. This video is probably going to go viral 100%. Uh, and this is a lot coming. As for the K. Jordy situation, I'm not sure if, if I want to give him that particular platform to associate. I don't know. I think that I think that in the next week or so, I might have a possibility of bumping into him because recently uh buzzfeed if you're familiar with buzzfeed they just reached out to me and they want me to uh, to film something with them and it's basically like americans trying some uk stuff and i have to respond to them i haven't responded to me yet but um and he says it's going to be me and another person and i'm assuming it might be k jordy i'm assuming if it is then the video's coming soon if it's not and I got to figure out if I want to give him that particular time and space to to talk to him because I'm going to have to really, you know, he's an American. I'm going to have to really check his ass real quick. And I don't want really to be viral. I don't want to be, um, yeah, people are saying don't acknowledge him. So I, I, I'm thinking not to acknowledge him and just move on. I don't want to give him that. Nah, fuck it. I'll just ask him. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how to say We'll see how to cook cards. I'll just let it be natural. We'll see what happens, you know? So just know I see I see you guys' concerns. I see what the hell is going on. I'm aware of what the situation is. And, you know, you guys can say the shit I can't say, you know? You guys can say the shit I can't say. So, yeah, that's what it is. That's all I got to say. As for anybody else, is there any particular statements you want to say? Oh, Greg, your hands is up and then one love. Yeah, I say do the video, man. I ain't even gonna hold you. I say you <laughs> do the video. I say you, because I mean, if anything, I get you not wanting to give him no clout. But if anybody from, I guess, your viewership is going to his stuff, they're gonna hold him accountable. They always gonna hold him accountable. So, um, but <clears throat> in regards to, I guess, what we've been talking about and stuff, um, the last few uh, speakers, um, I think what's interesting, it's a weird time. To, I, I was gonna say it's a weird time to be Black American, but what other time hasn't it not been weird? Um, I think it's even weirder now because we are having these conversations, and I think a lot more people are conscious. Nah, we, I um, can't talk to him behind camera. I got to talk to him. Every interaction is on camera. 
every interaction is on camera. But I spoke Ooh. to him before. He saw he a nice guy. You know, I'm not gonna lie. Wait. Sorry. Ooh, no. Uh, yeah, I agree. You should definitely get him on a video and like I, I want to see this. I, I think he definitely need to be held accountable. I've only seen like a clip or two of his stuff, but even in that clip or two, it was it was trash. But um, I think it's interesting now, especially in this time, especially post Obama and with all of this Kamala conversation. Um, I think also with the 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 conversation around identity politics in general and and um identity and, and ethnicity and us being very adamant about who we are um amongst all of these afro descendant people like <laughs> it is the gatekeeping has to happen and i think um with this whole i'm glad somebody brought up um the whole pan-africanism conversation i mean it's always been one-sided um and and even po pr prior to um apartheid you know we were getting it getting it in during the civil rights movement during the 60s during the 50s and it's like it's always been one-sided it's always it was started by us and it's been us participating in it i feel like People like that dude who came into the room start talking uh, Pan-Africanism when they're trying to push a narrative or they want something or it serves them in some type of way. You know, um, I think to, you know, how people interact with us and I'm glad somebody also brought up reputation and even gave the definition earlier um, and even spoke to our reputation amongst the diaspora, which I think somebody was about to go into before when they were talking about um, ratchetness and associating it, associating it with our culture and stuff um, or whenever they talk about how bad hip hop is and how, you know, it makes other quote unquote black people look bad and all of these things, but then they'll also go around Europe and Asia pretending to be us for clout and 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 dressing like us for a certain type of re reaction or reception or um, to to gain something financially or politically, and it just it it or or taking even our activism and how we do activism, um, and it just it it really is it's it's a mind fuck really because it's like at what point at what point do we call a thing a thing? Like, and not even what point do we call a thing? Cause we've been calling a thing a thing. Like people are calling the thing as we speak in reference to Kamala. How are you representing or, or running a campaign surrounded by blackness and you Jamaican, but you rooting everything that you talk about that's black and Americanness. It's just, it's weird. Um, but you're taking that on and you're pushing those narratives, um, not to even get into a political conversation, but it's it's one and the same, it's the same conversation. Like you using that political clout, you using that um that that those identity politics to get what you want. Um, and it's like you're not you're not showing up for the community that you're getting those things from. Um, you're vulturing, you know, it's not fair. And I think you know, even getting into the conversation with old dude who came into the room before, it's like, you see here saying this stuff, oh, y'all had nothing to do a part of it. Is that what the relationship, if we do subscribe to this Pan-Africanism, is this what the relationship is going to be with you or people like you whenever we are participating in this Pan-Africanism that you can completely erase us? I love that ethno side was brought up because that's a real thing and it's happening right in front of our eyes. But I think we can allow it. To um, answer with your, your question that you asked, um, in regards to your next video, what is I, I I don't I don't know much about UK um culture, but what I do know is that it's highly influenced by us. Um, and I, what I also know is that the people that they're referencing aren't the people that were out of slavery or who who were originally there. They're referencing immigrants, people who immigrated there. Um, so and those people came with cultures. Their parents came with cultures, etc. So it's like to even compare to America is not the same. Um, it's not, I don't know. I think I just don't have respect for um, people. No, who, you do know, Greg. Stop saying you don't know. You better go ahead and cook at the stove. I'm trying to be respectful because if I, I'm Oh, it's very if respectful. Really lose, it's very really respectful. Lose. You all right, boo. Keep it up. <laughs> Let's go. No, Open I, also it up. Know I know it's also not everybody and I'm just trying to be, you know, conscious of that. But I, just because I say it's not everybody, it's more than enough people to make it an issue. And I think that 
when we have these conversations and like I said earlier about reputation, you know, a huge thing, what I've gathered is that a lot of people, you know, look at us, like, like we said, ratchet and, and, and start judging us based off, um, uh, pop culture and, and, and reality TV and all these different things and judging us. And it's always going towards the negative versus focusing on the positive change that we've done for the world for the past hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years or centuries. Um, but also, you know, this, this narrative of us being the slave and how we don't even contextualize that because, you know, we always hear how, how people look down on slavery on the continent. Um, even to this day, people who endure slavery and those castes of people are looked down. Um, I'm thinking of the Osu in Nigeria. I'm thinking of other people um, who are currently being enslaved and who are having those um, experiences within the continent. But, you know, it just, I find it interesting, um, even when we have these interactions and try to converse, there is that diminishing. There is that trying to muffle us out and not allow us to have a voice. There is this idea that our opinions don't matter and we are only to be used to be muled off of and any engagement with us has to be beneficial or it's not even worth mentioning, which is just, and th- and I'm not making a blanket statement on everybody, but that's how it comes off um, as a black American. Um, and I'm not to be muled off of. My thing is, you know, we got more than enough issues here. If that's what that relationship is going to be, which is, I'm not saying that, you know, everybody thinks like that, but if that is, because I mean, that's what we're seeing a lot of the time, but if that's what it's going to be, we don't want it. And it's understandable. It shouldn't be this huge shock or it shouldn't be this whole conversation of us being xenophobic or any of that shit. Like, it is what it is. You wouldn't want the same thing for yourself. So thinking that, you know, we're just going to take a lie down and take it, it's just, it's no, it's just a no. But I'll land there. Um, yeah, I'll land there. You. Give me a second to mute myself. Or mute me. Please mute me. My phone's tripping. Yo, <laughs> Can I say one thing real quick? I say one thing. I'm going to be real quick. Go ahead, Trey Day. Yo, I'm going to say this, man. It is, it, it's in our culture to call our coonery, bro. It's in our culture to call our coonery. We're the only people hold our people accountable for coonery. So I would say, hell yeah, make that video. Make that video, bro. And you need to tell, like, bro, I'm not saying you got to, you know, you got to call them out on, on, on video, but you need to tap that ass, bro. Pause. You need to tap that ass, bro. Like yo, man, you 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 making us look bad back in America. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, we call we call our coonery out. You know what I'm saying? I lay in there. Peace and blessings to y'all. I respect it. <laughs> he said, "Tap that ass." <laughs> hey yo, <laughs> that's real shit though. Oh. That's real shit. That's real shit. Cause I mean, like like he said, that come that comes from us. We created the whole coonery shit. That that's from the plantation. We had to know for survival, and that's what we're dealing with. Like we gotta call out our coons. We the only ones who really do it. You don't see people just showing up and calling out their coons. We sitting having to have spaces and rooms about people from other cultures coming for us. You don't hear those cultures, uh, their cultures. Um, having those same kind of conversations and telling them that it's an issue and making it right with us. You don't see that. We all seeing the same shit, but we the only ones speaking on it. Why is that? Sheesh. Can I just say real quick, um, Greg, I appreciate what you say as well as Trey Day. Um, I will say that I want to answer your question really fast when you said that. Um, why is that? We're the only ones. So I think what always gets lost in, I don't want to say lost in the sauce. I can sound like a white person, but lost in the sauce. But what gets lost in the sauce of what we're doing here is our relationship with our country is so much different than everyone else's relationship with their countries. It's created this dichotomy that people are actively not thinking about because we have been living in a new country, right, for this elongated period of time. We've had this tumultuous relationship with this history of the country, correct? But when you're talking about other groups of people who the rest of the world lives in homogenous countries, all right, and then they have intermingled outside of the brown countries and outside of South America, right? Or at least certain parts of South America. Um, they've, they've intermingled some more. Um, they don't understand the United States history and its tumultuous nature 
with its populations. They, a lot of Europeans believe that white people are indigenous to the United States. And somebody can tell me that's not true, but I've traveled enough to understand that how they think of it, they think of it as a white country like it's always been that. And until a Black American talks about maybe aboriginals, then they decide to go do maybe a Google search like One Love says, and then they'll be like, oh, but what about Native Americans? Oh, okay, well, what about the Indians and Indian never calling themselves Indian? And what about the Indus Valley River? And what about the fact that there's called Hindustan? Like, we don't ever have that conversation. They don't have that conversation with them and the people who now live in the UK or specifically England, one of the four countries in the United Kingdom, right? They don't have, they don't have those distinguished, those distinguishing conversations with them. It only needs to be so distinct because what that guy didn't understand that he was saying and listening and not listening, should I say, not listening to Adonis. And when Adonis said that you're being a hand of what you call white supremacy is that they further conversations by saying, the negative parts of what's about Black Americans is true, and there are positive parts about colonization. That colonization, that's the reason why I live in a white country. Let's just be real. That's exactly what's happening here. We, if we're supposed to believe the slavery story is white people are so smart, they traveled across the tumultuous Atlantic Ocean and brought us here because they were so smart and they brought millions of people to a country and we lived here under their rule, but it was 12 slave owners against 1 million slaves and we were just so stupid because everybody saw Django and we were so afraid. Yes, we're, they, they believe that story. So when you ask that, when you're asking the question about why they don't call out, why would they call each other out about their own things? Because they don't even want to face the fact of their relationship with their colonization. They hate themselves for how they've allowed the fact that they have the numbers against Caucasians. And they decided to be like, many of them decided that what they're living in is too decentralized, too destabilized, and it's not safe. And we'd rather be around Caucasians because it allows us opportunity. Now, the Windrush history, that's different. But, the, but in, in reality, Europe has been devastated for a long time. We forget that in many of our parents' lives, my father was fought in Vietnam. His father before him fought in Korea. His father's father was in World War II. We forget about the wars that were in this United States that we participate in in Europe that has devastated the European continent and they needed those immigrants from other countries. So they feel a kinship with trying to be like the people who are now established because going along to get along makes sense. We have not been in a place based off of American history in the United States to be able to go along to get along because our poor whites have created such a horrible dichotomy with being able to live in this country in a peaceful manner overall that we have to call out them and we have to have issue with them and we have issue with each other when we're not living supposedly up to par, up to code. So when you ask that that question about why they're not calling each other out, why would they call each other out? What are they going to call out? I'm not saying that none of them are, but that voice is always going to be more of the silent minority versus the majority. They feel like we owe them. Why? Well, so well, oh, I can I just want. I'm sorry. I apologize. But there who is. Who is they though? I, I, go, I just want to finish the sentence. There's a certain amount of feeling like we owe them for the ability to have lived next to white people and have gotten these opportunities in order to flourish. They feel somewhat responsible that had they never been participant in being able to sell us into slavery, to sell us to those Europeans in order to get here, then we would never have had this history that they believe that we brag about. I know a lot of people will not agree with the wording of those statements, but the reality is, is that many people who look like us but are not from the Americas, they feel like we owe them for this relationship because they think there's a unique opportunity that we've been given and that we're when we they hear us talking because of how poor whites are articulate and vocalize, they think that we're crying like, well, the white man gave you this. You should shut up because if you weren't so poor and wanted to fuss and fight and shoot each other, you would have this. But they don't understand that their ability to even say that comes from off the backs of us. 
because the right to be able to talk crap about your country is not so prevalent in the world like it is in the United States. That's a fact. That is a fact. Only in America we are allowed to talk this recklessly about our particular country. In other countries... So many countries have freedom of speech. And when you li li live the... We're not talking about United freedom States. of speech. We're not, we're, yeah, we're not talking about freedom of speech. You can talk shit in so many countries. Yeah. Yeah, we're not talking about freedom of speech. Our statement was um, to be able to talk disrespectfully about your particular government it's not fully accepted by multiple many countries. It's not a normal thing. And immigrants. Thing. And immigrants. I just, I apologize, Adonis. I do want to make sure this is very clear. Immigrants are able to come to the um, United States of America, not all Americans, but the United States of America, and they are able to participate in our government that affects the people who live here and the population. They're able to talk about the native population, take advantage of the native population, and participate in the disenfranchise in the disenfranchisement of the native population. That is the reality of living in the United States. That is unlike the rest of the world. No one outside of this world will let someone who was foreign born run their country and say that the native population does not have a right to that country. Nope. I don't see a black, I don't see a black American president in any of those African countries yet. But y'all sure going. Oh, let me be quiet. Let me be quiet. About the question that um was was posed. Um it was a rhetorical question. Under the guise of pan-Africanism, accountability would have to have been had. Like those their groups would have to hold them accountable. They would have had to, you know what I mean? That's what I was sort of saying. So it was a rhetorical question. Like it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't meant as far as because I mean it is what it is. Like you not just I don't know. It's just ridiculous at the end of the day. I also wanted to to ask y'all, like, I'm not even ask because this is kind of rhetorical. It, <laughs> when is it, like, is it lost on them that, like, they participated in the hell that we go through here? <laughs> like, yeah, and say, that we, Who is them, baby? Who is them? Say who them is. Africans. Yeah, who is they? Because everybody keeps saying well, they. That's all, that was the only reason, Greg. That was the only reason. Everybody else knew who you were talking about. That was the only reason why I said that, because I heard uh, <laughs> I heard him say, who is they earlier? The diaspora, the, this, this, the diaspora that we're supposed to be having Pan-Africanism with, that we're supposed to be working together with. Like, that's my thing. Like, that's a part of the, we talked about stories earlier. That's a part of the story of Africa. Like, they participated in putting us in this position. So, Today, right now, like, why is it so confusing to them that a we don't have a relationship with Africa, um, b we have a completely different experience here? People call it ethnogenesis. People call it whatever you know, being here, a lineage, whatever. Like, it is what it is. Like, it's it's a different experience. So I don't understand the confusion around why there is so much pushback. Why there is you know, especially whenever it comes to identity uh, with us. Um, and I just don't get the confusion because it seems like whenever we bring these things up, there's this huge level of confusion and we become xenophobic and we become lost and we become all of these things, but it's never put into context as to why we feel the way that we feel. Africa has never done anything for us. So this idea that we're supposed to like just drop everything and and that's the that's kind of the experience too. Like we we're supposed to drop everything and mule, work for them, fight for them, do for them, and not get anything in return. But because we have an ancestor from five hundred years ago that happened to be African, that is just supposed to absolve them of the participation or or the history that we have with them. Because like I said, they haven't done anything for us. Um, they they haven't done shit for us, and we could just it's it not is really that good. Yeah, so I'll land there. I'll land there. No, but I, I but I wanted Adonis. I wanted to point out too. Greg brought up a. a... Sorry, go ahead. I pressed the wrong button. Oh, sorry, baby. Greg um, brought up a good point, and he brought up um, and not to, to to go in the political realm, but just to point out the nuances on how even uh, Kamala is or Kamala is using identity politics as well because she got on stage and in her speech was like yeah i come from a i have a i come from a brown mother who was five feet tall so now your mother's just brown 
like, wait a minute. I thought she was <laughs> like, she didn't switch to so many different things, which goes back to my question. When you go to the event, I would like to add, I would like to know, can you ask how many of the people in the UK or the Caribbean do they know about colonization when it came to East Indians or Asians in Jamaica and um, a slavery that was also prevalent um, during that um, historical migration? I would like to know if that is a thing um, and do they know the connection between the Harris family on her father's side? Because see, we won't ever unfold and unpack that information because, again, it goes back to uh, people calling us divisive. Well, no, Jamaicans are black. Um, the melanated, beautiful melanated Jamaicans, shout out to the track runner that I've never seen. And I, I think she was Irish. Was she Irish? I, a black Irish? What was she? Anyway, she was uh, in the Olympics. She was very pretty. But anyhow, um... They never really deep dive and unfold what Marcus Garvey was talking about. And when he was talking about the black Irish, when it come when it came to the black Irish that um were in Jamaica, um, that whole whole history also gets lost and for some reason uh, lost in translation. So now we have present day uh, a woman who is now she's gone from being uh uh, uh what does she call herself? Easton, no. Asian, oh shit, South Indian. South Indian, but that's not what she called it. Did she say South Indian? Did she say South Indian? She yeah, multiple times. Like okay, that, South yeah. Indian. Okay, so South Indian, but she has not acknowledged that I am a black woman. I think um, I heard a video of her years ago when she was running um, for attorney general, and she said my mother raised two black daughters. Right. But all of that has gone out the when she's never even gone back to even acknowledge that anymore. So when she was at the podium now, she's like, I, my mother is a brown woman. Um, your mom has a whole history. And I feel like that's a disservice for you to even minimize your mom just to being some brown woman, because all of a sudden you want to play identity politics um, in front of the nation. That to me is like. Why can't you just stand on your lineage for who you are instead of utilizing identity to actually pass through? Because again, people want us to have some homogeneous uh, uh, unity behind pain and genocide. What in the world is going on? Am I losing my mind? Because I know I'm not losing my mind. I can't be losing my mind. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Not, not at all. You know, you're not at all. You hit on, hit on the nail. You understand? So, and then people try to placate it to, oh, well, she's an AKA and she, no, 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 no. Those are things that people, you know, get into, um, white people are becoming sorority sisters and brothers, some fraternity sisters, but like, that's not even, we're not even going to play a uh, uh, Russian roulette with that. We're going to say right now, you are utilizing identity politics of black Americans and also erasing your uh, your historical record because if we find out that you are in a position or playing in a position that you don't want to represent the main people that you are wanting us to identify you as the nation will look at you differently and we then become divisive we then become like that's why i shut down I shut down the party politic conversation because this is not a party issue. We're talking about people, and Joe said it earlier, who are in positions of power and they're wielding language, they're wielding influence. So Adonis, I'm going to say it again. If you got to pop out and show me, cuss, I'm going to need you to pop out. Because we need vo voices who are going to wake this up so that people pay attention to what is happening. This is not about your favorites. This is not about the whoremongering of um, the duopoly. It really is to say there are people utilizing us as puppets and taking us for fools. And we really, really need to put a stop to that because it, it, it's continuously, continuously leaving us at supremacy only being a white uh, uh, um, tool to be used 
while immigrants come in so many different nations and nationalities and uh, ethogenesis of backgrounds, they actually willed, they willed it. They will, like if we was in Harry, what is it, Lord of the Rings? Call me Frodo. <laughs> That no, that's your that's your nickname. You Frodo, you about to carry. Listen, you about to carry the rings to get them (laughs) to get them melted. You need to carry the rings, Adonis, to the to the to the to the cave and get it melted because we in trouble. (laughs) I'll say this: I think that one of the particular conversations that we need to start having instead of this whole fucking um, Donald Trump and Kamala conversation is the third parties. And I think that I think that we need to stop talking about the because regardless, everybody keeps talking about Kamala, uh, Kamala and um, Donald Trump, and it's a distracting because it's like you want Coca Pepsi. Who gives a fuck about Coca Pepsi? Where's the orange juice? So I'm thinking, why aren't we talking about the third parties who rock with the people? And I, as you're sitting here talking, I looked up the actual independent parties, and it's a guy named Cornell West who taught in Yale, Princeton, and Harvard, and he looks. Like he has some melanated features to himself, so I think that that's I think that this is all a ploy. I think that uh, they know that we're fed up, and we ha- and they're thinking that we have a choice that we have to make a choice between the two. And no one's actually talking about the third party, and this happens every fucking election. We always sit there and talk Democratic and Republic, but we never actually see the actual other parties that can actually benefit and help us throughout that particular situation. But I don't really want to talk about politics and shit like that because I feel like. Congress is all fucked anyway, and that's the people that actually make the laws. So we can't even do shit about any of this shit at this moment in time. This is majority of irre- irrelevant. Whoever wins is still going to be irrelevant. We got no policies on both sides. Who do you want to choose? Kamala, who's just going to do what she states the course and do what she wants to do, or, or fucking Donald Trump, which I would have thought would have been the most best fucking possible uh, person because... He's most likely going to set it up for businesses and people for business to get a whole bunch of tax cuts. But he wants um, the police to have immunity. I don't fucking rock with that. So, like, it's just, it's two situations that's just, like, fucked in each way. So, it's critical. I don't know. I don't, I don't really, I don't, that's why I can't really talk about politics. What's up, Trey? Hey, hey I'm going to say one thing. What? Uh, no, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, bro. Do your thing, bro. Now, go ahead, Trey. What's up? Yo, Greg, what's good? Trey, you got the dub on mute? I don't know. I said, no, I, I was saying, like, piggybacking off what the sister, what the, what, uh, what the sister was saying about us. Uh, it's Rella. Gay my name approaches. is Rella. There's one love Sorry. on here, but my, my name is Rella. Y'all can call me Rella. Okay, Rella. It's my, I'm, yeah, uh, Sister Rella. Um, Rella, so, you're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> nah, so, like, you, 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 you know, I'll piggyback in what she said, you know, uh, how we kind of, you know, kind of got to gatekeep the coach a little bit. You know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, you know, we, they, a lot of not FBA people getting our spaces and then, you know, they kind of take over. Like, I don't know if y'all have been watching, um, this, um, I think it's a sorority group. I think, I can't think what it was, what was what, a sorority group where they, they, they got in a, a sorority group, or whatever. And then they kind of, kind of created their own, they like their own chapter of it. Which is kind of crazy. I'm like, yo, why create your own chapter and not own sorority group, right? You know what I mean? But this is something that they do, you know. And 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 you know, and this was something Brother Tariq pointed out. Was like, yo, we, we gotta watch that because a lot of times they get in our spaces and they be representatives for us. You know what I'm saying? Like you said with Kamala or K- Kamala. You know what I'm saying? But it, it, it's just crazy, man. What I was gonna point out is there's a lot of topics going simultaneously, so. The first thing I was going to point out is, is uh, when you have people, and I've lived all over the world for the most of my adult life. So when you have people who don't understand America, a lot of that is deals with the fact that that's not their priority, just like other countries are not our priority when we focus on that. And so only thing on the only education that they tend to get on America is our entertainment. And fortunately or unfortunately, that's what that's the only thing that's being presented to them. So the question of why, why is it that they don't know this or why is it that they don't know that there's not enough entertainment content of any kind coming from America explaining that or at least 
pushed enough or popular enough for them to see it in their countries. I mean, there's stuff that happens in every country across the globe and we don't even see it all. So we can't we can't sit and fault them and expect them to know everything about what we're going through when we don't even know what they're going through because of the same scenario. So that's kind of the first thing. Uh, identity politics going into that, that is based upon what we do. The fact that we focus on identity politics as as opposed to focusing on we are just Americans is the reason why they can use identity politics against us. And so we spend, in my opinion, a lot of us spend so much time focused on our past that know that we're not focused on our own futures and our own lives. And so that's why you, somebody can come in and use identity politics to divide us because we make it so much more important than what it actually is when it comes to us living, getting jobs, running businesses, going to banks and getting loans. Absolutely. All of these things are available to the majority of us in America. It's just that a lot of us don't know because we're focused on things that aren't relevant to us today. And so as long as we keep pushing, uh, as long as we keep pushing division and separation, that allows identity politics to come in. And so I'll stop there and let people comment. No, uh on. yeah, it's my, I, I'm pretty sure it's my turn. Um, absolutely not. First of all, to say that identity politics isn't just a part of our survival in this country in general, like we wouldn't be sitting here having these conversations if it wasn't relevant. If it wasn't important, we would not be sitting here spending as much as time uh, as, as much time as we spent talking about this stuff if it wasn't important. This is about our survival in this country and it always has been. Maybe you've been gone for a really long time and you don't remember what it's like to be American, but us here, it's, it's a part of everything and every decision that we make and every experience that we have, we have to be cognizant of who we are in this, in this country. Um, if not, it's the end of us. And, and I think what's so detrimental about Kamala, which not to make it about politics but the reason i brought her up is that if she's elected what she's doing which is cosplaying us and putting our putting our lineage on putting our culture on as this costume so she can get votes and using us up and not doing anything for us if we make that a norm it's going to continuously happen it's going to be it's going to be the norm and that's not okay we cannot allow her to do this we can't allow it to happen it tweaks me out it just it bugs me out to see so many even of us parade around and be up for her right now knowing and seeing what's happening in front of our eyes like but because she has black skin but or brown skin or whatever the hell because because you know it's 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 just so stupid and it's a, like i said it's a really weird time to be black american but um, I, I so here's a question. What to, to you, what's more important? How much money you have in the bank or your identity? And that, that, that's, that's that important that's for identity. you. What, what is the answer for you? As the an answer for me is that they are, they in America, they are one in the same. Not America, I'm talking about you as an individual. I'm what American. is more important? I'm American. So a part of me. Money, right, right, right. I don't make it about race. They make it about race. They deny us access to this country. That's the experience of being Black American. That's what it's been since day one. So, but, but my question to you, my question to you is simple, or, what's more important to you? How much we'll money do you have cast. in the bank or your identity? They created the system where they made us a bottom cast, a permanent bottom cast at that. So th this idea that I'm making it the issue is is ridiculous. What you're saying is ridiculous. That's not what I'm saying. I'm that asking you what you your have. important is. What, what's important to you? What's more important to you? How much money you have in the bank? Or you're a ridiculous question. Everybody's gonna have a different answer. Want, it goes hand in hand. And to be completely honest, to ask me that is ridiculous even in itself because I am a black American. I'm proud to be a black American. There's not a price that you can put on it. There's not an amount of money that you can put on that. Yeah, I want a million. So your identity yeah, want is more important than money. Is what you're million dollars, but that's irrelevant to the, the pride that I have in being who I am. I, I think that woman who spoke earlier was beautiful. <laughs> so, so, so you're saying your identity is more important than your dollar amount in your bank I'm account. saying that your and so that's what I'm ridiculous. saying. So, so the, the, go ahead, go ahead. No, I'm saying that your question is ridiculous. It's not about what's more important and what's not more important. It's about the system that I live in and the situation that I have found myself in 
based on the decisions of other people who have made my situation what it is. Whether I work hard, whether I pull myself up by the bootstraps, whether I do all of those things, race is still going to come into that equation. And I think that's what you're missing. Um, do you mind if so, I answer that question yeah. for you? Um, I, yeah, go okay. ahead. And, yeah, go ahead. And, I, good. and I'm I, sorry. Uh, I apologize. Who is speaking? Because I'm kind of trying to do something. I'm Kadeus. My name is Kadeus. Kadeus. Okay. Thank you, Kadeus. Um, thank thank you for your um your answer, Greg, as well. Um, uh, so I'll answer that question for you. you. Said, what's more important, um, your identity or your bank account? So, um, if I may give you an example of something that's currently happened over the last few few. I about to say the last few years, especially. So over the last few years, uh, Americans don't have to agree with me on this in this room, but the reality is it happened. Um, there has been a a big push to be very anti-white man, and what they've really done to do to show this up is um, in movies and in media, and as far as media streaming, they've had this big, huge anti-white male push. So white men have been losing their Star Wars, their Star Trek, their Lord of the Rings. So if you notice that Amazon Prime has um, the Rings of Power, it's very diverse outside of what what normally those white men grew up reading those J.R. Tolkien books in regards to the Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring, all that. Um, it's diverse and they've made the white males stupid or they made them inferior or they made them the bad guy. Um, they did the same thing with Star Trek where they made, um, I think her name is Ray. She became like their Jesus and she's a white female, but they made the white males again villains and or stupid or subordinate. Um, they've done this so much so that there is has been a huge push as well as the Marvel Universe in DC as well that white males in this country specifically the average white male which would normally be a $50,000 earning uh, comes from poverty type of white male they've been so upset that they have been boycotting and making sure that they have been bashing and online review um, hoarding these shows, right? So they just got the Acolyte canceled, which again, this is another uh, this Star Wars, Star Trek show, Star Wars, excuse me. Um, they got that Acolyte canceled because those the that was another lowly rated show. All the Disney Plus streaming shows like The Mandalorian, they've gone down, Bubba Fett and everything. Um, so when you're talking about money versus identity, you're asking that one should go before the other. I would say if you are at the top of the world society considered elite, you have the right to ask that question because you live the answer. People who live at the very top of the world and the very bottom of the world society, they live outside of the rules and confines of the society. So their identity based off of money or things like that, they don't matter. They mass, either mass a lot of power or they have none. They don't live within the confines. Everyone else in the middle you get you actually are still a part of an identity regardless if you decide to take to it or not so asking someone if they have to give up their identity because that's basically essentially what it's asking to give up their identity in order to have money i don't think one has to come before the other it's it's all about no and that's that was a misunderstanding do you mind if i finish because i'm not saying that's what you're saying okay go ahead, go ahead. so i don't want it to be contentious because i did not say that's what you mean I'm saying that's what it's going to be interpreted as. I believe, because I'm a product of it, that you can have your identity that you are very extremely proud of, and it also hasn't inhibited you from being able to make money. So I can be, quote unquote, Black American, I can have Aboriginal in my family, and I have people who descended from Europe that are not white. And that's hard for you guys to understand in general, because you asking that question, it makes sense for you to ask him that question because you see him as Black American only. But I know for a fact that part of my family came here um, during the middle medieval times and they've been here as well as the aboriginals that are here. That didn't stop my identity from us being able to have businesses, have lawyers, politicians, doctors in our family, as well as normal teachers, uh, business store owners and things like that, or just a normal family. And they've always done this generationally. On this land- Did, I, did college, I tell you I that, I love, oh, I'm that I loved you? Thank you. So also on the United States America land where everyone else talks about getting it by the bootstraps and things like that, our family had to remain strong. And also a male in our family has fought in every war in the United States because it has been in our financial 
uh, interest to do so as well. So when you ask that question, you don't have to give it up. I don't have a problem with Greg's answer. Um, and I understand why he's answering the way that he is, because for him, he's taking it as like, why do I have to give up my identity in order to have money? I understand exactly what you mean that it is. It is very cost effective and it has been very politically effective to be able to use identity as far as a political scheme because it's already in place in the United States. They're not doing it because they're smart. They're doing it because the creation of the, of the United States says that Benjamin Franklin, I believe in 17 something, wrote a, an essay to excuse me he wrote an essay to other elites if you will i won't i can i can add the essay into the the, the chat in regards to it where he actually discussed the skin color of the groups of people in the americas he said they are wholly tawny and swarthy and brown as well as europe as save for the swedes um and also parts of the germans and then he also said africa as well as asia so so when you're talking about that he's not wrong um, the people who came into power in the Americas have utilized the scheme of identity as part of their play to be in politics. I mean, I'm sorry, in part in power. I apologize. In power. So it's not something you have to give up your identity. It's how you deal with your identity. See, I don't see being who I am as negative in regards to how any I'm going to land it here of how any Caucasian can treat me. There is no Caucasian that can make me feel bad about myself because they are beneath me. And I don't say that to be disrespectful, but I know that I come from a ruling class mentality. Because I have that ruling class mentality, there's no one who can take me down from that. And that goes into my identity is that, yes, I can decide to be black, Indian, however, Aboriginal. I can be all these things and still also have the ability to say, no one's ever going to make me poor or broke. But these whites do, and you're not asking them to give up their identity. And they will go out of their way to make sure they will shut down the funding and the ability for Disney, Warner Brothers, to be able to make money off of these shows because they hated the fact that they were being discriminated to being a white male. And they weren't getting paid from that. This was simply recreational for them. And they did not care about the money in their in their bank accounts. They still averagely only make 50000 and they are still averagely poor, and they are still averagely lazy all they wanted to do was recreationally watch a show and a movie so when you ask that to black americans i can understand the issue of you're saying if you're choosing to identify as black you're choosing to be poor and, and that's how it was being that's, that's not I that's nowhere there. there's nowhere what this there's no that's nowhere what i was saying i we were talking about identity politics and i was making the point that because we as people americans all of us all the races that we call ourselves because we put so much value in that importance in that that is why they're able to use that to divide us so as Americans we need to that that's what I was saying that was that was what I was saying I was not saying that you needed to give up your identity because you're at the end of the day if you're born here or you're naturalized your identity is American so, so that is your identity. And so with that, you have the same power as every other American. You can walk into any bank. You can do you can do anything. There's nobody. Luckily, in our times, there's no one stopping us from being able to do what we want to do. The people from the old days fought for that. So now we don't have we don't have that barrier. We can get up and do whatever. A lot of it is just lack of knowledge. That's all. We don't know a lot of things that we can have. And maybe you could argue that that's what's being held from us. But at the end of the day, the knowledge is still out there. You can still start from zero and make make it to 100 or however you want to say it. You're able to do that. That's my only point. I'm not saying give up your identity. You can't. Even if you want to legally get up, give up your identity, the government won't let you do that. If you want to move to another country, you got to pay tons of money to renounce identity of America. They can still come and tax you. So you're an American, whether you want to be or not. That's your identity. And so that's where we need to focus on. That, that's where we need to focus on in order to stop identity politics. But as long as we continue to divide ourselves in little groups, then they can continue to use those little groups against us. That's the point that I'm making. But you know, we already. Uh, I, just wish me, I, mean, I apologize. Can I say me, one quick, real one love? I apologize. I just want to say this wrong, real quick, quick. But you realize, in order to do that, you're talking about anarchy, right? And the reason why I say that is because 
uh, the country was founded on racism because they thought that racism was a better as elocution wise for classism. So you're talking about because we're focusing. So when you say, oh, it might have been um, kept from us. Who's us? Are you talking about those poor whites as well? You know, poor whites don't know history in this country either. In fact, they're some of the most ignorant because in order to you know, they keep white people ignorant who are poor to keep them thinking that they are special. Not history. I just, I just want to make sure I'm saying history because the history ties into the politics. Our country cannot be bereft of me saying politics and history. They go hand in hand, just like centralized banking in the United States cannot go hand in hand. We were able to buy ourselves out of one bond uh, issue with the United Kingdom, or spe specifically the crown. But the second time they tried to implement a centralized bank, we could not buy ourselves out. That's why we are in the debt that we are in today that has continued to be the debt, and we print the fiat money. So when we're going to talk about this thing, you're talking to the, I'm just letting you know, you're talking to an extremely adept the history of America. And when we're talking about this, the politics of history in America means that the political identity makes it goes into everyone's view and everyone's voting goes into their identity. You like to think that because of how you're like, oh, I traveled the world. I lived in different countries. So I know this is keeping us back. It's supposed to keep the entire country back, sir. It's supposed to keep you exactly. stupid. I'm just letting you know. So this is not specific to us. It's specific to the entire country. It's not supposed to know that they are enslaved by the fact that their identities we're not ever supposed to be together that's my where i differ with you with that because tribalism also separates the entire world and they're not american or naturalized the problem is, is that the united states i apologize i apologize the problem is that the united states of america had just it's, it's their utilization of classism and you're not going to take away people's identity. Just like if you go to Ghana, you go to Nigeria, you go to Eritrea, you go to Madagascar, you go to any part, you go to Demi Democratic Republic of Congo, South Sudan. All these people who live in those countries have multiple identities. And it's not just based on their country. Not those based on those countries that white men named during the medieval times. Uh, yeah. So when we're having this conversation, I, I didn't say that you're saying you have to give it up. I'm saying that it's not going to be a need to give it up in order to make money or not. It doesn't have an importance level because your identity is based off of who you are regardless. And a big portion of black Americans identity is the reason why they were successful. You would not have a lot of black American if we just want to go to sports players, especially if it had not been for the ability to identify with the landmass that they're on and their living situation in order for them to pre-NIL deals be able to get lift themselves up by their talent or whatever they had going on and be able to become successful. The same thing with Robert Johnson. So when we're looking at this, it's not a question of needing your identity to matter more or needing money to matter more. It's just elocution and to be able to execute on you being able to be successful despite everything that America offers you. So, in short, your question was a little disingenuous, not a little, it was a whole lot disingenuous because that goes back to the um, pick and choose money or life. Not, not what I said. Oh, not what I that's said what all. it translated. That was the translation. Well, that, that was a, that's an error in translation. That's not what I said. Okay, so let's die. Let's die. I'm hopefully you can clear this up then because I agree with Greg's point. Um, and he was right to even stumble over the question because it challenged his humanity in his identity. Identity is a, a word that can encumbrance a whole lot of things. Nationality is different. If you're going to say we're all Americans, that's my nationality. How I identify as a woman who has birthed children, as a grown woman who was raised as a girl, as a grown woman who has gone through the experience of being an American, my nationality. My identity incumbents um, my history, my lineage, um, things that people don't know that I like, my favorite color, who my parents were, what they did, my ancestors. There comes a lot in that. And then you said knowledge. The definition of knowledge is facts, information, skills acquired by a person through experience and education, the theoretical or practical understanding of a subject. 
Now, um, knowledge can um, go one or two ways. The interpretation of information can be misused and abused, but it still doesn't take away from the fact that knowledge can go one or two ways. You can interpret it wrong and then regurgitate it wrong, or you can interpret it correctly or apply theory and get an outcome that is, uh, you know, convenient or you satisfied with you, right? So it's based on interpretation. So to me, I'm not going to pick one or the other. I most certainly demand to be repaired and also will the power to build my own empire along with the people around me. That's never not been an issue or a concern for Black Americans. Our economic framework has always been on the forefront, even from the poorest person to the uh, most richest or wealthiest person. That's not going to take away from the fact that we have um, ideological views. We want to make sure that we are also participating in our politics and things that affect us in our daily lives. You can't say that a person is recognizing harms done to them is a division because they are they they are identifying a particular way in a group. That makes no sense because, um, uh, um, I didn't say that either. But that is what it. That's how it lands. And the founding so, white five. So then maybe maybe I should <laughs> clarify, and then that way that way it lands correct. So the founding white fathers all came from different places in Europe. They all had different, Francis Scott Key was uh, uh, English. He was an Englishman. All these people were different people. Judith P. Benjamin was a whole German Jewish uh, Ashkenazi uh, who was a slave owner. So when you look at Irish and the Italians and all these different people, they pride themselves on their identity, to Joe's point, and they would dare for people to challenge the identity. Hell, that's why uh, the uh, Israelis got the ADL or, yeah, the ADL uh, here in America um, to, to shame uh, um, Kyrie Irving and Kanye West because identity, that they they weren't talking about their uh, uh, economic empire and whether or not they wanted to choose one of the over the other. These are people. Yeah, you you totally misunderstood everything I said. But what I'm saying <laughs> is <laughs> what I'm uh, saying I to you, what you were saying, and it still don't make no sense. However, you try it to doesn't talk to because it's still it's still what, falling. What does it? Okay, so let me, uh, wait let a minute. Me say it again. No, I can't really use my words to show me where what, I where what I'm, I'm where saying I'm to up. you is what I'm saying to you is. The conversation should not be, we should choose one or the other. If you want to have a conversation. That's not what I hold said. On, That's hold not on. what I, I got, said. I no heard one's you. listening. I heard, no one's listening. I heard you. I heard you saying that that's not what you meant. But what you said was exactly that. What you meant I, oh, I said a complex paragraph that you had to follow all the way through. So I that's what understand, I'm saying. I, I understand it. that. If you have the wrong understanding, then you pause so you can get a better understanding. No, because other, other, as, what as I'm saying. You do. No, no. You, you, want to, you want to understand. I do want to understand. French, you can't tell me what I said. If you're, so you have to listen to what I'm saying. If you're speaking French, then if there's a miscommunication. I agree. Hold on. Hold on. Because hold on, I don't speak French. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's just clarify something. Um, Cadius, Cadi, how do you say your name? Sorry, bro. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> All right. So, can you articulate what you're saying, particularly, and then she'll respond. Okay, I'll say it very simply. The reference that I was referencing when I was talking about identity, the conversation was about identity politics and how we allow identity to come in. My response is. Because we, as Americans, put so much emphasis on identity is the reason why we allow other people to come in because of that division, as opposed to identifying as American. That's what I said. I heard you. Right? So somewhere along the line, everybody got mixed up. <laughs> That's what I said. Okay, think. so then my response to you is... 
we have the utmost authority. That's the same, what goes in the same lines of Michelle Obama saying, no one has a monopoly on what it means to be an American. Uh, yes, we do. And I get to identify and recognize when someone is a uh, cosplaying is the term. And it does not matter what my economic status is at the moment of identifying and recognizing that. Does that mean, ho, 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 does that mean that solely because we recognize identity poli politics as a weapon that we somehow ignore it? No, most certainly not. Because it is a weapon. It is a tool that literally um, has been used for the founding of this country, this country and the demolishing of others. So again, I'm going to say what I said because I know I heard you correctly. That question was used in, in inappropriately in the conversation. How about that? And I'll land it there. Okay. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? I understood exactly what you said. And this idea that we are supposed to devalue ourselves or devalue our identity and just become plain flat American is ridiculous. Because again, we did not create this system. We did not create this caste system that we live in that's based on race. We didn't create this racial hierarchy. So this idea that we supposed to just completely distance ourselves from being black Americans while all these other people come from all these different cultures and countries um, and start parading and cosplaying us to benefit off of this country in ways that we can never, i.e. Kamala Harris, like this is ridiculous. Like she's literally going around with hot sauce in her purse and got Megan the Stallion twerking and talking about she smoked weed and listened to Tupac, all of these stereotypes and shit. But we're supposed to devalue ourselves to become this flat American. Like that's ridiculous. And honestly, the question that you posed to me in regards to would you uh, rather take a hundred million dollars or your identity? It's ridiculous and it's a slap in the face. It's offensive. It never said you that. definitely asked me the question, but it's offensive at the end of the day, um, in the sense that. I'm supposed to choose, and it's deeply rooted in capitalism if you really want to be completely honest about it. Like, it's deeply rooted in American capitalism. But the idea that you've lived in all of these places and that you're coming at me with this too, or coming at us with this too, is that in all the places that you've lived where there are Black people, none of, a lot of those people, and, and 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 I'll even go as far as to say in regards to the statement that you made in regards to all these people around the world not only be, being ex exposed to a limited um, amount of our entertainment and not knowing about our culture and all these different things. You're not going to know a lot of shit about our culture and who we are and what we've contributed just by looking at the entertainment. But people are quick to get on this app right here, the one that we're on, and say all types of shit. The internet, <laughs> we live in the age of the internet. So this idea that people aren't exposed to information or don't have um, access to books and all of these different things. And yeah, that's the thing too, but at the same time, not in the context that you're trying to put it, um, in the context of not uh, uh, um, honoring or um, what's the word I'm trying to use? Not requiring that they also have the bear the responsibility of doing the work. Um, because that's a part of the point that I was also trying to make in terms of Pan-Africanism. The weight of Pan-Africanism falls on the Black American. It does not fall on everybody else. It never existed on the continent of Africa. We created it, and yet we're supposed to agree to this whole thing in the in the guise of us um, being one and all of this sort of stuff, all the while people are shitting on us, um, denigrating us, and, and not doing anything for us, um, but benefiting off of everything that we fought uh, fought for. And I don't think that's fair. Um, but yeah, this idea that we're supposed to devalue ourselves and become this flat American in order to benefit from American capitalism, that's ridiculous in itself. Um, but as far as identity politics, if, pe if other people are benefiting off of our identity, why can't we benefit off of our identity? Why can't, why, why would we need to rid ourselves of our identity and let other people benefit off of our identity? I'll land there. So, so the the statement about being around the world was dealing more with it. that was a totally separate topic from this. That was when we were talking about um, people in other countries and how they see us. That was a, that had nothing to do with this. It's I never said devalue in anybody. That 
Sorry, I pressed the wrong button. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, it's a, it's a oh, double my bad. I, nor, nor did I say. Nor did I say anything about a hundred million dollars or anything like that. I don't know where all this extra stuff you came from. Definitely presented I, a I was question only to... of a certain amount of money or my identity. Um, you definitely presented that. You did. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. My, my, my only, my only, country. No, he's okay. He. That's fine. I like. I like discourse. That's hold on. Okay. Hold on. But yeah, at the same time, let's just clarify something. You definitely did say money over identity. That was a fact. You just say that. So right, right. Not a hundred million dollars, but I, what I was trying. Okay, I didn't never get to finish what I was identity. saying. What I was Same trying to plot. do. What I was trying to do was was a, was assess value for the conversation. So I could have chose something totally different. Maybe I could have said cars or something else. But I was just trying to assess a value to show importance because he was not a material. Oh, I, I want to ask you the question though. Hold on, hold on. Give me a second. Go ahead. Go ahead. I want to ask. I want to ask him the question. What do you? What do you say? You say uh, the money over identity. Which one would you choose? So, all in all, I'm an American first. So that that's where I stand on that. With it, with being an American, comes the ability to have access to money that other people in the world don't have access to. Like I said, whether you walk in a bank and get it, whatever the hell, whatever else, however, all the millions of ways we can make money here. Most of the other countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, all, like all the other countries, they don't have all of the same abilities that we have. And so that comes with it, but there's a lack of knowledge out there. And so a lot of people don't know how to access the money. I'm going to say this. And so. Because I know, and I understand where you're trying to go at with it. Uh, I'm going to say that's a tricky statement. That whole statement is very tricky because, uh, and after this, I'm going to pull in mode and I'm going to let you speak after mode. But um, that's a tricky statement because. Even with being an American, it comes with the identity of being a capitalistic type of person. And that's what makes it very tricky in itself. It's like, yeah, but if you take the money and say, because I'm an American, I'll go with the money in general. Well, the capitalistic ideology is an American identity itself. So then you, it, it just contradicts itself in its own particular way. It's like, whoa. But I get the point that you're trying to make, you know. For me, I think that personally, I will always say my identity is more important than the money. Or any particular type of asset, I think it's the most valuable asset because your lineage tells a story that can't be re recreated or replicated, and that, I think that's the most important thing you have. I think that, from my personal biases, I'll say, um, at the end of the day, for me in general, when it comes down to my life, I personally feel like the purpose of life is to be remembered, and. And when I look at it, from my perspective, everybody has their own perspective, but I personally feel like the purpose of life, uh, the, one of the objectives that you could ultimately go for is to be remembered. A lot of people said that Hitler was crazy, he was toxic. I still believe that in a way, Hitler kind of won because we still remember his name. And probably not for the good reasons, but he fucking won. Mo, what's up, man? Hey, man, how you doing, man? Um, hope you're having a great night, everyone in here. How y'all doing? Uh, I was I was just listening to um, earlier, and Greg says something about um, the weight of Pan Africanism has just been on like the Americans, and I I don't know I think that statement is just kind of unfair, and I and I just wanted like I don't know clarity on that because when you say that it kind of like just pushes away the history of Pan Africanism and the trisomy like on the continent too, so I just wanted like a little bit clarity on that one. I don't know what clarity to give you. I don't know. Okay. Um. A better question is like, um, for you, like, why why do you feel like the brunt of Pan Africanism is being placed on upon Black Americans? Because I don't see the diaspora in air quotes. I don't see them doing anything for us. We don't benefit from the diaspora. We never have. Like there's been not there's been very little things that we can say historically. Like there's been things, but in terms of the even just we don't even have to go back a hundred years. Modern society in modern society, I can't sit here and think of anything that has been contributed by the quote unquote diaspora that has benefited the black American where we haven't had to take on the brunt of the work. And I just, I, I don't see it. So if you can inform me and you can tell me, then you can teach me something, but I don't know. From the diaspora, what's one thing that we've gotten from the diaspora in general? 
not even just one thing. How have we, how, ha what have they contributed that has benefited black people in the way that we've constantly contributed to African descended people all over the world? Like um, what have they done? How are they building, even here in America, how are they contributing to the black American community here and building our communities? What are they doing like that isn't totally in service of them and the countries that they come from? Um, nah, what, um, what is, oh. My fault. I'm I'm just a host, so I'm just gonna play devil's advocate just to keep the, the flow interesting itself. And I'm gonna say this. Um with different levels of years and generations comes different feats of successes or different feats of what we think can be accomplished. The world records that were broken in uh, two hundred years ago uh are a joke to the world records that we're breaking now. So when we're pertaining to Africa in general, there's only one thing that pops into my head when I think of like something that Africans have created uh, that affects us to this day is the drum, you know, or uh, hieroglyphics. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I gotta, and you know what I mean, though. You know, like so that's like that was revolutionary at its time. So it, the years and the generations passed. So right now, what we're no doing man. is something bigger. <laughs> Thousands and thousands of years. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, you know shout out to the HBUs who use the drum, uh, uh, the drum sound. I'm just saying. Okay, during during the battle of the bands. The, the battle of the bands. Listen, you can't have none without them drums, baby. <laughs> it's true. So I'm just going to say this. I'm going to say this. When we do sit down and have these particular conversations, let's at least acknowledge that you know, um, I understand where the where the frustration and the discomfort comes in between these particular conversations. It's very sensitive topics. Not many people can have it, and I, I I applaud every single person that can have these sensitive topics and have some decorum with themselves. But also keep in mind that majority of the things that we have done as Black Americans, lineages, and our uh, generations before us is something that is uh, is new aged. This is all new age things that we're, we're accomplishing at this moment in time. We are pioneering the new age. And in the next hundred or 400 years, there might be another ethnic group that might completely dominate us. I'm assuming or guessing it's going to be the Chinese who are going to be completely next and dominate the next uh, future of it all. But we don't know. So just keep that in mind. We have our time right now. We're winning right now for the last four, three, three, two, two, three hundred years or so. Um, but let's not be pompous and think that we've been winning forever and it's never going to stop. No, it's going to be somebody who's going to come in and take it from us. And you're completely right. We should win from our particular culture while it matters at this moment in time. So, yeah. So, yeah. Great conversation, guys. I really love it. I love it. Uh, and, uh, I, I'm so sorry. I'm probably botching your name again. Hey, can I just say, Mo? I don't mean any. I don't. I, I, I'm very passionate, so I don't want you to say that as disrespect. But I also meant what I said. Like I can't think of. I, and of course, people have contributed things and done things here and there. I, I can't deny. I'm sure that's somebody I'm missing. But say, for instance, the flag that you have. I'm. I'm taking it. That's the Ghanaian flag. Ghana. Ghana participated in the slave trade. We haven't gotten any reparations. We haven't gotten no red uh, redress, any type of redress. They've done nothing for us. Like, it, and yet here we are in terms of with the year of return and all of this other stuff. Shit, we're bringing all this money over there, benefiting the country. Like they're, you know, parading around um, with this whole oh the the year of return and come back home and all of this. Meanwhile, it's like a tourist trap. It's like it's it's money. And it's just like, that's the experience of the black American with the diaspora, like use and abuse. And it's just not okay. And it's like, if, if y'all really about this Pan-African shit, y'all gonna have to show up different. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, I'll land. I'm sorry. I don't mean to take up the floor. <laughs> no, you're fine. I just was waiting to hear from Mo to say the, I would love to hear the, the advancements that Africa has made other than, you know, um, you know, what's happening right now um, to the continent and colonization of these other nations. What what advancements um, has countries in different countries, or if, if you can speak to one or two? How do we benefit from them? 
Well, they sent Malcolm X back here to America when he went to ask for help. Told him that he's going to have to. He's going to have to find a way to. Let Mo respond. Okay, I'll be quiet. So yeah, so just on um particular like, I'm I'm gonna get to the advancements later, but um, I just wanted to say like I think everyone has like a different definition of Pan Africanism, so that's what kind of like gets the um conversation kind of fucked up a little bit. I don't mean to curse for anyone older in this room, but I think so is like for me, like Pan African is like, yo, take care of your own country and come together when it's time or like not even come together, but it's just like have love for another black person, another black country, like don't undermine them. Like, but it's mainly just taking care of your own shit for a greater goal. So that's like one of the things I want to get out the way, but in particular for advancements right now, man, like, Ain't no major advancements going on currently. I mean, right now, we're just nation building. Most of these nations are under 50 years old, like my mother and like my father are older than Senegal. I'm Senegalese, by the way. And yeah, um, Greg, I, I didn't take it as uh, no disrespect. Like, but yeah. All right, family, let's talk about the root word deodorant. And we're going to start from the standpoint of that I got the root word package. So it came with the DVD and the Blu-ray, Buck Breaking, American Moon. came with the FBA magnet, but it also came with the root work style deodorant. This one was a coconut butter, which wasn't too fragrant. Like right? when I say it wasn't too fragrant, it wasn't strong, it wasn't loud. It was subtle. You know, it had a nice sweet smell. So if you know your lady's up on the arms and she happened to lean over, she ain't going to be like, oh my gosh, you know, why you smell like a flower? But she's not going to be like, oh my gosh, you smell like onion. So it works out. Now I have the Belva deodorant, but I also have this one and what i noticed is this is more the solidification of it the texture is different the bevel seems to roll over almost like a cream this one comes on more like a solid it's weird it's different but it works it's harder to come off which means as you're sweating it doesn't just disappear on you like the other deodorants do so i like that about it and i like it so much that i ordered the pure vanilla there you go peace black and powder you got to answer her question no, nah, no, nah, I just yeah, and nah, I said um, there's no particular advancements going on, like major advancements. Like I said, um, most of these nations are under 50, 60 years old. Like right now, we're just, hey man, the cities, cities are built, being built right now. Um, schools are being that's built. The thing, bro. That's the thing right there, because old dude, the dais, I think is his name, was up in here. He like, oh well, you know, they don't know things because they don't have the. X, Y, and Z, and it's all these excuses. And it's just like, at this day and age, there is no excuse. You can do what you can. How about that? Try to do something. Like, it it, it just, it. I, from my perspective, seeing it from my perspective, and yeah, we're in the first world country and all of this and that, but we also have it hard here. We go through hell here sometimes. But, you know, we do what we can. We don't come from all of this. Yeah, on paper, we might make a lot of money, but we American. It costs to be an American. It ain't cheap. So it's like this idea that we just live in lavishly like the Cosby's and all of this. And that is bullshit. It's hard. Um, but we do what we can. My churches, we were sending tubs of shit to the Caribbean, to Africa, to everywhere um, to do what we can. Like, it, I don't see that level of reciprocation. That's where I'm getting at is there's no reciprocation. And yeah, you know, you can say pan, which I totally disagree in terms of the definition of pan-Africanism. Do what you can where you at and all of this. Is that No, that's not the point of pan-Africanism. Pan-Africanism was always a global thing. Um, yeah, we started here and we're talking about building with each other, but we also included other people um, when we created it. So it's like this idea that it's um, a local phenomenon. No, it's a global Thing. It's always been global. Um, but uh, not particularly because most. Um, sorry, my fault. My fault. I thought it was done, but um, no. I said more, like most Pan African movements were nationalistic movements. That's what I'm trying to get at. Like, fix your own country first and come together when it's time to. But um, like you know, like nature, like nature being built right now. Like, for example, I'm sending Galiz. Like, yo, we send a we we just send a satellite in the space. Uh, we just discover like. It's just, you know, it's, it takes time. Like, nations take time to build. It's, my, my parents are older than Senegal, so it's just, like, it takes time. And, like, improvements are being made, and it's, like, ain't, ain't no shithole. But, yeah, we're working out there. Like, 
Black no. Americans were going to South Africa to fight for the apartheid. We were going to Ethiopia. We were going all of these different places in the name of Pan-Africanism to do all this shit. And you telling me that Pan-Africanism is just like you do what you can where you at and blah, blah, blah. Like, no, that's not what it is. It's never been that. But that's what it's been. That's what it's been. It's not been a reciprocal situation. So when you get the pushback that you get from Black Americans about why we feel the way we feel, some of us feel the way we feel about the diaspora and what this pan, what pan Africanism means and doesn't mean. The confusion is in the definition and what people aren't subscribing to and what they are subscribing to. It's all self interested um, on one end, and on the other end, you have us muling and doing all of this shit and not getting anything from it, nor getting the respect that we deserve because we put in work and we've continuously put in work. And that's where my frustration comes. I respect these particular two interactions and engagement. Right now, what I am going to do is I'm going to add somebody very different and unique that has their hand up. And uh, it's Dev Punk. Your hand's been up for a very long time. It's probably strong as Arnold Schwarzenegger. What's up? Yeah, the cool for moving. That's what's up, man. Uh, what, what's good with you, Adonis? Um, appreciate you. Thanks for letting me talk. I see Cousin Joe down there. Uh, Mo, what's good with you, man? Um, yeah, a good episode too this past week, Adonis, where you was interviewing those um those dudes. Um, I think it was in New York where you was asking them to name the countries in America, and they nailed that. Um, Mo, you might want to watch that. I think the uh the melanated guy in that episode was from Senegal. Because the two countries he named was Senegal and France. If I remember on that video, Adonis, you might know better than me. Yeah, yeah. But I had to um I had to push, I gotta push black a little bit, man. Um, the birth of the drum set. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um we're gonna get some credit to Edward D. D. Chandler. Um yeah, it, it, yeah. Actually, as a drummer myself, I've been playing the drums since I was a kid, man. And um, I can say that most of the drums that are used in the in the where you got four on the floor. You, you know, you got a kick drum with pedals and sticks and all of that stuff. That invention and concept was made in the early 1900s. Um, I don't think it's really the drum because they stopped using animal skins. Um, it's how the drum is played. If you put like five different cultures behind the drum, they're all going to play it differently. If you put a Brazilian behind the drum, they're going to play it differently. If you put a person from China behind the drum, they're going to play it differently. Um, Actually, shout out to China. They, that's where the tom toms come from on the drums and the cymbals. Um, that's like half the drum set right there. I say the only oh, thing, Lord, that, you know, now they're gonna be like, We black. I'm just joking, yeah, right, right, yeah. But we good at repurposing things. See, how do we even get the instruments? We was getting a lot of the collecting a lot of these instruments coming back from wars. See, that's why, the, that's why, like, the history is so right. important. We, we, we hold on, to, let me just clarify something. I've just been googling this stuff, comes to find out. I'm so happy you brought this topic up, actually. re it up. Comes to find out, the first, uh, who invented the first drum? The first came about in the Neolithic culture originated from China, but later spread to all of Asia. This period also saw the creation of the bronze dong song drum in Vietnam during the 3000 BC. Sri Lanka and Africa people, African people later discovered, discovered drums between the 1000 and 500 BC which they use to communicate. Wow. Shout out to China. So we can't even give it to Africa. See, they ain't ready for that, Adonis. Oh, <laughs> Lord. They gonna be all, look, they, they gonna be like, they gonna be like, BTS, BTS. I'm just joking. Yeah, yeah, so I just wanted to bring that up because uh, see, that that's what a lot of folk are missing as you brought back before. When people talk about history and that resonated with me so much when you said, they forget about Black American history, and that's the cheat code because American history is Black American history. I I might not have said that with my chest maybe a couple of years ago, but I didn't know my lineage like that a couple of years ago. And it's like the more that I go digging, it's like I can't even discover my own lineage without tripping over American history. It's almost like you know I know I know all a lot of y'all have been here. It's like what decade are you talking about? Whenever people are like, oh, this this part in history or that part. What wave of immigration were we facing? What decade are you talking about? Was that even a state? You know what I mean? Shout out to all the people who have gone back before. With, they traced their lineage to colonialism. Like three, four years ago, I would hear someone saying, oh, I traced my lineage back to like the 1600s, 1700s. And I'm just like, oh, they capping. That's crazy. 
what's this? It's actually not that hard. It's so not think, so Daft Punk, do you think we were grown grown up to almost practice anti black uh identity because of the maybe you know the 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 lineage piece of it the lineage you know did I you think not, I, that's a great question uh i would say yes but anti-black american um yes a anti-black american i would say um my, my parents was kind of like at the tail end uh, i guess the late 70s or 80s of the um the great migration coming up from alabama and actually i'm the only person in my lineage i come from a line of like seven tuckers i mean mo, mo actually he see he's helped me will even walk down my lineage as well and mo well you saw it yourself it's just tucker 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 farmer farmer tucker tucker help start alabama help build alabama first county in alabama it's the same name but then when my parents moved up north um and had me in new jersey I'm the only one that's not named that. I'm no. I'm. I mean, technically speaking, my name is more is Arabic, and it's a lot of. Ah, I'd say pan in there, but I'm careful using that word because a lot of Pan Africans I say is really pot Africans cosplaying as Pan Africans. That's a whole another topic. But yeah, to answer your question, I would say um, it depends on what region. Because remember, that's we, what I was gonna say. Yeah, that's exactly what region. I was gonna say. It depends on what region because we migrate. We migrate as well. That's why I'm real sensitive to that word migrate. I mean, if I go to the bathroom, I just migrated to the bathroom. Like with that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, mean of course, I mean, but you can't get away from it because uh Ida B. Wells talks about um, you know, the genocide that was happening and why she had to go to Oklahoma and leave Mississippi because of the you know, the genocide that was so heavily prevalent to find another place for the people to migrate to move to so that was what was happening in that particular time so that it, it would be the breadcrumb so the breadcrumb if we were talking about hansel and gretel in our sense more like tucker and tatum <laughs> or <laughs> do you understand what i'm saying the no, story i'll say this or i'll say this and then yes, i'm gonna let joe go on because yes. i can't spend up for a minute I'll say this, and I'm gonna let Joe go up because the hand's been up for minute After Joe's gonna be Greg. Um, we have to when we sit down and say like stuff like that. When you sit down and say, "Oh, um, do you think that we've been groomed to be uh, to adapt into these um, uh, toxic or what's the, what's the word you use? Uh, anti-black, anti-black yeah. um, identity." Mm -hmm. Anti-black identity. I'll say you have to talk about the regions that we all come from. I always try to keep and remind myself of the attacks that the CIA did onto the black American household and families during the 70s to the 80s. And a lot of people, when we go to these conversations, they just brush over that shit. Like, no, majority of us that I don't know what year you guys were born, but majority of the 90s babies up into like the 2000s. You know, like they literally was raising themselves. I, like, oh, you was you even had a parent who was not care mindful, or was coming who grew up in that particular era. It was just one of the most craziest eras to be born in and raised in. So, we can't we can't like forget about that impact that really messed up our whole generation. Like it messed up it messed up a lot of generation. You either became the biggest and the best, or you crumbled down to the rest. So, Joe, what's up? So um, I would just say real quick, even in regards to what you were saying there, I, the region still matters because living in extremely big urbanized city life is much different from being scattered in the South. So your point stands for when you're talking about uh, people who move to bigger cities and are quote unquote black or the so-called black men or even Caucasians when they live in certain places. But the South actually disrupts a lot of historical conversations in regards to um, certain things there. But I will say, I just wanted to say to the point of um, One Love, when you said, do you think we were groomed to have a, like a relationship with anti-Blackness? So it's your identification with the word Black. Maybe that's somewhat to Kadeus's point, right? Um, about identity. It's how we identify ourselves based off of where we came from. I wanted to say there's an importance in identity 
is the reason why groups of people are in power. So your ability to identify with who you are goes into your culture. Your culture identifies your success tactics because you practice success through your cultural tactics. This is why, for example, on the North American continent, South America, South Indians, excuse me, South Indians are the highest earning group of people because of the way they practice culture and their way that they're able to utilize the American system. Um, they know exactly how to execute. This is what the word I was using earlier. When they come over here, what to use and what to take advantage of um, in order to make sure they're able to earn at the highest rate. That Caucasians are not even 10th. Um, the top earning groups in America, if we go by, if we, if we break it down by the countries they originate from, uh, they're all from different Asian groups because of how they execute. So when we're looking at identity, identity is important. Um, and where you come from is important. So the ability to know where you come from ties into your history. And your history allows you to have a certain amount of pride and actually a certain amount of comfortability with how you deal with life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, and on the and in North America, land ownership. That's also part of the preamble and constitution. But I'm not going to go there. So when we when we talk about these things, it's important to understand. Yes, when we when people have brought up like a Dan Callaway, let's not go that far because I don't want people to go back go around it. Um, identifying where you come from and doing your genealogy and lineage is so much more important than doing a DNA test because so many people will find out that where you came from uh, informs your future and to a certain extent. And that's the part of what's the problem with many of our conversations because it's so easy to get caught up in the negatives of what's how we identify today because we're, we're alive. But how many of you have sat down and had conversations with the oldest person in your family. I remember in the 90s before my great grandmother died, she was over 100 years old, right? I asked her about her family. Um, this is my maternal grandma, great grandmother, her family. Never once did slavery came, come up. At the time she was 100 and this conversation had to have been happening, I want to say maybe 98. So she was born in uh, at least around 1907 or 008. How wouldn't she have had a conversation about slavery if slavery came so many decades before? So I just want us to understand that w when you ask that question, one love, about are we groomed for anti-blackness, take out the black and are we groomed to forget who we are? Because you didn't call yourself black. Now, there are words that identify as niggas or um, negro and nigger, which is real. I'm not saying that for anybody. So that you need to cut that out, please do. Those words are real. Um, crow, words like that, swarthy, tawny. Those words you'll go throughout European history and find those words scattered throughout every single European country. And you're like, wait. Olive skin, if that's what that means, when were they olive skin? No, olives are only black and green. So when has there ever been a black and green white person? They don't have black undertones. So I just want you to understand that when you're asking if they're grooming you to be anti-black, if, if by black you're talking about the racial designation that was given in the 1600s, sure. But if you're talking about the designation of people who were pushed out, killed, and, and bred out, coming from a certain continent in order for another group of people to go into power and then describe and rearrange your history because they're now considered the winners, that's more so what you're being groomed to be anti. You're being groomed to forget where you came from and who you came from because of the people who you came from. And those people are afraid of those people. I don't say that to be this and James, and I don't say that to be uh, upholding and be haughty. No, I'm saying that we were a scary group of people, many of us who came out of Europe. And the, the people who we're calling Europeans are extremely afraid of, of wanting to go when you travel throughout Europe. You can see the statues of people who they'll be like, oh, this is somebody the black. B.S. That's not who they were. It, it wasn't some per white person called the black. It wasn't somebody called the red beard. Naming conventions don't work that you somehow get enslaved by people who were enslaved and you take on the enslaved people's last name. Why would we take on Jefferson and Ellison when Scots, Irish, the, the Scots, most of them were named slave owners? How would they have been slave owners when the Brits 
were fighting at one point the Romans. And when were they ever in power to be able to be like, oh, yeah, let's go ahead and become um, slave owners over the blacks? When? In America? So if we do a little bit more history understanding and research, and then you start doing those genealogies and you mix them together, you will find out the reason why you're bred, if you want to use that word, to think about yourself a certain way. Blackness puts a stop on who you are. It's actually understanding who you are, who you come from, that's extremely important. So, Adonis, if I can, give me a couple of minutes. So, when I'm talking about the term black, as it was given, just like Negro, um, which does mean black um, in its Portuguese, uh, Spaniard, Moorish way, um, I'm speaking of black Americans in soul culture, specifically only the American United States, the movement around this country. And not even going into um, different eras of time, but only specifically between 1776 and up until um, the 60s, 70s. And so when I heard um, Dead Punk talk about his parents in the 60s and 70s, there was this culture of the Pan-African view of we are Africans, we are from the motherland, you know, or we are Moors, or parents were, you know, you need to know who you are in this this concept of these are the places we came from, but there was no genealogy work being done. Um, not like it is now being unfolded today with delineation, the conversation around surrounding reparations and why more and more of uh, to Adonis's point, generations now are doing their genealogy work and they're actually walking back those breadcrumbs that I was talking about um, from this landmass backwards. Most of the ushering, I think, on the media, uh, excuse me, uh, mainstream media side coming out of the hills of like NARC or in Cobra or Come groups who want to globalize genealogy, um, they're not speaking from where people actually were left off, meaning that I was left off in Inglewood, California. I would have to walk back my genealogy to who all those people were behind me, um, you know, uh, and find all of that information. But in that, those generations were... Um, being pushed into a different wave of thinking. Um, you need to identify yourself as being African. You need to identify yourself as being uh, African-American. You need to identify yourself as being um, Black. You need to identify yourself this way, but we still hold or held on to traditions and cultures that were passed down through families. So in that, we've discovered um, indigeneity for Black uh, uh, um Freeman indigenous people who were taken off Dawes Rose, you who were um, taken out of tribal uh, um, uh, um, lands and not even being recognized. You you have a a history of things that have happened specifically just within the last what we're talking about going back the last 157 years and. In that, my experience with the 60s and 70s generation, the boomers, I guess, those would be the boomers, um, there was this nuance being passed down that we should only focus as identifying, if I can use that word again, one way and not actually uncovering, well, why do you say that? Why, how do you know that? Or where does that come from? And so that was the piece of, do you think that we were groomed to believing one way and not exploring who we are um, outside of uh, just the economics, but uh, knowing who we are? I think most people already knew we were American. <laughs> we already knew that we were amalgamation. But who were those people? What were they doing? What was happening to them? Who did it to them? So... That where is where I was coming from because the generations before us have a different thought process on identification. And um, I think if they even listen to us sometimes because we've gotten this pushback, um, people believe that we don't know who we are. 
People believe that we are not actually speaking to those identifying factors when we're actually identifying them in such a way that sometimes it does turn people off. Um, yeah. I just want to say real quick, I appreciate your response um, because I actually understood a a hundred percent of what you said. Um, I was just getting more so towards, even when you say the 1700s, as I said, I'm going to send it to you directly because I want to make sure that you're able to read that letter from Benjamin Franklin. And he was identifying the groups of people that were in America. That was in the 1700s. I think we just chronologically, we have a thought process of history that it happened like, boom, slavery. And we all lost our, 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 our identity and things like that. It didn't happen that way. And and unfortunately, the grooming part comes through identifying a, a school. The grooming was an individual. Um, the grooming has school and poverty uh, would be the grooming of identity. So the compelling of compulsory school goes into how we identify. So whites were taught a certain way and we were taught a certain way because we decided to go to school. We're no longer homeschooling. We no longer had the teacher house in the same way. We went through compulsory education. So everybody started having to have a one type of education on how they're looking at things. So they rearranged history based off of things that didn't make sense. Even though they were coming over to this country, we're talking about the 1700s, and they were seeing groups of people that were already here, i.e. that led to the Boston Tea, uh, Boston Tea Party, things like that. And we're looking at what has happened there. No one wants to talk about the things like that that happened. And that was within the last 300 years. Um, so it was very relevant what I was saying before in regards to identity. Why would they dress up in blackface in the 1700s if the Indians were white with the little tan? So it's a problem when we have this conversation with identity and what we're groomed for, if we're not starting to be able to think about like, hmm, some of this stuff doesn't make sense. Dots, stories got to connect. And hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yo, you just, you just, you just gave me a key right there. Why was they wearing blackface in the 1700s if all the Indians were white? Ooh, never thought about that. Yeah, it's actually diabolical because <laughs> the when they talk about the Redskins, Indians, people like that, it's funny how we have these conversations about Indians, but Plains Indians and, and the Indians on the East Coast of the United States are talking about the East of the Mississippi River to make sure we get that right. They were two different types of quote unquote peoples. And when we're looking at down the Indians, when we're talking about through Mississippi, Alabama, Oklahoma, um, even up and through New York, but we're talking about the East Coast, what they're identifying Indian and what you would identify Indian when you're talking about the Buffalo people on the other side of the Mississippi on the Western side and the more dry ground people with the less rain, those groups of people don't look alike. If you come to South Carolina and parts of North Carolina, Lumbee Indians don't look anything like the, the Plains Indians. When you go down to Mississippi and you're looking at the people who call themselves Crow and, you know, they made that movie where they got Idris, Idris Elba to play a, a black cowboy. They brought in these people. The women who was called a crow, you can still find those people. They still exist today. It's unfortunate because everyone hears the word Indian. They're like, oh, that means that you guys, are, you're trying to be anti-black and you think you have good hair. No, those people just look like you. And you're like, well, hey, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And you're called an Indian. What does that mean? Can I ask anybody, how old is people's parents in this room? I'm not asking everybody to shout out. I'm just saying, does anybody have a 70-year-old parent like I do? Does anybody have a, access to their grandparents' um, birth certificates? Does anybody ever notice how your grandparents don't have black on their birth certificates? Has anybody asked why you're like, well, my great-grandmother and my great-grandfather was Indian? Oh, that means you hate yourself. No, a lot of people's grandparents were Lumbee, Seminole, Crow. They were Creek Indian. So when you have these conversations and you ask, and that's what I say, when you ask about the identity, they're trying to stop you from identifying with who you are so you can feel uncomfortable. And so you can actually think about how, how should I say this? It's an insidious plan to make you not identify with being okay with the world. Because if you felt okay with the world, you could execute from a place of power. But it's hard to execute from a place of power when you think that, well, 
they just put on blackface because they couldn't found they couldn't find light brown paint. That's the problem with history. It makes you think that these people must be so much smarter than you are because they wrote this down and they told you to think about it. Well, they also teaching it to their own people, but didn't they put their own people in slaves? How how is it that white Americans? This is the thing, and I'll land it here because I love this question. Nobody ever answers it. Why don't white, white Americans identify with slavery? Weren't they serfs in the medieval times? Weren't they serfs when they came over here? Weren't many of them poor? You think they were rich? No. Everyone wasn't a Sir Walter Raleigh who served the aristocracy. So when we have this conversation about things, we have to think about what the identity of things happened because who does it serve? Who does it serve to make another group feel like they were on top? When they, I'm telling you, ask these white and poor white Americans who they are. And they will tell you, like, yeah, my family came here from Poland and we were all poor. We ate potatoes and cabbage. They know that. So why are they not identifying with slavery? Because they were slaves. It's because it was built into the compulsory education to make them feel better about themselves because they know that they're PWT. But they did it also to you for you to be jumbled up and be like, well, wait. We were just slaves. And then they make other groups of people who look like you be like, yeah, y'all were just slaves. Y'all didn't do anything. All you do is basketball Americans and make rap music and twerk. Yet, can somebody tell me why on their podcast, why are they emulating black American toxicity? Why are they setting up everything so they can try to fight and act up and look like around the table plus eight in the daily wrap up crew whenever they have these conversations? I'm done. Cook, cousin Joe, cook. I'm pretty sure I was next. I don't even know what to respond to at this point. There was a lot of stuff thrown out there. But I guess what I'll say um, in reference to like what we were talking, all of it, because it's all relative. Um, <sighs> revisionist history is a part of American history. The American history, the American revisionist history, what we've been conditioned to believe um, is a part of the American experience. And I just wish the people who come here who aren't really put in a position to have to know the history um, understood that because it'd make our lives a lot easier. Um, as, as well as the people who are outside of this country who think they know everything about what it means to be American. Um, but I will say, you know, the points that were brought up by the other speakers also go to the points that, because I'm not even going to lie, Kadeya said, Mo, y'all kind of triggered me. <laughs> but at the same time, like, I think it's, it's, it's valid for the conversation because, like, these are the things that we need to be talking about. I feel like for me in this moment in time where my identity as a Black American is being used against me and is being paraded in my face, um, to the benefit of others and 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 I'm referencing Kamala like Kamala annoys the shit out of me cuz I mean not even just for the sake of her being her but the fact that what she's doing is what so many others have done and it is the epitome of the conversations that we've been having for I don't know how long about identity um in reference to black americanness um but you know to the points that the guys made earlier in regards to like you know, Pan Africanism and like um, what Mo, I'm um, not Mo, but what Cadeus was saying about um, you know just being American and shit. Like it goes hand in hand with what Joe was just talking about and what One Love was talking about in terms of identity. Our identity has always been under attack in this country. Um, they have wanted us to forget so much of it, and I do believe what I, what I think Joe was getting to in regards to um, the indigenous portion of it. The po the portion of the indigenous stuff about people telling us we hate ourselves because we, you know, speak to our ancestry um, being um, Native American or whatever. Like I have so many aunts who've passed and gone on who would tell me our history. Um, my grandmas and stuff know, like our families know that the oral history is passed down and it's not coming from a place of self-hate. My mom knew our aunts who were Native American um, back in North Carolina before they died. They died before my generation, uh, before I was born. But, you know, our families know our family who were, you know what I mean? But this idea that, you know, 
oh, that self-hate, that that's not a part of our story. Um, but then you got all these five dollar Indians running around, these white people who are part of these tribes, and then we're supposed to take that. You know, it's just it's it's a lot of revisionist history, it's a lot of gaslighting. And I think when we having conversations, um, because again, like I said, that whole, oh, you hate yourself if you bring up that part of your history. That I feel like that comes from the Pan-Africanists who have tried to get us to be on this, to be this one big African. Um, that's the kind of narratives that they would push in order to get us to subscribe to those na narratives and ideologies and things like that in the past. And I think more and more of us are challenging that because we should, because we shouldn't have to deny who we are in order to exist in this world. There, there shouldn't be these sort of purity kind of conversations amongst um, people of, of African descent or whatever in regards to who we are and what we are and, and all of these things. I've heard people on this app who are from like Africa and all these other places um, mocking us, talking about, um, oh, you think you Native American and all these different things. And it's just like, you don't know who we are. And like you saying this as some sort of slight, we know exactly who we are. Um, but I think um, in regards to I don't know how we move forward. I definitely Greg, don't forget Byron Donald now. Let's spread the wealth and uh uh pace the pace all over it. Byron Donald got up there and was like, I'm not even he said, I'm not even black American. My my grandmother's from uh Panama or Jamaica or something like that. He he was like, I'm got one parent that's Panamanian, one parent that's Jamaican. And that's insane because again like who you know we get flack and I, like i said i'm trying to be careful because i know it's a recorded space i hate recorded spaces um i'm trying to be on my p's and q's it's 11 27 here in la so i know it's later in other places my thing is <laughs> that is a part of the problem you have all these people who are not us representing us and speaking for us it can't be that way we need our own representatives first and foremost but we all need to be our own representatives we need to know better at this point we can't be like today is going all over the world and not knowing who we are that guy who's making youtube videos like we can't be that we can't be this flat black this flat american who don't know who we, who they are and are allowing all these other people to define who we are and you know, not fight for what we deserve in this country because we built it. And at the end of the day, that means something. I don't care what anybody tries to tell us. That means something. Not only did we build it, everything that they have to be proud of, we contributed for the most part. So it's just like it's it's a really fucked up situation to be in right now. Um, when you think of identity and quote unquote identity politics, again, like I saw old dude, like I'm supposed to forget that I'm a black American and just be a flat American, but allow all these people in on my identity and allow them to ben benefit off of it and like actually have to watch it because it is a slight, it is a slap in the face every time you see a like the guy one love that you just spoke of, like get on these platforms and say these things and be this voice for black Americans when he's not. And shitting on us all at the same time, not knowing where his help came. What was hurtful? What was hurtful when he said, "I believe in the black family. I'm for the black family," and then turned around and uh, uh, be here without us. No, but he does not. He has a mixed, uh, mixed racial family. His so his, the wife he was with, I think, was black American, or she might have been something else. But the wife he's with is. A white American, I don't know if she's Jewish, I don't know what she is, but she's a white American. He's had kids with her, but he's in a room full of black people saying, I believe in the black family and I want to stand, I want to stand up for the black family at the same time saying, Well, I don't believe in repair and uh, um, uh, I think we should move forward. That's the same stuff when some Sears here in Virginia said she's a Republican. Lieutenant Governor, who was like, yeah, we need to move past slavery. You're in Virginia saying that. And then second of all, you go to the Holocaust Museum and you parade it around to understand genocide and um, uh, history and saying that we should never forget what happened during the Holocaust. But you in Virginia, a Lieutenant Governor for Virginia, like who sent you? That's that's how I was feeling. Like these people seem to be it, to the identity politic piece. You're just, she's Jamaican, right? Came out of nowhere, 
And she ran on, I, I'm a black woman. So to me, again, it goes back to, they don't speak like us, their language, their, uh, uh, their ability to even uh, innately identify and or recognize uh, historical uh, nuances here and then get into positions of authority. It is scary. They know about something <laughs> like that, though. They, they're they going to benefit off of it. Like, everybody knows that. And that's what's not, like, spoken on. You know what I mean? Like, everybody knows coming here, subscribing to white supremacy and perpetuating white supremacy will get you ahead to some extent. Shitting on us will get you ahead to some extent. Like, and nobody wants to be the bottom cast. I remember a friend of mine who's Filipino. Um, he hung around a lot of black people. He had the, you know, you know, he was, he was, but he was cool. And like, he told me the story. He was in an Uber with this Chinese girl who grew up on a American, um, I guess she went to international school. That's where she went. She went to international school. And so she was very Americanized. They were in an Uber here in LA. And there was this like South Asian guy. He was Vietnamese or, um, yeah, he was like Vietnamese or or something like that. Um, darker skinned guy. Um, they were in an Uber. He was driving. And my friend said that um, there was a black guy who either was in their car or was passing by or something like that. And the guy just started shitting on him and was like, oh, those black Americans, those black people, blah, 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 blah. And was just going on these hella anti-black tirades or whatever. My friend who only hung around black people to some extent. Um, and this girl who was very, you know, Americanized, we're both looking at each other like, what the hell? And then my friend called it and they both went in on him. Um, he's like, uh, how are you sitting? Um, or no, the guy was actually Filipino. So I think my friend was actually able to speak to him in their language or whatever. He's like, um, how are you sitting here when in your country? you're the black people of your country like people are shitting on you because you're darker skin how are you sitting here now that you're an american that you basically then came up here trying to shit on them to make yourself feel better but like i use that example because it's like that amongst everybody everybody knows coming here that they have some sort of privilege over us because we are the bottom cast and i think america teaches people how to treat us Pete, they they all the information that y'all are talking about that they're sort of gaslighting us out of and 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 denying us and trying to sort of revise um it's all intentional um but at the same time it's like again to what i was saying to mo there's a level of responsibility that they have to take on like th that weight can't just be on us you have to know better to some extent if you can say in your country you're having a particular experience as a person of african descent then when you come here especially off the fact that we fought for you to be here and even if you're not here and you immigrated to england our freedom fight our freedom struggle everything that we put into it has influenced the world you have to know where your help come from Everything that you a lot a lot of what people have, whether they want to admit it or not, has been off of the black the backs of black Americans. And it's not fair to exist in the world where people think they can just shit on you and benefit off you at the same time. It's really fucked up. But I'll land there. Um I'm curious what everybody else has to say. Is Joe still here? Oh yeah, I'm still here. I'm sorry. I'm okay. I'm no, no, no. I just, I just had a question for you because you made a at the very beginning of your statement, you made a uh, comment and you said that the Asians come over here. If, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I want to make sure I understand it. You said the Asians come over here and they tend to be above everyone else, and they mainly whites. But it was what you were referring to. Am I, am I correct? I, my exact statement was they are the highest earners. So when Got you it. actually look at Americans, I'm, I'm literally talking about published earnings in regards to public and private sector. They have the highest earnings. I didn't say above anybody. I said because right, of their earning, cultural earning standpoint and their execution. I'm strictly referring to earnings. And if you go, it'll be like, I, I believe it's them as far as South Asians. I'm specifically talking about them at the top. They already earn over $100,000. Below them, you have to start going down to like Korean, Vietnamese, all the different types. If, you, if you're talking about the top 10 earners in this country are all of some type of Asian descent. That was what I said. And you you think that's because they're Asian and not because of the knowledge that they have? 
I, I are you asking me if that's I'm what asking. I said? No, I'm, no, I'm asking you to elaborate a little more on that. No, I think it's a cultural practice. I don't think it has anything to do with them specifically being a- Asian. I think Americans are very anti-culture. Hey, Joe. I think other groups. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Joe. Can I? Kadea, because you keep doing this, like you keep well, this. Hold on, hold on. Let her finish. Let her finish her no, thought. No, I'm going to let her finish. I'm coming to you next. Hold on. Let her finish her thought. I'm going to let her finish. She gave me permission to speak, so let me finish my thought. Um. What you keep doing is dismissing the system that we did not choose to live in, that we did not create. Asians don't experience what we experience based on race. They experience right, that's not what I was referring to. They don't experience that's, what that's they not what I was referring to. And you didn't even allow her to. You didn't even allow her to speak. You cut her off. When no, she was I'm trying to clarify you, her. She gave me I, permission. I wasn't to talking. I'm going to allow her to speak. And I asked her for understanding. What I, you're doing I, is dismissing the system that we live in or, or push, putting the onus on us, which it should be put on white people, not us. The people who created the system. The onus don't do. I system. have not said they anything. I only asked her a question. Because they don't deal with the oppression that we deal with, period. I only but asked sorry, her a girl, question. I didn't please. say any of what you're saying. I literally please only please asked go. her a no, question. No, you couldn't go off. No, Joe wasn't even talking. I, I asked if she go was off. available. Joe has the floor, I but you said Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I asked if Joe was available and I asked, I wanted to elaborate on that topic with her. I didn't say, only thing I've done is ask questions and I haven't even said anything about black people. So I don't know what, where you, where you got all that data. I didn't say that. So let Joe finish what she was saying. How about you let Joe finish? Cause you still talking. Your questions are ridiculous. Oh, Joe, girl, Joe, Joe, Joe. Listen, tell it, tell it to Joe. Joe, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. You guys are like some married couple. Every time y'all <laughs> both on stage, shit go left real quick. And they wake my ass up. <laughs> oh, they just fell asleep. <laughs> nah, I'm not sleeping, but you know, y'all was talking. What we experience in this country and just make it this like illusionary. Th- like, no, it's real. I understand, what? Greg. It's You're real. talking about his intention. His intention of asking Joe that question, uh, uh, Kadonis. Come on now. What was okay. the intention? I, I, that's what I, I'm waiting I, for. I wanted. I Did wanted you call him Kadonis? That's oh, is that, that's not his name. What is it? No, Cadeus. It's fine. No, G, it's fine. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Because no, that's not the name. It's Cadeus. Because oh when people God. when people say my name wrong, I'd be like, "That's not my name, Cadeus." I apologize. Okay, so so part of, part of this is is everybody is making assumptions as opposed to asking me more questions to get an understanding. So everybody just assumes I'm the saying devil, one thing by asking. So question let question me speak. Question. There you go again. Let me speak. The devil let, 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 Greg, let, let him in. Let, let him in. Speak. Greg. That's the problem. <laughs> let me speak. Everybody cuts me off and don't, don't even fully understand my idea. You just go, oh, he's wrong. Let it's gonna be bullshit when you finish. I I literally asked Joe <laughs> that question for understanding because when she said it, I interpreted her a different way. But instead of making assumptions, I asked her for clarification as to what she meant. And so when she clarified that, then my assumptions was incorrect. It will be totally wrong for me to jump on and blast Joe. And she didn't even say what I interpreted her as saying because she didn't really elaborate where I thought she was going, which is what I was asking for. Always ask for clarification, just like this. You believe I Greg, Okay, well, you I'm heard my you. question. You heard my question, right? My question oh, was, yep. what, what was your intentions is what I wanted to know. What my, was, what I, did I you was think only, Joe was doing? I was only asking her for clarification as to what she meant. I know, because I got I, that part, but what, what did you think? that Joe meant. That's what I wanted to hear. I, I wasn't sure. And that's why I asked. I wasn't sure what she, so I wanted her clarification because I don't want to just go the wrong way or just in this other example where Greg thinks I live internationally just because I said I've lived internationally. No, I'm, I'm domestic. I'm here, I grew up in been. Kansas City, broke, poor, started, didn't get my first bed till I was 16 years old. And I pulled myself from that and moved myself up. So Oh, okay, so but you I, are you bootstra- Are you talking about bootstrapism, or are you just saying an individual experience? My individual experience. I don't. I don't. I don't subscribe to any categories or or ways of life. 
I just go off of my experience only, and then I teach others based on what I've learned. So, so, so do that, you so think that? Do you think that because? Let me ask you this straightforward question: Based on what Joe was outlining in regards to the conditions and the way economically Asians are able to stack right now, do you believe that because we focus on maintaining our identity that we're not focused on doing the same thing? No, actually. So my perspective is, is that the majority of America is struggling due to lack of knowledge. And, and that comes from my experience. There's a lot of things that I did not know, whether we could say I didn't have a father or whatever, whatever our excuses are in the past, the history and all that stuff. There was lack of knowledge. Now, where me and my grandmother has clashed because she's from the civil rights movement in the whole nine yards is the work that that era put in enabled me to be able to live the way I'm living. So I, I do not discredit history, but I understand now that where I'm born, I have to live where I am. And so I've learned to function in the system that's been, that's been laid in front of me. I understand that when I when my grandmother went to the bank, she couldn't get a loan. They, they were looking at her race, the whole nine yards. I understand now that AI and algorithms run the world. And so with that, now I can walk into the bank and manipulate the system based upon what's going on. Once I learn how the algorithm calculates and determines whether you get a loan or not, which is not race-based, now I understand I need to perfect these little things so that when I walk in, the algorithm will give me a yes. It's not about the human looking at you anywhere, anymore. Our world has changed. And so that's that's where I begin to teach. Go ahead. I think right, it's a right. problem in the AI. A, they've all they've already um, had instances where they've proven that there's bias and uh, racial bias in AI. So what yep. you say is ridiculous. Like, well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. So without knowing my background, software developer, I ended up working at Google. So some of the AIs that you refer to, I participated in building. So I know the code in the background. So again, it's that's just the, the lack of knowledge. <laughs> that's that's the only thing. It's just the lack of knowledge. That's all. And I feel like everybody, notice I said feel, so it may not be facts, but feel, I feel like everybody can exceed in America at the state that we're in now. We can exceed in America with the knowledge. We got we got to have the correct knowledge to move forward. And so yes, we, we actually oppressed. have to have we actually have to have the correct position of majority authority. So what I got from what Joe said was she proved um factually that Asians, depending on what group of Asians, if you look at the different ethnicities which she mentioned, um they are cast uh differently with even within their own um, ethnicities, but they're in certain positions to actually pull one of each other up and they do source and build in group, group economics with each other. I've had that experience even in the beauty industry. I agree with that. So it's not just knowledge, it's actually access to power and exposure. If you are not in a position of power or if you are in a position of power and you're pulling up other different groups of people, you are not practicing group economics or nepotism um, when it comes to building as the Asians do. So to Greg's point, again, and to incumbents what you're saying, um, Greg is speaking to the fact that Asians have not been uh, in a America um, disenfranchised much more like the um, Ashkenazi, Sephardic Jews, um, likewise, because they've been able to position themselves into positions of majority authority or power. So they can practice nepotism so much so that disenfranchises Black Americans in a way where we have to fight harder, 10 times harder to even practice nepotism and, I'll, and I'll so that's where i don't if i do you mind if i kind of um just yeah, finish up thing because I, I appreciate everybody's opinion because i don't want you guys to assume one love you did you did basically take part of that and, and you were right um your relationship to america is based off of when you got here so being an immigrant actually benefits you i know a lot of people may not enjoy that statement but it's real 
because you're not part of the American system of how you have to deal with the United States and its history and your identity to it, because they have no identity to it and they're coming over here as adults planning instead of people who are brought up under the system, this is why white people aren't at the top. So like when that guy said before that white supremacy is ruling everything, well, how are people from a different country beating you at your own game in your own country? And it's because that their, their need to decentralize how they look at culture and culture is a direct tie to success because of the group economics, which I give to one love. And I understand exactly why Greg has, I, I understand Greg's antipathy, antipathy towards you and what you're saying, because you're trying to have, and please don't be offended by this because I'm not saying that's exactly what it is. I'm saying you're trying to have the successful immigrant white person who built themselves up by the bootstraps, Grant Cardone mindset where it's like, well, I came up poor and I was able to do it, so why not you? Um, it's the same reason why everybody is not a it, it's not a professional sports player. Because it's not going to be everyone. Most of us are going to live in the middle and most of us are going to live normal lives. And most of us, regardless, are always going to be subject to the country that we live in. Just like for Adonis' sake. He's able to make content that's unique to a group of people because he is a person on a different pe- a different group of people's soil. He couldn't make that content the same way, right? So th- they're able to take advantage because of how they practice um, culture, because of how they practice their ability to practice group economics, just like the Ashkenazi Jews and Sephardic Jews that are on the United States soil. You notice how they have their own police, they have their own groups. Um, the the different types of agents practice the same way. If you actually find out that every American city has a quote unquote Asian um, center of business where they actually practice business. That's why they don't care about bo- voting as much because they practice business more so over voting. So when you ask that about identity over money, um, their identity is success in the way they want to practice culture. Their culture is wanting to be dominant. So they're being quiet with their economics. So entering and being loud and being Andrew Yang, that's fun for them, but they already had the economics because they're being, they're trying to be, they're, what their problem is, they have issues with white men. And, and I don't say that to be funny. I say that because they're showing white men they can beat them at their own game in their own country. And they're doing this across Europe as well. So the, the, so when you ask them that question, it's not because they're Asian. It's because why practice what this group of people is doing when it's a, it's a, it's causing a, a cluster F-U-C-K, if you will, in their own country. They don't have to copy what Americans are doing because you wouldn't ask a white person, oh, okay, well, you know, if you pick yourself up by the bootstraps, you know, most white people in America are poor. You're not asking them why they identify as white and they're not just rich. They hate rich people. So I just think it's one of those things. I know you didn't say black, but the reality is, is that a lot of a lot of groups when they come here and they practice group economics and they they don't let go of their culture. That first generation is able to succeed to get to the next generation once they're born on the American soul. What you're finding out is like the descendants of Japanese people who've been here since the internment camps is that their later generations become so Americanized, they act just like the Americans who are here. So when you ask them that question, all you have to do is be here a couple of generations and you start becoming, you start getting mired down and bogged down in the same American BS. But they're not under the issues of what happens to being American because they don't identify as American. So why would they have, so why would their success be held up? and put upon between what's happening in the on the American soil as far as the United States of America, that's the reason why they're able to be so successful. Because other groups come here and they want to identify as like, well, if I come here and I am just white, that means that if I came here and I'm Nigerian and I don't identify with the bad blacks, that means I can come here and be a doctor. Despite the fact there's already black Americans who've already made headways into different parts of the medical field, We've done that. We don't have to fight that fight. That fight, that, that's something we've already done. The Asians, on the other hand, just identify with, a, okay, clearly identifying with certain things that are considered bad in America, no matter what color is attached to it, doesn't help us. We know that Americans can decide to be art history majors or go on to manage the social studies because it's fun and because they have idealism attached to wanted to fight each other politically, ideologically, and socioeconomically, but we don't care about that. 
So since we don't care about that, let's go straight into STEM, science, technology, economics, and mathematics, because that makes sense for us. They're not sending money back home. They don't care about that so much so, but they can embed themselves to gain power behind the scenes economically. That's why three of our ports are owned by Asian countries. So I'm just saying it's not because they're Asian. It's because of how they're practicing their form of economics. Perfect. That's that's what I was asking for clarification on that. Correct. Hey, uh, cousin Joe, can I uh, tap in on that on that statement? I wrote, I got me writing some notes over here. You sure can. Can. We waited for you, Dev Punks. Okay. Now watch this. Now I I'm gonna challenge all of y'all in the room, especially you, Joe, and, um, and you, One Love. When you when you think of that, Asians have done better and all of that. Let me take a guess. Not done better, what, but go ahead. What? What's, no, no, watch this now, because it's a psyop. What, I bet that that um, stat wasn't per capita. It was per household income, wasn't it? Absolutely, of course. You know, that's how Americans, um, how, how, how. Uh -oh. Americans, yeah. Not per yeah. capita, Joe. He said per capita. Don't, don't, don't upset the. Don't upset the no, right wing. The right wingers. Oh, I want, I want them per capita down. I want them per capita down because they don't even understand math. Uh, they, uh, yeah. it, they go, yeah. Listen, they'll come yeah. up and be like, "Well, have you heard of per capita?" And I'm like, "Really? Yeah, well, you, really?" Here's the, irony. here's the irony: those clowns don't realize unless the number is is sub below one, like point zero zero something, it's not even per capita. The people who be wagging the finger about per capita don't even understand per capita. I'm, That's the them I'm, a, binary, I'm a binary number. Leave me alone. That's the <laughs> but but I wanted to get to it. And here's what here's what where there are different culturally. They're different culturally because I can point out right now down the street from where I'm at, it's a place called India Square. These folk be 10 to a, to a one bedroom apartment, y'all. These folk be um, let me let's wake it up. These folk be nine to a two bedroom apartment, y'all. And the houses oh, that they who ready who ready to who ready to exactly so who ready to get a ten bedroom house we can build it on some land y'all ready because uh some of y'all mm -hmm. can't even stand to live with your mamas I'm just that's let me be quiet I'm gonna right. be quiet I'm that's, where that, that's where that household income coming from because if you add if you add up nine um nine fried rice cooks I'm just going there if you add up nine fried rice cooks inside of one place um I used to know this um this one person I went to school with. And I went over to her house once and, and it was a big, nice house in Winchester, Virginia. Um, Cause I went to school in Virginia and Winchester, Old Virginia. Furniture. Yeah. And I remember that this house was so big, but I noticed something when I went in the basement, it looked like barracks. It looked like college dorm room. And I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Her mama owned a um, Taiwanese, but owned a, chi a Chinese restaurant that sold sushi. Make that make sense. And all of the workers were downstairs living in the basement. So to get, so the game was import, have them slide across the border. However, they get there, they have these spots, almost like how black folk would call it something like a green book for them or something like that. And they would have these locations where they'd be like, well, you can come here, work at this restaurant, stay in this basement. They had like 10 people living inside of one mansion, like you talking about right there. And that's the house, that household income, probably $300,000 a year. That's what they're doing. I just wanted to That's touch on I, that. You know what? That's why I get so upset with the um what's the um what's the group um shoot? The Moors. Yeah, I want to say it's the Moors. Because if y'all getting all these houses that y'all uh are squatting in or whatever y'all doing to get these houses in your sovereignty or sovereign, why you ain't got like 10, 20 people in them houses? making a uh, uh, uh getting in starting you know some group economics because listen i'm just saying i'm not saying we can't do it but i'm definitely not gonna compare my myself to a people who ain't never been accosted or bombed out of their mansions and their houses or somebody ice raiding them to get them up out of here you're not gonna compare my conditions with them because they have the ability to practice what they're practicing okay Corinne's gains was taken out of here. Do you hear what I'm saying? That's not the same. You cannot compare us. Can I just say yeah, real quick? I, 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 I just want to say one thing to your point, Deb, 
because when I said practice economics and their culture of success, I never said it was because it would be like the best thing that Americans would like. When I said American, America decentralizes culture, a big part of that decentralizing culture was taking away extended families. The reason why so many black Americans specifically are in such an impoverished state or they feel like they're in such an impoverished state and they are actually able to see it is because you notice how, I hate to use this example, but I'm going to use it. So let's say a single black mother, right? She has three or four kids when she's like 16. By the time, let's say that she is, we do 16 plus 18. Then by the time she's 34, let's say she has had three kids. She can be 36 and have at least three 18 year olds in the household. Instead of her need to kick them out of the house because she needs her space back, if they actually stayed together and they all worked, they could actually leave from where they are. But America has made it so you're supposed to feel very proud of being single, being by yourself, um, having your own place. And they actually try to demonize you when you live with your parents. But it's not demonized for Asians to live, to your point, Deb, three and four generations, like my next door neighbors, I have a couple, I have some South Asians who live next door to me. It's a very nice house, right? Inside, there's no furniture. It's not racist, it's real. They have four generations living in one home. They don't pay for child care because the oldest generation watches the children. They also own a very crappy, it's real, uh, uh, crab restaurant, but that's one of their incomes, as well as one of the people, he works in cybersecurity, um, one of the, the dads in the household. There's another couple in, um, who work, as well as one of the women. And their women work as well. So they don't pay for child care, which is income saved. They have people who work in STEM and they also own a restaurant. So for the other generation that's coming up, they'll also have that income of being able to go into college without debt. That's the thing that they're practicing. Americans and black Americans specifically used to practice extended family. Black families like mine, we practice extended family. And that's why no one in our family has ever gone to daycare. But that's looked down upon because black Americans now think they have to be like the Joneses, the Joneses being the Caucasian Americans. And um, you notice how Caucasian Americans don't know about aunts, cousins. They don't practice that. So, But it's a losing situation for them. So when you don't practice extended family, it goes straight to your culture, straight to the family loss situations, and straight to income loss. Because you don't want to have that established relationship because maybe your grandmother and your mother are too, too close a generation together, right? A generation is normally 25, 20 to 25 years because their ages are too close. Now she feels like she needs her freedom back. So because everybody feels like they need to be so independent, they don't think about the interdependence. So when you ask me about the practicing culture, practicing culture and success goes into interdependence. If we practice familial interdependence, like a lot of these groups who come over here when they stay together and they don't leave and go from each other, but they stay here, then yes, you'll be able to have families of generations who've never had to be going into daycare. You can homeschool as well in that situation. People can work and they can support a household. And instead of just like not paying your parents and expecting them to just do everything for free, why don't you treat them and work out a deal with them to pay them so that way they have income and can buffer when they get old enough to draw from Social Security and things like that so they won't be solely hammered and relying upon the American government and the medical system. It is a way to work with each other in tandem and hand in hand. That is a positive success tactic to practice. If we practice that instead of looking down upon that, oh, well, if a man doesn't have his own apartment, I don't want to date him. Now your excuse me, your dumb ass is out here working too many two hours trying to not have a roommate because you want to seem like you're in a, a mature a mature adult because everybody's gonna look down upon you if you work and live with your sisters and brothers. It, it's okay to humble yourself and live with your siblings and be like, okay, well we put our money together. It gives us the ability to pay off that car and pay off that credit card and to be able to have more. So if you want to have more, work with your people. You don't got to give up an identity for that. Just work with your people. That's very true. But I, want, I, want I want Joe, I want Joe to run for office. Joe you. better be running for office some, mm -hmm. somewhere, somehow. You better get in Congress or the Senate, be some state governor. I'm just going to put it out there. If you're not, I will be mad at you in your life.
I don't know what God has for you. I'm not, listen, let me not speak over your life because whatever God has for you is for you, honey. But I'm going to just put it out in the universe. Lord, whatever she's supposed to be doing, go ahead and go ahead and challenge it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, to what you were saying before, One Love, I agree 100%. Um, I see a lot of applause and a lot of, of stuff. Going, but Joe, I got what you meant, too. Um, I, not to be confused with bootstrapism, Kadarius, because that is not what she's talking about. But I hear you, Joe. Um, <laughs> um, what I'll say... <laughs> <laughs> what I because we're not talking about we're bootstrapping. Not talking about bootstrapping. No bootstrapping. No bootstrapping. You work on your family. Today is no bootstrapping. Today is no No, but I don't do that. Um, what what I, do. I was going to say before, um, one love was missing in the conversation. Usually, whenever I hear certain opinions in regards to comparing us to. Um, immigrant groups like Asians and all these other people who may have had certain successes in America and shit, they're not doing anything that we haven't done already. The difference is that we, they haven't experienced the opposition that we've experienced. We no, have geno been genocide. That. They haven't, right. They have exactly. not been genocide. Mm -mm. Not here. Been not been here. here. And right. So not it's here. Up in the face, again, to what I was saying to Kadeus before, when certain statements are made, it's you denying the experience of the black American that is the issue and the assumption that we can't or haven't done those things. Like it's your lack of including the full narrative versus the narrative or the picture that you're trying to create or see that is missing from the conversation. Like we've done these things. We know how to build. We've done it. And this idea that like these people are coming over here and aren't getting help is also not included in this conversation. How are people in a in any establishment? And living in a basement when they coming from war stricken countries, impoverished countries, all of this, the narratives that we tend to get about these certain groups and stuff. How are they then able to come here and get total loans and, and establishments and all these different handouts and stuff like that? So the like, Biden we, administration. We it wasn't the just the Biden administration. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that, Kadaris. Don't do that. Cause uh let me tell you something. Uh nine Republicans. <laughs> I hold on. Nine Republicans gave DACA along with the Democrats and uh, uh President Obama gave Yeah, I was just making a joke. I know you do. I, I, I know you do. But listen, but listen, we're gonna be real about this because um zero down and zero dollars for homes for immigrants. If we all immigrants in this country where is our zero down and zero dollars? Huh? And see, that's the thing. And I think oh, I'm against all what that. Donis was talking about in terms of the UK versus us as well. Like, they're trying to right now as we speak, and I won't even read, you know how I feel about Kamala, but in terms of what she's talking about, in terms of what Michelle Obama's talking about, in terms of what Joe Biden was talking about, in terms of Barack and all these other people, what they're talking about, this whole idea of us being a nation of immigrants, that doesn't apply to us. That does not apply to us. To your point, one love, we don't have the same experience as immigrants. We don't have the same experience as them. We are denied access in the country that we built. We have nothing to show for the experiences and the, the atrocities that we've been put through when we were bombed out, when we were flooded out, when we were forced out, when we were beat out, when we were burnt down, when we were all of these different things when it comes to us building community in the hundred plus towns that we've had in this country. When we talk about the multiple Wall Streets that we've had, the multiple businesses that we had, all the land that we've had, we have built in this country. We have had the worst kind of opposition you could possibly have outside of places like Haiti. But I mean, a Haitian probably would, you would think anyway, that a Haitian probably understand that more than anything. But, you know, it just, it, it bugs me out, you know, those type of questions, which feel like devil's advocate questions. And it's just like, the devil don't need a fucking advocate. But it's just like leaving out the, the part where we are denied access and leaving out the part where people also are getting help from the government is a problem. Um, also, you know, I think um, Joe may have brought it up. There are there are the reparations for the interned um, Japanese or whatever who experienced internment camps and stuff like that. You have seen things like that and stuff like that. So the relationship with the government is just different. Um, hell, in the this moment in time, how they going up? Which I don't have an issue with immigrants. I have to let it be known. Um, just as a disclaimer, I don't have an issue with anybody but when i see the opposition i'm gonna call it because it just it is what it is and 
you know, I don't mean to throw heat at nobody, but you know, if you get about proxy, I'm not, I don't, I, hell, you should speak against it. Um, <laughs> Cause nobody should, nobody should receive help or nobody should, um, yeah, nobody should receive help at the expense of somebody else. Like if I'm receiving help, I'm not gonna say, oh, fuck you, I'm getting mine and just continue to allow you to be shat on. If we all Americans in air quotes, the American way would be yeah. to say, hey, this ain't well, right. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say this and I know Dev Punk, you got your hand up, Greg. If we're all Americans for the Latinos that came in, they quote unquote said they came in through uh, way by way of citizenship. Why is it in California? They're outpacing. They're almost outpacing the white people population in California and getting into positions of politics and also um, denying Americans the ability to actually have access to resources. Is that American? Or, you know, is that culturally They want us to be like the UK. They want us to be like the black, I totally the disagree black with that. They want us to be Wait, like hold, 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 on. hold on. You strongly disagree, but you're speaking to someone that, uh, that like you said, we're going to speak from experience. So, in experience, the um, uh, California. No, no, I disagree with the, them doing oh, that. Oh, because I, mean. I was not about to say, because. Yeah. Uh, no, not with what you said. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Openly. No, no, no. And, and that's why I need us all to be Americans so we can actually stand up and make some of these changes. Yeah, but, but they're we're moving. They're the immigrant. But they can't do that. Because while we're, we while we're battling between we don't each other, be the new black group. We're not they're steady moving in, whether it's Venezuelans taking over apartment buildings in, in uh, Denver, Colorado, or whatever. Like, we got to stand up and get this stuff straight. We got we got to stop battling whether it's Asian, whoever. We got to stop battling them between each other because we got a bigger problem ahead of us right now. These people that are are not coming in the right way are literally taking stuff from us, whether it's support from the government or it's our actual land. <laughs> like like we got a big problem. And so that's, that's why I push. From us. Go ahead. Yes, they are picking Everybody up culture. Everybody stuff from us. Yep, go ahead, Dev. Yeah, I'm as in all of us, all of us, so all Americans are losing in this, so, is what so, I mean. So you're, which so is you're why we got to stop battling because we got a bigger problem brewing in front of us. Look, my, my first, so we, we got to stand together. We can battle after that, but we got to stand together right now to stop all of this. Oh, I don't stand. I don't stand. I don't stand, me up. I don't stand with Coons because if you don't know how to speak the truth, I'm not standing with you. Because uh, the worst thing you can do is stand with somebody in battle that's going to shoot you in the head. Not going to do it. Then we lose America. KD, that, that, that's how it ends. Wait, KD, is, I got a question for you. What is an American to you? Can I be heard? Yeah, we listening to you, baby. Yeah, what what is American, Cadiz? What is American to you? He might be in the Matrix or something. I heard the question though. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I can't. I, Daft Punk's. I think he's speaking, but it's not letting me hear or see him. So I don't. You just I don't have to drop, drop, drop yeah, down and come to back. Down. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Hopefully, Adonis is still awake. Yeah, so while while you're there, I got a couple of other questions that I answered from this. This is a yeah, I'm awake. This, I'm here. This great topic conversation here. Um, yeah. Um, one was why white America doesn't identify with slavery. I actually push back. They do in under a certain situation. The minute you start talking about reparations, oh, we was all slobs. We, we yeah. was. All, Elon, Elon was straight. Elon was straight, Elon was straight yeah. up. Slum came from the from the Ukraine. <laughs> oh, yeah, I agree. Facts, I agree. You feel me? We was all slobs, and actually, Adonis got me on this path. Um, when Adonis would Adonis would ask somebody a question, and he was breaking down how English came from the Germans or the Germanic people. There was like a uh, some episode, maybe like six months ago or whatever it was. And I remember, I like since then, I've dug in, I've gone out a rabbit hole as far as like delineating this concept of whiteness that didn't exist back then at that time. And then I saw like how it was just this great European migration based off a of language and 
Like it, just seeing how those folk moved around and like those middle ages and all of that stuff and how the Huns came and not uh, put a lot of that melanation up in them and stuff like that. It is, I'm starting to see like it, it's not as Game of Thrones as we think it is. It's more burlap sacks and please. Uh, it's House, House of Dragons. School. House of Dragons. It's House of yeah. Dragons. Yeah. So I wanted to touch on that one. But, uh, I do think Ameri uh, white America does identify with slavery. The minute you start talking about reparations. So we was all slaves. No, uh, Irish were slaves, too. No, they weren't. They were indentured servants and they got their freedom dues and they worked seven years. That, that almost like slave stuff got to stop. Like I check that, that check that. That's how folk get up. That's how the roaches get up in the house. And the Asians do it, particularly the Chinese. We built the railroads that come real slippery. No, they built the Transcontinental Railroad in 1860. Yep, 60 the railroads years. were already laid. They were already 60. laid. Yeah, they came to finish the job that the Irish did trying to draw that line connecting to what Black Americans had already built since the 1800, 1800. So how is we building, how are we already shipping cotton between Alabama, North Carolina, and New Orleans port by train? Before the first China man got Chinese person got here in 1860. To yes, work the, on the free the Freeman's Bank money that was actually I taken out of that bank. taken out of take taken out of that bank. The brother of the branch conservator was uh John. Oh God. Okay, y'all gonna really really y'all really gonna have me push push the brain limits, John. Okay, I'm gonna look it up again. But anyhow, uh, he was the brother who was working on one of the railroads. He needed money to complete the project. Um, they took seventy-five thousand dollars of the Freeman's money. Um, they were borrowing up uh, against the bank so much so that is what destroyed the bank. Um, uh, not the people, because people like to, the people like people like to. Uh, uh, denote black people not having financial literacy to the ability to uh, um, keep money in circulation or in their accounts. So this culture of theft came from the, these families. And I want to say they were Irish. Shit. I had this down pat, y'all. Okay, I'm going to go look this up so I can give y'all this, this information again and then but I, I it was a train uh, excuse me railroad company they were that was one that was one instance of theft um borrowing against the bank and not even returning um interest in the money back into the bank that they didn't even um put money into so they were taking uh soldiers families who had put their money into this bank because they would not they did not want you know, uh, slaves or freedmen to put money into white banks and stealing their money at the same time. So, yeah, if you didn't know that, uh, let me go and get this, the real, the name. I'm sorry. I'll Dad, take you I thank you for answering my question. It was a rhetorical question. I was waiting to see. I mean, I know I had said some other things. So I was okay, like, you heard it because it was that, I, I wasn't saying that white um, people didn't uh, have a slave, like have an attachment to slavery. That was actually my point. That's why a lot of them identified the poverty poverty and they are so upset that black americans on the united states in the united states land base they're upset at our claim to restitution for what's happened to us because they feel like they should be owed something as well and honestly it's a crazy topic because they would be some of them honestly the white slaves would be owed some restitution, but they should not be taking part of the claim of what we have. They should do their thing separate. If they're going to say that they're bootstrapping, then you be the ones to accept your bootstrapping. But I don't think you should try to decide that for quote unquote FBA or black Americans. So I appreciate you answering my rhetorical question because that's what that was. No one ever, a lot of us who look like us who are black Americans don't think about these people have a slave mindset. So when you brought that up, that was the point. How can you call your, how can you be the ones who descended the word Slav, but yet that word is attached to us? Yet every time something comes up, hold on, I'm Irish, I'm Scottish, we were slaves too, we ate potatoes. 
And it's like, okay, well, they have a slavery mindset that they, they literally having to teach them in school and be like, no, you're okay, you're white. And they're like, am I white? I'm okay, but I'm not rich. So I thought I had white privilege. Yeah, they don't have white privilege based off of money. They have white privilege based off of skin color to buffer rich or white people. You know, I think that Ooh. this was a very informative and detailed conversation. I love having these conversations. With the show of emojis for the people that are in the chat at this moment in time, if you guys enjoyed this particular interaction, drop a hundred in the chat. You know, let the people that's been sitting here rotting you guys out, giving you guys good chats, giving you guys good talks, giving you guys good vibes, show them some love, hit them with a follow, show every single person that gave you some depth inside of this particular conversation, hit them with a follow, show their love, not your anger. Keep in mind these people, particular people. But for me, it's 8.15 in the morning. I try my best to keep the room open, chat with you guys, give all of these particular chats, have all of this vibe, but I have to call it a day because I got to wake up and edit another video and get ready for um, <clears throat> uh, Notting Hill Carnival, which is going to be tomorrow. So uh, thank you so much Don't for Don't forget my question, Adana. What's your, what's your question? Oh, yeah, yeah. My I got it. Oh, you wrote it down. I hope yeah, you wrote yeah. it down. Say it again, though. Okay. Say it again. Okay, so my question is to take and ask, um, how do the, uh, do do the people identify with um, the Asian? I want to say it was it was the East Asians, East Asians, Indians that immigrated into Jamaica, um, and uh, do they practice their cultures as well as do Jamaicans identify as more Irish um, versus being black? Ooh, that's that's a crazy. Shit, I don't even think they'll know the difference. I'm going to be honest with you. Okay. Yeah, I don't even think they're going to even know the difference. I think... Hey, Adonis, I, um, I, got, I got one for you, if you don't mind. It was actually the question I was going to ask the KD, but I think it will, uh, might work out in your carnival. Sure, what is it? Um, And uh, Cadiz, I think your name is, uh, you can answer it too. The question was, what is an American? Because Cadiz was saying, you know, like, on the way, why can't we all just be American? And the question is, what is American? Because a lot of people have a diff have different mindsets for it. But I just wanted to um, leave you all with this. I'm reading from the Webster's Dictionary from uh, 1828. Uh, I know what you're going to say already. Go ahead. An, Amer an American, a native of America, originally applied to the aboriginals or copper colored races. Shout out to the Statue of Liberty, that black woman. The copper colored race is found here by the Europeans, but now applied to the descendants of Europeans born in America. That's part of that anti-black American part right there. Cause a lot of, I didn't even know that. Mm. I didn't even know that. I knew that. Um, <laughs> and, and yeah, and just look at y'all, just look at the definition of Tuscaloosa down there with my kinfolk from in Alabama. Look up that definition of Tuscaloosa, Hernando de Soto. Um, ran across him back in, I think, the six seventeen hundreds or whatever it is. And the first thing he said was, look at that black warrior right there. And that is the definition of Tuscaloosa, that city in Alabama right now. Tuscaloosa stands for black warrior. They kept finding black people when they came here. And I'm going to land on that. What is an American? Oh, he going to start. Adonis, you better make sure you have some, some pepper spray on someone. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nah, I think I'm gonna be pretty cool. I'm a New Yorker, so we know how to move. And I and I think that, you know, real recognize real in any type of hood you go to. So once people start chatting with me and talking with me and you know, you're gonna tell, like you're gonna tell based off the way I handle these particular interviews if I'm around the hood or not. You know, based off the way I'm talking, you're gonna be able to know. Like if I'm with some like ah ah, you know what it is, you know the vibes, I chill, what's good. You know, if I'm on what's good, my heart, ah ah, then you know I'm around the hood. If I'm on something like, yeah, but I just want the intellectual disparity between the diaspora and, the, you know, I'm around some proper, you know, solid. Hey, Donna, Don, speaking of statue, wake up them shackles on their feet, too. I, I, somebody, yes. I, I, I tripped up an Irishman on that one this past week. Uh, no, an Asian dude. I showed him that picture, and he was like, wow, yeah. the Statue of Liberty has shackles on her feet. And I said, look, bro, it isn't for immigration, man. It was never given for immigration. Yep. It was given for the emancipation of the slaves. Yep. It was it was Lyndon Baines Johnson that had that had that uh, during the civil rights after the civil rights bill dropped, and we did that immigration act. So Lyndon Baines Johnson went out there on Ellis on Ellis Island, or not Ellis Island, 
on Liberty Island and sat there at the foot of it and said, this will now be the representative of immigrants back in 1968. That woman got shackles on her feet. That's a black woman. A, a, and, a, a why, and why was it that a French artist created that statue with broken uh, shackles? I want to know if never, somebody's going to answer it. America would never put a white woman in shackles. I'm telling you right now, she was copper. And what happened to a penny when you leave it in the rain? It turned green. That's why she's green. People need to understand that's a black woman, right? There. Yeah, don't don't let those Europeanized facial structure sculptures fool you. That's a black woman. Look at the feet. No, I knew that already. But, you know, I, for, to be honest with you, I'm going to be honest. <clears throat> Those conversations are meant for someone that actually wants to challenge the 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 details of the historical relevance of Black Americans inside of the culture of Black. Mm. You know, those particular things. But as for this upcoming interaction, this upcoming event, this would be a perfect opportunity to sit down and have that um, Caribbean type of conversation and really target the, the, the my I would say my best understanding is what is UK Black culture. You know, let's let's really have that conversation. And let's see how many people can actually give a good definitive answer of what that particularly is. To answer the question that was earlier is, what is an American? From my perspective, in this new day and age, from the 1800s, I know that definition. But from my perspective, is American, what an American is, it's an idea. It's an idea. We come from an idea where you can take nothing and make something, anything and everything's possible. There are, there are no ways that you can fail. There's no way that you can give up, never surrender any type of capacity. What it is to be an American is, a, is that mental capacity to believe that you're always optimistic for the next step. You're always, you, you, you can create anything. You are, you have the power of the world in your hands. And that's has become true to acknowledge since I've been out here in Europe, I realized that a lot of other cultures don't have that luxury of having that, that the power of creation in their hands or in their heads. So, yeah, that's my idea for what it is to be an American. Hey, we Born here you. or naturalized <laughs> legally. That's my definition we, of American. We appreciate, we appreciate you, Adonis. No problem. Appreciate you guys. Yes, as well. we do. So Thank you so much, Adonis. And be safe out there, please. I'll try um, to do another audio room probably in the next week or so. I'm not really sure. I, the schedule is crazy, but I know I was supposed to be editing the video, and I just thought that this interaction would be very helpful and lucrative to be able to connect with you guys, communicate with you guys, and get a little bit of information. And uh, you guys definitely helped me clear my head, and I think the next upcoming videos are going to be very interesting. So I appreciate every single one of you guys for being here. I want you guys to have a great night. Stay progressive. And also keep in mind, Keep in mind that we come from a particular class of people who had class. We don't always got to be arguing and being uh, belligerent towards each other in these audio rooms. Don't let people trick you out to a particular spot. Conduct yourself in a manner that you better act like you got some home training. Nah, it's not, you know what I mean? <laughs> right? So I'm going to catch you guys later.